you see the drip and it's lurks You need it, pull the trigger Got you feeling, got you feeling The world is yours only if you take it So sign your name
Jonathan, Alex, welcome to your community mandated therapy session with me, Dr. Johns. Wait, sorry, how many was that? How many what? How many Johns? Shut up. Okay. We're expecting one more. <sighs> there you are. Welcome to the call, Cole. Yep, yeah, all right. Now you all know why you need to be here. Yeah, it's because he made us show a mean edit of North America's gameplay on the last show. Are you serious? Me? You're the one who said yeah. to add all those stupid cartoon sound effects. Are you serious? Oh, it's my name Stumpy, and I think we should show Atomic's oh. girl and repeat after as if it's the only good girl they've scored. Oh. Sorry, why am I here? Because I didn't even say anything. I just laughed. Now, Cole, you need to learn that laughing along makes you complicit. Just seems as bad. Unfair, but what, it seems unfair, but whatever. Just as bad. Now, what I want to do is really get to the root of why you felt you had to run that segment. Why are you all so insecure? Insecure? How very dare you? I refuse to accept that we, us, as Europeans, are insecure. <laughs> the French, they're just too good. I mean, it's true. It's kind of true. We claim BDS, gentlemen, it's some vitality, make us the best region, but... I don't represent EU, I represent the UK, and they're all just so unbelievably French. So French. BDS, gentlemates, vitality. <sighs> you couldn't even bring yourself to mention Carmen Corp, could ah, you, Jonathan? It's, it's just too painful. They make the rest of us Europeans look silly. It's just not fair. How can we compete with that? At least Oxygen got a game versus BDS and their best of seven, and they're only one point off the top four. Actually, due to the way that the seating works, they're going to have a good chance of Swiss, so you never know. It maybe could happen. Just a little... one single point. For me, it's like when Top Cougars reached Champs Field against Gentlemates, I was so hopeful. <sighs> but it ended up being Harry Kane's penalty against the French all I over mean, again. <laughs> Harry Kane's penalty miss was actually pretty hilarious, to be fair. Mate. All right, too soon, first of all. Look, I think I mock North America because deep down I know... The EU is... Oh, I know the EU is a one-nation region. Like It's like at this point, I'd call a Magnifico win a personal dub. And they're two Spaniards and a German. You're, you're, you're right. I mean, yeah, thank you, Dr. Johns. I mean, now, when you put it like that, it's clear to me that we've been the real losers this entire time. There, there, boys. You've all had a big breakthrough today, and I'm proud. One day, the rest of the world will be as good as the French. Until then, bring it in. Virtual hug between us losers. Come here, you. Come here, boys.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to day two. It's playoff bracket time for the European region. And today we find out if it is going to be just a French dominated situation. But we got a lot to talk about before we get into our matches. Only eight teams remain and one life for each of them. I'm Leaf and joined alongside me, we do have Shogun and a couple other losers there, Stumpy and CJ. Shogun, thanks for joining me absolutely it feels great to be uh one of two uh not losers on this broadcast half Cheers, guys. the desk not losers Cheers. uh and i'm sure that will continue on when we bring up the predictions later on but until then <laughs> let's focus entirely <laughs> on uh what we've got for this weekend because it has been a crazy season already uh leaf yeah it, it absolutely has been a crazy se uh, season uh cj uh, mm. again we are finding out today maybe the story will be a little bit different but this region looks like there's a top end to it and a gap maybe a difference thing maybe i think we'll, we'll find out a little bit later what our actual predictions are for this top four but yeah we've we've got one team in we've got another team almost in but a miracle basically in and then we've got some chaos so uh we'll, we'll see what happens but europe always delivers doesn't it stumpy yeah absolutely i mean we've already seen a crazy swiss stage we're going to be going into uh, our top eight i don't know What's going to happen? There's a lot of predictions we're going to be doing later on. Chat, you're hot on mine and CJ's heels. Make sure that you do continue to vote um, in all of those uh, prediction uh, battles. But yeah, Leaf, uh, still got a lot of the season left to go. That is true. Let's take a look at exactly where we stand in the season. Well, you say a lot. Uh, we're nearly 50% of the way there. That major one in Copenhagen, Shogun, is on its way. Yeah, it certainly is. And we are no closer, really, to finding out which three more extra teams we are sending there than we were when we started yesterday. Usually when we get to this point, everyone's sort of falling over themselves, making mistakes. But the protagonists are actually stepping plate this time around, mm -hmm. and it has been phenomenal to see. And uh, speaking of protagonists, that's all of you guys. You guys are the good guys. And come hang out I with saw, us. Like I hang saw out. that. Oh, that, okay. I, th I thought we were getting compliments. No, then. not you. Oh, what? Oh, oh, <laughs> what do you think oh. this is? This is a European pre show. You guys have told me explicitly not to compliment you guys. I compliment those guys out there. Uh, only if you come and join us at Copenhagen, though. Get your mm. tickets at <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I'm getting closer It gets closer more ridiculous further. every time, Liv. <laughs> <laughs> it just adds, like, different inflections and different <laughs> letters, like, every time he says it. That's wonderful. But you know what to do on socials. If you didn't want to type it out, you can find those links on socials. Here is where we stand for this weekend. It's Europe. All weekend long, baby. We're in a playoff bracket. We're on those last two days, Saturday, Sunday. It's Rocket League time. So stay tuned. Keep the tab open and hang out with us. But in case you weren't able to join us yesterday, we know some of you guys get busy. It was a, a Friday day, but we'd love to catch you guys up there. Let's take a look at what it was. It was the Swiss bracket. This is a, a lovely format we all like, and I think teams enjoy it too because you get three lives, three in, three losses, and you're out. Looking at this, there were, uh, CJ, some fun games across the board. Yeah, I think it's, as you said, it's a beautiful bracket unless you're top Cougars. I think they might have a <laughs> format uh, based on their run yesterday. You can see the teams that they played. They had a run of all runs. We can talk about that a little bit later, but... Uh, you know, I think, Shogun, we sort of got the, the, the teams, the top eight teams at least we felt were in contention um, still in the running, so it makes it exciting. Yeah, I think for all the teams that we were expecting to get through, they did. Uh, obviously, disappointments to certain teams that were still kind of in the running, but obviously have dropped out there. Teams like Forward, Bella Goal, Endpoint, they were kind of hoping for a little bit more Team 3 as well uh, on that list. Uh, they'll be all be looking forward to next split and uh, seeing what they can accomplish. Right. One one I do want to point out there, though, in that final round, BDS, they took mm. the, the long road to get there. Stumpy, there was a, a bit of a struggle for them throughout this Swiss. I mean, they went to five. They were the last regionals grand finalist, and then they went to five. They lost here to top Cougars. And you're thinking, well, boys, you know, they're already 2-0 up in that series. They got reverse swept. It was not a good time for them. It was an incredible side that Greg and his heading there over there for top Cougars. It's, it's really good to see them um, with the amount of pressure that they can put on these big teams too. They are not scared of them whatsoever. It's a shame that then they couldn't continue that form all the way through. Or maybe they, they did continue that form, but their run was outrageous. 
Well, I think it's kind of the story of a lot of European teams. You know, we talk about Moist as well, where just this one bad event, Top Cougars failing to qualify for that first, you know, first qualifier, first regional. It really just throws off your split. You know, you get mm -hmm. three qualifiers to, to make your run. But if you miss one or have one bad result, right. well, you can end up like this team right here. Yeah, well, speaking of Moist, again, this was a team that we were looking to, just brand name-wise, Shogun is like, oh, that's a team that should perform, but it took them a little while to get there. They certainly did, and this is becoming a big what-if question. You know, what if they didn't fail to make it into the last open qualifier? They got top eight in the, in the very first one. They didn't make it to the second one. They made top eight again in the third one. So mm. what do they do from here? You're hoping for good results. They looked fantastic during flip and spin. Sort of made us all very hopeful that, hey, they can now start challenging for those top four. Maybe they still can. I don't know. This is a team I have no read on whatsoever. I mean, they did also manage to get themselves one of the other reverse sweeps in the series versus Redemption. Um, and now they're going to be facing off again in one of our quarterfinals. So both of those teams, I think, not wanting it to be quite as scary on both sides of the coin. I don't Great want... matchup, though. Mm. Great yeah. matchup for both of them. I feel like, you know, you, you, we talk about the tough quarterfinals. The, I mean, I think both teams will be happy. I think across the board, I like the way this bracket landed, CJ. I mean, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I like having K-Corp and Vitality on opposite sides. Yeah, and it's nice getting, well, I don't know if it's nice for these teams, but, you know, <laughs> General Mates, BDS as well in their quarterfinal, another little fridge quarterfinal mm. battle. So certainly shaking things up. And, you know, obviously we're going to get into the scenarios for the major qualifications, mm -hmm. but it really gives uh, pretty much every team here a, a really strong chance. Yesterday, uh, I want to mention there's some other fun storylines. There were there were a couple record setters uh, mm -hmm. yesterday. We may as well talk about those. That's what we're here for. First up, I want to talk about Vitira. We uh, on paper saw it was 13 saves, uh, which is statistically a uh, a nice number. I mean, Vitira, I guess having to bail his team out a lot. If that was the situation, Jogan. Well, let's have a look, shall we? Uh, spoilers, we have already seen this, and spoilers, <laughs> these are hilarious. Some they're of not, these... They're not all good saves, or they're not all, all right, like let's have a look. Saves. Let's have a look. Oh, world class! His team world was class save. Save. Oh, no, it, it's, it's like 50% great saves, 50% pure stat padding, I feel like it's... has occurred here. He's he's just dribbling the ball in front of his net, so I'm like, that's a fantastic save. Mm -hmm. We'll Listen. give him credit on that. But somewhere, he's just taking the ball. Himself. This is another save. Very that's good. Save. Look, that's good. I like credit. that one. Really nice, See, but there are some moments. This one's also there. really good. Like, this one's good. Oh, yeah. huge! <laughs> That's the thing that's going like, in! Stumpy. Stumpy, I don't know if you remember it. There was a that's game not. we used to play in Unranked called Greed, Love where it. we would try our hardest to get as many points as possible. <laughs> One way of doing it was trying to goal steal. The other idea was just to sit back in net and yep. get as many saves as possible and leave the shot as late as possible. I mean, Vatira played Greed in an RLCS <laughs> Championship Series and still won the match. I'd like to also just reference how incredible it is that he's managed to break it here. I mean, this is what this was posted by um, Shift on Twitter the, the, um, yesterday. The previous record of 12 saves was set almost seven years ago. That's and that was by Devo during RLCS season four in October 2017. An almost seven year record has been broken and is Vatira again. Uh, how many so how many players are gonna see this now and be like, wait, I can do that to break the record? And just go for <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> go <pad>. for it. <laughs> All right, just start patting the stats. Uh, there was another record, uh, uh, well, not broken, but gotten close to at least, and it was overtimes. We've seen a lot of long overtimes uh, throughout uh, RLCS history. And yesterday we saw one almost break into the top three. It was a 13-18 overtime between Belagol and Team 3, Stumpy. Mm, yeah, I mean, 13 minutes and 18 seconds. We've got a graphic coming up um, shortly showing just where that does end up sitting. But it's... This overtime also wasn't just, as we've seen previously, like 13 minutes just sitting back, not really like, trying to be too offensive. Teams wanted to win this the entire time. It was almost three games worth of slogging out together. And the shots that were put on target and the defense was incredible. I, uh, I, I, I don't fully agree that it was an offensive fight. I think we did look at Elizabeth Rizex on one side of the pitch. I know Shogun, we did a nice little cast of one of those series. It's uh, It can be quite a defensive matchup. But there it is, as you see, the longest uh, overtimes in RLCS history uh, internationally uh, are on your screen right now. Fourth all time, that, that OT yesterday. Surprisingly, I mean, you guys mentioned this before. I'm going to force you to talk about it now. Is that NA's only in there once. Uh which means I guess they just uh, they just don't like to hang out in those overtimes. 
Yeah, they've just not yes, got the drive. Do you have any NA fine. opinions? <laughs> oh. The drive issue, mate. That's all it is. Oh, they just don't <laughs> want it enough. <laughs> More boot camps? Mm. They just don't want it. They boot camps, camp they get longer every day, over time. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, <That's> very clear. <laughs> Let's take a look at where that put us uh, by the end of the day here, because again, all the, the rest, not all the spots, there's three spots left. K Corp is locked in at the top, Shogun. There are three spots still open today. Yeah, BDS should be fine. I mean, surely, Ref, they, they can't possibly lose that. Surely. The rest of them, though, uh, I, I thought Gentle Mates having top eight would be good enough. That was kind of under the assumption that somebody would have dropped out by now from redemption upwards. Uh, they haven't. The pressure is still very much on, and a team making a run all the way to that finals ground right. really put them under pressure. So Gentle Mates got a big, big job to do in 15 minutes against uh, a team oh, right. that they didn't have a great record with against two weeks ago, CJ. <laughs> No, and yeah, but they're, they're playing a lot better than last weekend or a couple of weeks ago. So uh, I think it's certainly not too much of a concern for Gentlemen. So I'm expecting them to put in a little bit of a more competitive series. But as you can see there, the points, that's what everyone's playing for, Stumpy. You want to mm -hmm. get those big three-point swings out of four-point mm -hmm. swing between first and second. Yeah, bear in mind as well that these points are going to be staying with you for the entire season. So if you lock a few in here, even if you don't go to the major, you've still got those points up on anybody right. else that is trying to compete in your regions to get hey you know i can't leave a recap without a top three plays so we're just gonna roll right into it the best plays of yesterday we're gonna start off with our number three shogun this was a, a good whole team play it certainly was i mean i not in this sync sort of sync with anybody that i know the sort of passing just on top of each other knew where they wanted an exotics finish clean as you like Beautiful. look at this psycho pass Get it over to the infield. Put mm -hmm. that one top in there. And off the crossbar. Good goal. I love a bar mm -hmm. down as well. Bar down just looks so nice. And that was continued with just beauty. As we saw this happen on Jewelby stream when he was streaming for Top Cougars. It was sent from Relating Wave up for Acro. And that redirect, you can just see how speed. fast it rockets wow. off his car. Hang on a minute, though. Let's have a look at this Formula One oh. simulation racing game that's all of a sudden occurred in Simas. <laughs> with one of the greatest goals you'll ever see. Certainly the greatest we've seen in the F1 car in the Ferrari, mm -hmm. but wow, we look go. at that. It's a side wall into a ceiling reset solo play. Can, can I just say how nice it is to see a Ferrari in P1? Oh, Absolutely mate. phenomenal. Mate. I don't get the reference. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's going it's... to happen in about four years. <laughs> yeah, every year is the year. Okay. It's the year. Come on. <laughs> Okay, let's move on here. We got a kickoff coming closer and closer. So now I want to take a look at words at the community, and I want you guys here, the analysts, to judge them. You guys can judge yourselves too, so get involved in chat. Just I'll be watching, seeing your opinion spew here. But we took uh, some maybe overreactions from the community, and I want to see what the analysts think. Are these actually overreactions or is there some truth and accuracy to them? So let's start throwing them up on the board here. We'll start off with one that EU is a one nation region. This was kind of parroted at the beginning of, uh, of our show here today that it's a one nation region. Is this an overreaction? Or is I refuse to It's an overreaction. I it's absolutely an overreaction. It is an overreaction every single day. What are day. the parameters for this, though? Because, you know, there's some French teams with not all French players. Are we... What are we... But I, 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 I guess the idea is you need a French player. Like, French is just dominating. If you don't... If French, you add a French no, player to the team, no, it's over, do it's they become better? No, because I feel like the UK is a lot closer CJ's than cooking. people are even giving CJ's us credit cooking. for at the moment. <laughs> I mean... We, all we do is the UK just gets good players and then we send them off to NA and they just go to be the top <laughs> players in NA instead. We're actually not represented all that well in Europe because our best player just went off to France anyway. Yeah, I'm going to agree with it. No, <laughs> one nation is very... Well, you know, obviously the French are dominating. I think that's, that's probably... We can agree with that. But a one nation region does seem a little bit harsh. Um... But yeah. it might still be. I uh, chat. I gotta say though, chat is saying it. Yes, 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 and yes. They're, they're so. also they're also talking <laughs> down on the UK. I do want to get that out there. There's a lot of comments yeah, around exactly the UK. darlings of the area. <laughs> also, it. we should also point out that our chat is full of French people right now, waiting to vote for. That, okay, that, that's fair. Minutes. That is a good point to make. All right, next next possible overreaction. Top Cougars were handed the most difficult Swiss run of all time. I'd need to Agreed. look and see what other runs were that people would put in contention. But for now, yes, they that played five of the top six teams 
not just in Europe, but one of the top yeah. six teams in the world at the moment, and they played them, and they went to all five series as well. Yes, yeah, they, yeah, they did. I don't think sorry, you can get a like without even looking at previous runs. You know, t they had yeah. two, three, four, five, six. I mean, surely they could have no obviously one had, had one, two, a one, three, two, three. Five. Yeah, exactly, but. Surely not. I mean, look, they went through Magnifico, then they went to BDS, then they went to Vitality, then Gentlemates, and then ended with Oxygen. It was an outrageous do you, run. Do you understand how difficult a run has got to be where I'm not looking at a 2-0 record turning into a 2-3 record and just go, oh, you bottled that one, mm -hmm. lads. Like, no, there is no way you can be at all critical of that team. They had to run the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there has ever been a more difficult one. It is not an overreaction. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. I got I got time for one more. But then we got to move on here. This is a fun one. I got to ask because uh, people are saying it. KC are better than World's Vitality. That's a bold statement. <laughs> no, no. I might stay no, on the no, side no, of no. as well. I'm I'm yes. saying I no to reaction. That. That's no reaction. I think the games evolved, Stumpy. I think the games evolved in the six. How long has it been now? It's been nine no, months. No, I, I, it has I'm been going like with a year. On this. That is not an overreaction. I think that's to an overreaction, I know they are. Stumpy. Because right, everyone's got better. Yeah, yeah, people have got better, but I don't think to the point where you can say the KC are better. I put them at that level, obviously, but I would not say that straight up. Yeah, I see them as better. I, I, I don't think they are. World's vitality was one of the most perfect teams we have ever seen play the game. Like, to Casey right now, they are close. They're probably on that level, but I just don't think you can say that, yes, they are better. Right. Yeah, I don't know. 50, 50 split. Ch ch chat say no, that they're not better. Uh, again, we'll find out. There's a chance that they end up facing each other in our playoff bracket mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow. So maybe we can get some of those answers let's uh, move on though and talk about those scenarios cj you've been alluding to these right now let's get to talking about the qualified teams some scenarios if we think people are going to follow through on the scenarios they need today to qualify let's take a look at the qualified teams so far in europe there's only one team qualified and it's k corp and uh there's three spots open yeah you know, we have all the other regions locked in here so with three spots open, that leaves a lot of scenarios. The fact that no one else in this top eight has actually locked it in right now is pretty phenomenal. Here's the point, so mm -hmm. you guys can keep it in mind. And as we start talking about what teams need to get into this, because again, everyone in top eight is still open. Stumpy, mm -hmm. Moist, uh, I, I believe, I, I, well, I believe, I see it in the document. Is your team, talk to me about this. And one reason why they're going to follow through let me, what they need to let me run through the scenario that, that Moist need first of all. They need to, firstly, it's not too hard, just win the entire thing. They've not done it yet, but they need to win the entire event so far. They also need Oxygen to take down Vitality, and then they also need Carmen Court to beat Magnifico. And that doesn't yet get them to the major, unfortunately, because then that will only put them into a tiebreaker along with Oxygen, who they then need to beat as well. The reason why they're going to do it, mm -hmm. dreams. This is what dreams are made dreams. of, baby. This is what dreams, dreams are made of. Don't you worry. They're going to come through. They're going to win. Everybody, you just got to believe. I also have dreams, but here I am hanging out with you guys. What? Jesus. Wow. That, wow. Pretty good. that was so unmet. <laughs> You impressed? Can I can I go can I go next then? <gasps> yeah, <laughs> just, just go CJ. Well, I mean, I don't uh, think Moist are going to win the entire event. But let me oh, tell you about a team called rubbish. Magnifico. Oh they my need gosh. to beat Carmen Court today. They need to at least make it through out of the quarterfinals. If they lose today, they're out. But if they can win, obviously, if they win the entire event, they're in top two, at least a tiebreaker, but knocked out of contention if they lose today. They need to beat Carmen Court. Why can they beat Carmen Court? <laughs> Chat calling me crazy. Well, I think that there is no way they can beat them. Which means they will beat them. They're going to go through the whole way. What, what is the it up to three. now? What's the record uh, of you, it's Magnifico? One and six. One and six. That's looking good. That's almost as bad as my game six. Okay. Game five, Shogi, we need a team from you. 
Okay, well, I'm going to go the opposite way. They've said why a team is going to make it, but I am a negative person with a bad <laughs> opinion. So Vitality, the world champions, will not go to the major. And I'm going to give you the simple reason why. They are going to lose to Oxygen and Magnifico are going to beat Casey. There are other ways this to happen, but this is for it to be confirmed today because Oxygen would leapfrog them with that win. Magnifico would leapfrog them with a win over Casey. There's also a round where Redemption up against Moist could try and make that run. Heck, I'm kind of parroting a little bit of what both of you guys have got. My reason why? Superstition. <laughs> Every single time we have a world championship team, they fall apart in the first split afterwards. We're just going to have it again, as always. Okay. You've got a target on your back now from all the French uh, Vitality fans, mate. So yeah, watch you've out. done it, mate. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> Me and the K I'll, I'll get the KC fans. Okay, well, let's uh, chat. I want to talk about you being involved one more time here because you are involved. We've been tracking all of our predictions so far and uh cj is currently is the best and you're not too far behind chat good job well stumpy you're not too far behind me either you, this is um, ridiculous well, i've been on that throne number one the entire time and then because your name comes before me in the alphabet you get to sit on top i won't have it that's how life works stumpy and unfortunately you are in second it's great to be up top <laughs> how does it feel down the bottom yeah shogun yeah, Shogun. It feels like I, but for some reason, yeah, the teams Shogun. I predict have absolutely zero bottle. Every time we go to Champions Field, they just fall <laughs> apart. I, the, the Stizzy miss yesterday will sit rent free <laughs> in my mind All for right. the rest of the year. Shogun, I, I'm taking away your privilege to talk right now since you've. You're so far down there, man. Looking at the wow. bracket today, this is what we got. It. We're going through today, all, all four. I'm sorry. You brought this on me. I'm hanging out with you guys too much. Uh, this is our bracket today. We're going to be starting from bottom to top uh, for our schedule in case you're wondering what order we're looking at our playoff bracket in. Starting off with uh, Gentlemates BDS ending with Oxygen versus Team Vitality, a team that the Shogun has is, is got some hot takes on. He doesn't think they'll do it. We'll see later on. But for now, we got to talk about our first matchup, the Gentlemates versus Team BDS. This is a massive matchup for BDS. Coming out of a not-so-hot Swiss, CJ, they really have to step up. Gentlemates, too, also have to prove they can meet those same heights they had in that first qualifier. Yeah, it's so interesting. Whenever we get confident in a team and think they're a lock, they just sort of underperform a little bit. That was BDS yesterday. Gentlemates, however, I had I put my faith in them yesterday. They delivered three one in Swiss. Obviously, they had to sw uh, got swept by Moist early, but then they really responded. A strong finish, uh, beating Oxygen and Top Cougars, and wow, another French derby, if you would. Um, it is going mm -hmm. to be. It's going to be on. Uh, um, I think this is 50-50. I think I don't mm. want to give away predictions, Stumpy, but I think the desk might be 50-50 as well, or at it's, least all of talent. It's pretty split. It does feel like a bit of a coin flip, seeing as I think if you asked us last week, okay, you have BDS, gentlemates, what's going to happen? I think all of us would have gone BDS. But going to five, I just I, I, I can't really look past that. Equally, Gentlemates, they did also lose to Moist, who, yes, are on a bit of an upswing, but was it a team that Gentlemates should be losing to? I don't know. It's a very interesting spot for both of these teams to be in at the moment. Uh, you know, totally not a, you know, one region, uh, one nation region at all, with four out of the six players being French. I believe the other two speaking French. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if the narrative really stands that it's not. You know, I think at this point, Shogun, it's safe to say that at least for now, that's a statement you can sort of back up. This lobby, okay? You can't throw me here and expect me to go against what I said earlier on. I still think that's an overreaction. Okay. But what is not maybe an overreaction is the way that this played last time. This was horrific for Gentlemates two weeks ago. Yeah. They were kept to clean sheets in three of the five games they played. They only scored four goals overall. They got absolutely drubbed in the series last time out. 6-0 in game one alone. This has got to be better from Gentlemates. Are they real contenders? Are they back to being the leftovers? I mean, Stumpy, CJ, we're about to find out. I think mm -hmm. this is a massive moment in their season. I'm with you, Shogun. I think you would have to be absolutely crazy to predict Gentlemates just based on that matchup two weeks ago. Okay, Stumpy, that's not yeah. fun, mate. <laughs> All right, no, right. We're not at the predictions yet, out. guys. <laughs> we're not at the predictions. Sorry that we fill in the spreadsheet before the day even starts. Come on, let there be a little bit of magic. <laughs> Oh, I, I didn't say you predicted them. I said you'd have to be crazy to predict them. <laughs> yeah, you're outing yourself there, Stump. You alluded. You alluded. Well, no, I, I think that... I think that we have seen previously these teams bounce back from results like that. You, you can think, okay, BDS are going to be the team on top here. But again, yesterday, 
they really did not prove it. The losses that they had were ones that you just would not expect them whatsoever. And we also know that when you talk about mentality of teams, you have to then look at Monkey Moon. Is he going to be able to actually pull through and right. bounce back from results like that? Yeah, I mean, I feel like... Yeah, sorry, Shogun, go for it. I feel like historically as well... Well, this, this season, I say historically, but... It's an RLCS season. Historically, it means a couple right. of weeks, really. They've kind of been disaster artists at times this season. When it goes uh -huh. wrong, it goes so very wrong. And yeah, BDS will need to make yeah. sure that if anything does happen, it, it just this is a little shake. I feel like we've not seen that yet. It's just yeah. always complete collapse. Hey, chat. You see Stumpy? He's, he's egging you on. Listen to him. He's a good he's a good guy to follow and, and listen You're to. You're never going to get this. Like, it's gentle, mate. mate. They're not going <laughs> to follow you here. Start uh, spamming your hashtags away. Let's see, let's see if the death was split but well we we already know but we got to reveal it to you guys oh I'm so sorry oh, i hate oh. you for going with me shogun i hate I'm that you so followed sorry, me man. here why I... explain yourselves i do feel like you guys gotta explain yourself look listen you can be really comfortable with my prediction stumpy up until we get to game seven okay I'm not... then you need to be really worried i'm not comfortable with anything that you predict you're rubbish at this i'm sitting i'm like on the arm of the throne right now and cj's trying to nudge me off and the fact we've gone different a winner of the prediction See? contest starts here Chuck, push come push on, push push me. I, i'm <laughs> doing it to try and change the future stumpy because every time we do this i'm either last or you are first it's always that way we're always one or the other now I'm either going to be middle or you're going to go backwards. Either way, I'm happy. Well, whether it's an overreaction or not, for now, it is a battle of the French. Our first playoff match is ready. The Gentlemates versus Team BDS. We'll find out who is going to set themselves off on the right foot as we head towards Championship Sunday. Two weeks ago, Team BDS demolished Gentlemates 17 goals to four in a 4-1 victory at this very stage of the competition. Johnny, surely it'll be different this time. Well, we'll have to wait and see, but not too much longer because the teams have joined the lobby. They are in positions for the kickoff and we are about to get the Championship Sunday match one underway. Championship Saturday, I should say, actually, because we're not quite there yet. I, I just can't wait for it, honestly, though. I feel like this is gonna decide um, a major spot right here. Will it be Gentlemates confirming it for themselves or will they have to wait for someone else to do it later on today? Well, Team BDS can confirm here and now if they take the win. Even if they lose, they still have a tiebreaker en route, according to Direct our statistician. So not the end of the world if you lose this one, but of course, you'd still much rather win. It would be ideal to hope and expect other teams to do your job for you in that situation. I expect BDS to come out the blocks quick today, Johnny, and really try and make a statement. Well, that's really what they've been doing all split long. They've just been the aggressive team, and that's not the best. It starts with the rally first to make a great save top corner as uh, BDS gave the ball away there at the edge of the box. But yes, but it's all about, it's been about the offense for this team. The you know evolution of Exotic has been one of the standout things for me this uh, entire season so far, turning himself into more of an aggressive player, more of a mechanical player, and yes, yeah, seeing Jirali's, uh development as well. I mean, what a uh, debut split he's having. Yeah, fantastic player, another player from Morocco stepping up to this level of the RLCS and just performing as expected. But it's not ideal from Seiko. Actually, it's worked out pretty well. He got in his teammates way for a second, but ended up being followed up on by Atachi, the other Moroccan here. It does fall to Drally, the player that you were mentioning. He goes for the double tap shot. It's saved by Juicy. It's a little bit dangerous. Atachi helps out his teammate, and Monkey Moon can't quite put it on target. But now we have Team BDS. They are starting as we expected. A few shots coming their way. And if you talk about evolution of players, you've got to mention Juicy as well. I think he's got to show up here for Gentlemates if they're going to have any chance against BDS. I think BDS likely to regain now that they've made out of Swiss. That's a miss from Monkey Moon. Let's take a look at the double in the middle. He does, and it's covered well by um, BDS in the center. Another miss from Monkey Moon, though. He can't get on the end of the ball, it seems, uh, like he usually does. Well, at least not as consistently as he usually does. It's very difficult to get the ball past this guy um, at any point in Rock League history, but so far, Gentlemates have been able to do so. Um, more than one occasion is Rally's worse again to cover a center ball. Atachi was doing so much work there, though, with absolutely zero boost. His game sense is, at times, second to none. But Drally has a backflip there. Seiko's coming over the top. Does he get the first goal of this game? He's not quite able to. It fell just in front of Atachi. Agonizing for him. He will get a second bite of the cherry, and Ooh. this time he will say yes and score. Oh, great placement by Atachi as he turns around to collect Juicy's drop-down pass. And, uh, the, yeah, the placement was key here. Drally was waiting on the crossfire, trying to dive bomb a save. Seiko looking uh, active so far 
This game is looking a bit like the dangerous Seiko of old, air dribbling and flip resetting on his opponents. Uh, often starting in that third man position with his solo, solo counter-attacking plays. Of course, at this stage of the season, it's not just about okay. making it, it's about making a statement ahead of it. And Team BDS respond quickly to make a statement of their own. Oh, it's just too quick from Drally. What a touch. He's launched Lovely. that one into the curve above the net. And of course, he reads it perfectly to get the uh, the goal that he, he himself has set up. I mean, immediate response from BDS. And it all comes from Drally, who has started in top gear in this match. Monkey been looking for Exotic in the middle. Wisely Exotic turning around there, but now he's got Drally following him up. And it's an, another ceiling pass this time. It's for Monkey Man in the middle. He's going for the double tap, oh. and he puts it wide. Oh, such a huge chance, not just the double tap itself, but there was boost deals going on, the pressure that BDS had and continued to, ha uh, to have. It was just starting to overwhelm Gentle Mates. It's still my, in the end, the composure remains and it's 2-1 BDS. Yeah, that's more like it from Monkey Moon, just consistent. Now look who it is setting up against. Rally has been a monster in game one. He has been outplaying so many Gentle Mates with his first touch, with his second touch. He's seemingly the player and right now, at least, that they've got to worry about the most. This is uh, the way that Team BDS like to play the game to make their opponents feel as uncomfortable as possible when they have the ball on attack. But here come those opponents. It's Gentle Mates Juicy doing some work to Jarali. But Jarali has a great little read there. Good challenge. A strong uh, hit on the ball in front of his own goal, which could be a scary moment. And now he's called off the ball by Monkey Moon, who sends it to the side where Atachi is waiting. Team BDS continuing to try and press. And every time Gentle Mates do come forward, they're finding it relatively comfortable defensively, Johnny. Oh, pinch step by Exotic gets closed down there. A quick aerial by Monkey Moon, blocked by Itachi. This is BDS in their comfort zone. This is the spot on the pitch that they really try and get all their opponents into. I can't really get back to this ball. Of course he can, but not before Itachi deflects it wide. Monkey Moon back into the middle. The activity and the quick recycling of every play from BDS, key to their success throughout the split. And uh, Gentle Mates are going to need to get some more quality defensive touches if they're going to break free from this stranglehold. Hugely aggressive half rotations so expected from Team BDS, but maybe that was one too many for Monkey Moon. Thankfully for him, Exotic had good got back, but that does leave something of an opening here for Gentle Mates. They're not quite able to take it on this occasion, but with one minute remaining, they've proven themselves to be dangerous. That does not help from Monkey Moon. Piercing it into his own heart there, sending it back towards the BDS half. Exotic's able to sort of get it away, and then there's a double commit, and that's what Gentle Mates need to avoid doing, despite the pace they're having to play at. Yeah, they're getting a bit clumped up there in one part of the pitch, Gentle Mates, and, uh, you know, I think is that attempt to beat BDS to the ball. You're trying to read the play that little bit faster, give yourself a head start in every race, but you know, have they gotten a bit too close in attempt? Oh, not this time! Seiko! Air dribble bump pass to Juicy. Who sent it into the top corner. Look at Seiko flying ahead of the ball here, denying Monkey Moon any access to it. Monkey Moon had to wait on the ground there so that Seiko would fly over him. And that left Juicy uncontested. Seiko was brought in to be BDS's star man about a year ago. And now there he was, causing them all sorts of harm. There's another huge bump. Can Itachi? Oh, I was hoping that the ball would have fallen to him to get the doink instead. Drally sends it forwards over the top of Seiko. Itachi puts it back out wide for Gentle Mates. Juicy is waiting. Exotic sends it down, though. Itachi has to be weary here. Monkey Moon is coming forwards. Drally with a little touchdown. BDS have the ball exactly where they want it until it falls to Seiko. Wants to put it past Exotic. Unable to on this occasion, but there's Juicy. Monkey Moon should get the clearance, and he keeps it high. Does that take the sting out of the tail for Gentle Mates? Will they have one more chance before overtime? No, they will not. And it's overtime game one. Yeah, so far, kickoffs have been relatively even between both teams. This one will go the way of BDS, thanks to Drally's quick turn, but they have not read each other at all. That was into the middle for Seiko. And Drally was obviously looking for a teammate there, but not on the same page. It's actually wants to get that second touch, can't quite do it. Monkey Moon oh, seems open. forward. Is this his moment? Yes, it is. BDS take another step forward towards the Copenhagen Major. Oh, what a big mistake by Juicy there. He didn't realize that that was just going to be a completely free ball for BDS. He came charging out of third man position. And yeah, there's just nobody even close to being back behind him. I mean, recovery's coming in that slow, obviously not making it easy for Juicy. He uh, kind of panicked and went for the immediate charge down on the plate and didn't even get close. So easy goal there in overtime for BDS after a closely fought regulation, which really for me had Drally stealing the show for the most part. He was causing 
uh, gentle mates problems. But uh, yeah, yeah, gentle mates are they're the team who need this win a lot more, Cole. So this is a bad start from them. They they need to really rally quickly here if they are going to keep their own destiny under their own control. They'll be hoping to rely on yesterday's experience, gentle mate, going three and one in the Swiss, looking comfortable. Of course, for Team BDS, it was a lot tougher, a massive slog going all the way to the fifth series. But those are the moments that galvanize your team. And Team EDS are a, a squad that historically have, have blown hot and cold. When things start to go wrong, they can go very, very wrong for Team BDS. But starting off this game well, Johnny, and taking the first game in the series will do good for their mental. Yeah, and no, I've actually been impressed by BDS regain ability throughout this split. You know, as a whole, they have been reverse swept yesterday by Top Cougars. They've been reverse swept by Carmine Corp, but it's not the blowout and complete capitulation. So we saw last season, at the start of last season at least, uh, where they were just completely uh, getting destroyed and didn't look like they have any on-pitch cohesion. Um, I think especially looking at their last event, uh, going all the way to the grand final, that's the sort of result that BDS fans will be very encouraged by and uh, now they're just trying to go do it again show that they you know might have had a bad swiss run yesterday but it's no problem you're right into the quarterfinal and you've got you know a star studded roster like this uh, that day-to-day -day reset can sometimes be all it takes a monkey moves missed a couple from the backboard i wonder if he's sort of lining up his sights as we go forward in this series team bds now just three games away from being the second european oh. team to but hagen that might be the early lead in the second game as well not quite there. Gentlemates get away with one. Can they come down the other end and cause some damage? Okay, the back pass from Drally, then forward to Monkeyman. Monkeyman is kind of between a pass and a shot there. Think if Exalt to get more boost, it would have been a goal for uh, BDS. They again get themselves into that um, offensive pressure so easily, BDS. Their midfield control, definitely some of the best in the world. Gentlemates have done pretty good work on the back foot throughout this split obviously coming off a disappointing only top eight in the last event but uh this is not gonna be i think too uncomfortable for them it's actually up early here and he is uh, gonna make a touch on to exotics clear look at this so from drally just, just the confidence to just full send it in the back corner and to keep gentle mates on the back foot yeah, he is completely comfortable now, Dryly, playing like the star man for Team BDS. Yeah, that slightly awkward first series, maybe, on the main broadcast, but since then, he has been huge for them, as he had to be and as he was expected to be. 1v1 Master. Here's his teammate, Exotic. But he's beaten by Juicy, actually. Attaches to the left. Can Juicy wrap his car around this one and get it to Attachi? In the end, he shot himself. The old bounce dribble or hook shot. Didn't quite work out, but Gentlemates once again showing they can be dangerous on the counter. I do want to see them have a bit more pressure of their own. Yeah, they need to just, I think, survive just a touch more easily. Oh, that's a huge mistake there by Gentlemates leaving the mid open, but Monkeyman backflipped um, while trying to get up quickly for the ball. You cannot leave those center balls open against BDS because they will continue to look for that avenue of attack. This one has been cut off well by, by Juicy. You know, it really does come down to how well can Gentlemates survive though in defense. If they can keep the boost totals nice and high, the counter attacks will have a lot more threat to them. If they're just continually getting boost starved, then they try and counter attack with very little momentum. It's a lot harder to get anything done. Oh, it's actually to the backboard. Nice touch, but it does fall back towards the Gentlemates half where Monkey Moon is waiting. He goes to the ceiling, gets the touch as well. Juicy was oh. waiting, but Monkey Moon somehow bludgeons his way through almost. Has to be really aware that the Gentlemates defenders. Yeah, crucial moments here for Gentlemates. As again, they look to try and hit BDS on the counter. It's stopped short at the first try. But of course, they've got one of the best third men in the world, Seiko, holding things down at the back. Just notice how many times BDS are cutting off the ball at the halfway line. Their defensive line is so high compared to Gentlemates. Any Gentlemates mistake will be crucial and uh, could be immediately punished, whereas BDS, you know, if they let the ball pass one player, well, no problem. They've still got some space to work with behind them. Dryly gets the block on Seiko. Seiko, who is continuing to be the potential thorn in Team BDS's side. It looks most likely for Gentlemates, in my opinion. Here come BDS Exotic, saved by Seiko, doing all sorts of work yet again. Juicy's following it up. But BDS seems to be set, seems to be first at every second ball as it stands. It's a better attempt from Apache, but still, BDS come away with the ball until Exotic misses. Real chances here for Team BDS, Johnny. They just can't quite pull the trigger at this point. Yeah, they are definitely the team with the majority of the pressure, as you would expect in this matchup, as you expect in you know pretty much any BDS matchup, really. Um, 
But they have not yet scored on it. And that's a great chance. Oh. That's a great shot by Juicy. Itachi finds Juicy on the far side of the box after initially passing to himself off the ceiling. That's just perfect on the counter from Itachi. And with that much pace, there is no catching up to them. These are the chances that you have to take if you are to beat Team BDS, and they took them. With the two players that I haven't been mentioning as much combining, Itachi and Juicy, a little spark of magic, a little piece of brilliance. Can they keep it going? That one's into the center. Seiko, can he get over the top of the ball? Instead, he goes to the backboard. It was an almost impossible read, but Seiko, one of the few players who could have read it, wasn't quite able to on this occasion, though. And Kimun sends it high, and Team BDS on the ropes a little bit here, gentle mates. We're really starting to warm up in this series. And they, like I said, do need to get their... I think they've got to get a foothold in this one as soon as possible. BDS are an incredibly momentum-based team. It's difficult to stop once they do get going. It's well defended by Juicy. Had to jump over a bump and then in intercept the play. Just over 30 seconds left for BDS. Exotic in the middle, not much momentum. And uh, still managed just to get an awkward shot on net. And crucial there. Good job by Itachi. They're staying active with these recoveries in the middle. Gentlemen, doing a fantastic job defensively. They've only conceded four shots according to the game, but so much of the ball has been in their half, and they've seemed comfortable, especially with air dribbles away like that. Itachi tees up Juicy. Charlie on the backboard had to get in Juicy's way. BDS now have 10 more seconds. Oh. They keep their lead. Exotic into the center. Charlie towards Monkey Moon. Has to put this one away. Not quite able to there. Exotic lines up one more flick, but it's weird. Oh, what? Oh, it's really strong and goes in. Nobody charged down the shot, but then Exotic shot shoots it at two defenders. It looked like it was a guaranteed save, but they got in each other's way. Somehow, Gentlemates have completely botched the win. That was an easy save for either player, but both going for it turned out to be a little bit awkward. Yeah, potentially the, the ugliest zero-second goal you'll ever see, but BDS will not care as long as they can continue to press in this overtime. Itachi, though, has a bit between his teeth now for Gentleman. Seiko's waiting, hoping the ball will fall to him. Not quite now. Stays in the play, though. That's something Seiko's doing really well, refusing to leave, but Exotic bludgeons back Gentleman. Team BDS have to get this pressure back. It's not been their game so far, despite that zero-second equaliser. Drally could change that. It's going to fall straight down where Seiko was waiting. Uh, it's just, you know, gentlemen, it's been their own worst enemy there, but they can't think about that right now. They've got to get on with the job at hand. It's one of the most difficult things about Rocket League when you go to overtime from, you know, any kind of zero second goal, but especially one that was so easily preventable. That mental reset needs to be, you know, not even, no timeout, not even a gap between games. You've just got to figure out how to get back into the play. But it seems like they've done that. A minute into OT now, gentlemen, it's our the team in attack at the moment. And they'll feel like they should have won this one already. Can they get the win they surely feel like they deserve? And tie up the series 1-1. Suddenly things will get really nervy for Team BDS. I was talking about their resilience yesterday, but you know, there were gaps in their armor. Gentlemates are trying to show them right here in this overtime. A series win for Gentlemates doesn't quite bring them to Copenhagen, but they will be oh. so close as Atachi gets the composed catch. Charlie, they're up against Juicy. BDS having a little bit more of a pressure here, but really unable to completely make Gentlemates panic as Juicy almost beats two BDS players. Monkey Moon had to get the touch there. Yeah, Monkey Moon defended the back corner boost, but he lost, lost control of the ball. It's deflected wide with a blue trail back into the middle quickly, but BDS are defending their back corner boost over and over again here, so they do have the ability to survive these plays and quickly recycle. That's a good double oh. attempt by Juicy off the bar. Monkey Moon didn't read that one. He was not easily positioned to save it. And here come Gentlemates again. It's Juicy denied by Drally. Clear cut chances starting to come up for Gentlemates, though. They have to keep it going. Itachi's beaten there by Drally. Juicy, out wide he goes. Exotic gets the boost steal, but does he get the ball? Maybe Juicy's trying to use every ounce of boost that he has just to get something on that one. And he actually does remarkably well. Seiko or Itachi? Good communication there from Gentlemates in defense. There was the miscommunication that's led us here into this overtime. They seem to have stepped that up. Drally has a chance to finish it, though. But he's not quite got up in time, and it will remain 1-1. It's just a really awkward passage of play here for Seiko. He was trying to get a back corner boost about 20 seconds ago. It spawned when he left, and now he's been out of the play. Oh, he just oh. can't keep up this entire time. He's on small pads trying to get back into rotation. Again, awkwardly on that near post, Seiko. This time he will get goal side and follows up well with another good touch. Now they're in a 2v1, Itachi and Seiko stopped by Exotic. 
Yeah, Exotic did enough on the backboard there, or at the back, should I say, rather than the backboard. Monkey Moon flicks it. Itachi's already in there. Gentlemates playing on the front foot. Team BDS loving this, maybe. Hoping they can counter-attack, but not if Gentlemates get their passing boots on. His Exotic! Oh. And he sends this one and shows the others how it's done. Yeah, Seiko just didn't get enough on that. He's dropped it down to the last player of BDS. And there's just no chance for the goalie this time. Getting chased down, getting chased away from a comfortable position. While Exotic slots it perfectly overhead. And BDS go ahead 2-0. Time out, Gentlemates. No surprise there. What a heartbreaking game for them. It's, you know, it was a back and forth overtime. Both teams had their chances in. But how on earth did they manage to end up in overtime in the first place? We will have yeah. to take another look at that uh, mess up later on. But yeah, there really is no excuse for that. Nobody challenged. They're both on the back wall awkwardly. And then they've both gone and bumped each other in an attempt to, or on the way to an easy save. Not, it's just not acceptable at this level. If they are to lose this series, they will look back at this moment here as one they should have done so oh, much Jiro, dear. better on. You expect Juicy or Seiko, either of them, to, to nail that 100 times out of 100. But in these high-pressure situations, Johnny, it's never as simple as it looks. I mean, obviously, they were trying to ground that ball. They're not just trying to save it. So both players are trying to, you know, just get a touch on it to knock it pretty much straight downwards. Um, but, you know, doing that, when both of your players are going for the ball and then they both bump each other, they lose a little bit of momentum mid-air because they've bumped each other. And because they're going for such a small touch, uh, well, both of them are, are planning the exact same touch on the ball. They both don't make it because they've lost a touch of momentum. But, you know, the problem is obviously the, the, the communication there, the lack of trust. Somebody has to just call that they've got the save covered, they've got the shot covered, and somebody else has to just, just challenge. It's, uh, you know, the classic um, uh, issue there in defense where two defenders are doing the same job. You've got to try and manage your tasks better than that in Rocket League. And this is the same true at all levels of the game. There's no point having two defenders do the same job. You could just have one player do that. The other player can challenge, um, especially when Exotic didn't really have a lot of momentum anyway. I mean, you've got to just get 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 closed down on him there. And easy, easy save, easy win for Gentlemates. But yeah, th th now they've got to figure out how to, uh, you know, just stabilize mentally here. I think in this kind of timeout, it's less of a game plan change and more of a, let's just calm down. <laughs> that was that was an embarrassing way to lose a game, but we're still in the series. For sure, the key thing here is that they completely mentally reset and bring themselves back into game three. They're well in this series. It's, it's not been a blowout by any means. Team BDS have had more of the play, I would say, but in general, as far as clear-cut chances go, they've certainly been any available for gentlemates and it's also two overtime losses they yeah. could very well be 2-0 up in this series so i agree with you there johnny not one to completely throw the, the plan out the window but one to take a deep breath and keep on going yeah these teams obviously they know each other so well these players have been playing against each other and uh you know they've been uh on the uh, you know same teams in uh, the past um many times so this this is not going to be a situation they're confused by. They know what you know. Gentlemen, know what BDS are going to do. They know that they're going to try and um, put pressure on them and force those double commits, force those, those panic plays. And it's all about staying calm. It's all about defending your back corner boots, trying to um, you know survive and then eventually break free with quick counters. Here comes one from Juicy. That's a great set setup as he goes all the way to the ceiling. Goes for the delay on the shot. Um, doesn't get doesn't work this time. But not a bad idea there from Juicy. Trying to catch BDS in the mind game. Now here comes Seiko with a reset. He's popped it high, and that's going to be blocked as well. These individual moments from Gentle Mates remain so important, paramount. If they are to get back into this series, Seiko seems to be the player who has the ability to break through Team BDS today. But BDS just about defending for now. Drally actually leaves that one for himself. It was nice until Juicy cannoned into him. Itachi has a player to aim for. It is Seiko. Instead, he goes himself oh. and hits the post and the crossbar. Monkey Moon uses both. Almost, uh, was it Toxic or Acro for uh, uh, Top Cougars who got a goal from that very corner? Oh, Top Toxic from his own yeah, post, yeah. Toxic. Could have been similar there for Monkey Moon, not quite, but that would have been lovely. Oh, I mean, that would have been ridiculous to score a pinch from <laughs> the top corner. I believe it every goal. time I see that now, Johnny. Oh, yeah, it's a uh, good defense here by Monkey Moon, again, to deflect the ball safely to the corner with a save attempt. Rally's been tripped up on his exit, though, and uh, now Gentlemates get right back into attack. Juicy. Going high this time. You know, that's good offensive mix up there by Juicy. You remember earlier in the game, he's faked to go low, and now he's trying to go over the defender, trying to keep them guessing. But uh, BDS are guessing correctly or reading correctly every time. Seiko has a chance, another chance for a clean hit. That one just goes forward into the corner. 
Exotic is able to get something on it. Charlie puts it forward towards Juicy. It's the pass on. Not quite yet again, but Gentlemates will be enjoying this. Extended period of pressure. And making BDS sweat every time they get the ball now. Clearance from Exotic. He's got no boost left. Monkey Moon is up. Charlie has to get something in the center. And now BDS have a little bit of pressure of their own. Gentlemates used to this. Exotic to the ceiling. There's a demo coming in from Itachi. Charlie is the last man there for Team BDS. There's enough to get it to Exotic. BDS not looking the most likely to score, I would say. The tactical timeout seems to have done some good, unless they score from this. Oh, and, oh wow. <laughs> They nearly do, but Seiko's the savior. I mean, this really has been a series to highlight different ways to center the ball. It's not been direct into the middle. It's often off the ceiling. It's off the, uh, the curb above the net a lot of the time from BDS and Gentlemates. And, um, you know, that, that's a really instructive way to pass the ball to your teammates. Even with Rally scored by passing the ball to himself doing that in game one as well. You know, if you're getting uh, an opponent blocking the direct route right in front of you, that is, you know, always a quick way to go up and over them. Drally uncontested here. He's got the easiest read for a player of his caliber, and it's 1-0 BDS. It's just a clean win there for Exotic against Juicy. Seiko wasn't expecting it, ends up underneath the ball, and despite Atachi's best efforts, Drally is going to have the clean shot, really the cleanest goal that we've had so far today in this game. And it does mean that BDS have yet another lead. And for all of Gentlemates' good work, they have nothing to show for it. Charlie currently with four shots. A lobby high right now. Maybe going up for another against Juicy. Juicy manages to just force it to the side. It's dangerous times right now for Gentlemates, Johnny. And another boost steal there from Exotic. It's painful for Gentlemates as they try to scramble to control the ball and to stop the BDS attacks. Uh, their boost is just being taken again and again. I think that's one thing BDS, like I said in the last game, have done extremely well. It's when they're in defense, they're picking up those back corner boosts, they're defending it, and it really stops the attack from working for a look set period of time. That's great fake by Monkey Bit of Defense. He's got Exotic to help him out. This time Juicy uh, does call off the double commit that it's actually initially went for. And that's all they needed to do in the second game. Just somebody trust the other player like they did there. Everything though is falling to Team BDS right now. Look at this one, landing on Exotic. Monkey Moon's coming in, brought it for himself. Exotic there, he goes for it, gets the flip reset. I was wondering if uh, Drally was behind them waiting for that yeah. ball, but uh, it was it was taken there by his teammate. Couldn't quite maneuver it in though. Yeah, I think it, the pick would have made sense there from uh, Exotic, but he was in two minds, couldn't decide whether or not to go for it. That They're just continuing to batter the Gentleman's defense. Now, they've got to be careful while they do this with just that one goal lead. BDS are... Really showing how oh. to keep consistent pressure. The shot quality just not good enough. It got away from Juicy there. Never really looked like he could get a proper shooting angle. And that's what... Same thing's happened for BDS as well. As if shots are not quite connecting in dangerous positions. Just over 30 seconds ago, Gentlemen is still trailed by one. Seiko needs to get this one away. Exotic, though, charges him down so quickly. Yet again, Exotic wraps all the way around. Oh, my. Causing pandemonium in the Gentleman's defense. And they can't get any momentum on the ball. They just have to hit it. They don't want to do that because they know that's exactly what Team BDS want. Caught between a rock and such a hard place. Juicy. Can he flip this one along? No, instead he leaves it for Seiko. One more chance. Exotic, though, is rapid in getting into the air. Sending Gentlemates back yet again. Monkey Moon keeps it high. This is the last thing that Gentlemates want. Seiko, potentially, gives them just a glint of light. But Drally is going to smother it away. And Team BDS go within a game of Copenhagen. Now they're just too fast, BDS, in this game. The one goal coming from a clean beat in the midfield. Quick follow-up from Drally. And, uh, yeah, Gentlemates weren't able to produce the same fight for the midfield they did in the last game. They really are struggling here against BDS, even without that. Uh, well, even if the last game did go their way, it, it does appear that today BDS do, uh, once again, have a bit too much for them. And yeah, Gentlemates, uh, not in the worst possible position, for land qualification. We've like the desk mentioned earlier on today, but uh, they, they're gonna need some results to go in their favor if they lose this one. They, you know, you know we'll be watching for the rest of the day a little bit uh, nervously as they only sit three points ahead of Magnifico and Vitality, who both play in separate quarterfinals um, later on today. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not where you want to be if you're gentlemates thinking, oh, I hope this team beat that team. And then if that happens, we get that point, blah, 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 mm. blah. You just feel you have to get this reverse sweep. And Team BDS are a team that have been reverse swept so far this split in a best of seven. It's not beyond the rounds of possibility that in a series like this, it's having one goal games. There will be something. There will be something for them.
It can happen, but will it happen? A completely different question. I mean, the good news is, just like uh, LG and NA, they're they're waiting to see if Carmine Corp will win later on today. It's like LG waiting to see if G2 are going to win. Well, probably. So, you know, you've got some good teams uh, playing for you later on today if you're a Gentlemates fan. Namely, Carmine Corp beating Magnifico would be uh, the result that they need. But uh, that's just the first half of the move. Wouldn't be completely out of the woods yet. They're not completely done at this moment. Can they be the second team this split to reverse sweep BDS in a best of seven? That's a good attempt by Juicy into the middle for Itachi, but of course he has closed down quickly. Gentlemates have to take this four-step journey with the first step. This could be it, Juicy. Sets oh. up the Seiko, but it's saved again. It wasn't the best strike, Johnny. Yeah, the placement was, the I think, the focus there, but... It wasn't perfectly placed. If you're going to take some pace off the shot and try to place it directly in the corner, it has to go directly in the corner of the net. You can't be putting it that close to the keeper. Down the other side, Drally. Yeah, so that towards Juicy. So it went for the pre-jump, but Juicy had the mechanics and maneuverability to get it over the top of him. Eventually, though, Drally does get his reward. A clean touch on the ball. He fakes it underneath Atachi almost. Atachi just gets a chunk out of it, but Drally wants more. He seems to be waking up as this series goes on. Desperate for the ball right now for Team BDS. Here he is again, causing havoc. Monkey Moon is just waiting, knowing that Gentlemates have nowhere to go. He was tracking it. So it does fall in the end to Atachi. Gentlemates playing this slightly slower play style. More deliberate with their attacks than Team BDS, who are throwing everything at the Gentlemates. Oh, wow. Defense. That's lovely, the free jump from Seiko. Atachi and him almost combining to make some magic. And even with a, a perfect pre-jump pass into the middle, the shot is closed down so quickly. BDS do not waste any time in uh, defense with their challenges. Every touch is immediately challenging. You can see the pressure that's putting on Gentlemates. They know that anything other than the absolutely fastest play possible is going to be denied. And in that attempt to play as quickly as possible, they're, you know, sometimes going a bit too quick for their own good and losing control. Seiko sends it high. Does he have anyone there with him? Not on this occasion yet again, gentlemen. Start to feel have to be taking some more risks and attack. Team BDS certainly are. Monkey Moon fakes out Atachi below, gets the floor pitch. Seiko had already jumped. It's going to fall now to Exotic. Drally's there on the side. Monkey Moon, as ever, lingering in, gets a demo as well, making it as difficult as possible for gentlemen to defend. They're doing a stellar job of it so far in this game as it tricks over the halfway mark. Juicy leaves that one towards Seiko. I like the ideas from Gentlemates, but finishing the final product is just not quite there for them. Yeah, we're wondering if we're going to see that same star quality from this team. Who's it going to be at times in this split? It's been Juicy. You know, when Seiko joined the roster at the start of the season, everybody's thinking that it could be him. It could be, uh, you know, more of a, uh, a Seiko in the limelight kind of team uh, than, you know, the previous Seiko. Rosser, how much time has Juicy got here? Not enough. Of course, Monkey Moon's there to slam the door shut at the near post. There's a demo there from Exotic on Atachi. I'll open things up here for Team BDS. Monkey Moon has no boost, but he still has all the ability in the world to get the flip reset there. It opens things completely up. Drally has a chance for a double. This could sink Gentlemates. Drally slows himself down with the flip reset, and Atachi is so grateful for that. Exotic perfectly timing that 100 uh, boost respawn. So again, BDS have the facilities they need to get out of defense and not just that but score immediately it's rally pinching it in his own back corner into the ceiling straight towards monkey moon who slots it from distance i mean gentlemen so you can't really blame them too much for not seeing that one coming because what a creative pass that is by Drally. defensive pinch straight to monkey moon is that finish from monkey moon the goal that takes team bds to copenhagen we will find out over the next 80 seconds or so. Gentlemates doing everything they can to drag them right back down. That pass might be the start of it. Drally gets it towards Atachi. In the center is Seiko. The pass, but not quite finding his teammate yet again from Gentlemates. And BDS beat it away. Will their composed attacking play begin to turn into desperation from Team BDS as they inch ever more close to the hallowed halls of Copenhagen? Yeah, there's a minute to go for Gentlemates. That's a big dunk into the middle. Seiko match by uh, Monkey Moon. In defense, again, BDS are just putting in challenges when they need to. And what a stark contrast that is to a gentleman's roster who lost game two by not doing just that. Monkey Moon chased uh -huh. down from behind while he's trying to slot the open net. Gentlemen's are holding on for now, but can they hold on much longer? It's off their post again, straight back towards Monkey Moon. And they're just toying with their food at the moment. They're playing the ball around gentlemen's a whole lot more than the mates can respond. 
That was nice though from Juicy. At least gets it onto the BDS half. Itachi will line something up. Exotic is waiting for him, but he's beaten by Itachi, who gets oh. into the center. Oh, so near yet so far for Gentlemates. One more chance, maybe. Seiko wants to get the block. Instead, it's faked. Exotic beats it away. Desperate times now for Team BDS. Exotic from the ceiling. Itachi gets in the way. Seiko's waiting. What can he conjure up? The Magician. He's got a chance here. The flip resets alive. Juice is in the center, waiting for the ball. It's going to bypass everyone. Drally somehow gets a touch, though. Exotic, can he kill it? Can he send Team BDS to Copenhagen? I think he can. BDS with a 4-0, where every game was within one goal. Wow, I mean, not without drama at the end. There's somehow another slow roller bouncing towards the net, but BDS get the job done in four. And gentlemates will be incredibly disappointed that they could not get a game here. Never, they couldn't give BDS a good series. And now they're going to be merely spectators like the rest of us, waiting, watching to find out if they will uh, still be a top four team in Europe by the end of this event. As you mentioned, they are rooting for Carmine Corp against Magnifico, which is the place you'd want to be in if you yeah. are in that situation. But we'll deal with those permutations later. For now, it's the fact that Team BDS have made it comfortably in the top four of Europe, Johnny. And they've seemed like a premium team ever since they stepped out onto the RCS pitch this season. Yeah, they, they, they played with confidence. They played with the no, no hesitation defensive style that they have become so well known for over the years. Monkey Moon in particular. Just, Every time the ball came into the middle, somebody was there to cut it off, which is so frustrating um, for gentlemates, of course, uh, seeing their attacks fizzle um, before shots can even be produced um, uh, uh, more than once this series, more than once this, uh, even in this final game. But uh, yeah, gentlemates will be pretty disappointed with themselves. They did not play with the same aggression, the same conviction that they did in their grand final run in the first regional the split they're gonna need to go back to the drawing board here figure out how they can and whether it's communication whether it's a structure whatever it is that they've got to try and revert back to that confidence style that had them making that deep run uh, uh, about a month ago now well there we have it we have the second european team heading to copenhagen and it's team bds we will be back after a few minutes to break that series down and see how it went so very very well for them Ugh. Cole? Stumpy, I need your help. Cole, mate, it's 10 p.m. I went to bed two hours ago. I'm nearly 30. Oh, this better be urgent. I can't sleep. I'm trying to figure out the best way to let people know that Copenhagen tickets are available now. Cope Blan Hagen, but fine. I think I might know someone who can help out with this. <laughs> TJ, hello, mate. We need your help. How can we let people know that there are tickets available to Cope Blan Hagen? Copenhagen tickets are available now? Righto, fellas. What's Denmark known for? I need someone with a bit more worldly knowledge than me. Stax, we're struggling here. How can we let people know that they can get tickets to the Danish land? Ooh, Danish, you say? You guys are going about this all wrong. Wait, who added Gibbs? Who added you? This is Rocket League. Of course I'm here. Everyone knows that Denmark is home to the famous playwright and poet Hans Christian Andersen. And snow! Guys, I'm friends with loads of pros and they all really respect me because you know, I'm Johnny Boy, I'm kind of a big deal. But just leave it to me, I'll, I'll call someone up. I'm sure they can help us out. Yo, what's up guys? Oh, hey, it's Jack. apparently Jack. Jack. G'day Jack. Hi guys, my name. Uh, is he okay? He's fine. He always does this. Don't worry. Hi, guys. My name is... A Hi, guys. Hi, guys. My name... As a Canadian, I quite like Lemon Kiwi's snow idea. Thank you. What if we really focus in on the fact that they had Vikings? Is this thing on? Hello? 
I hear Denmark has I heard an assaulted licorice is delicious. Guys, I've got it. BDS have just booked their tickets to Copenhagen and they will be uh, very happy with their performance in doing so. 4-0 over gentlemen who wait to find out later today or even this weekend to find out if they will be joining BDS um, in Denmark for the international land. Um, right now, I'm joined by Monkey Moon who has uh, made it, yeah, I think, a fairly good name for himself in the open era. Uh, some of you might know him. Uh, Monkey Moon, congratulations. You've just made Copenhagen. Um, you're back at, at the international stage. Are you, are you excited to, to play in front of the international crowd again? Uh, yeah, I'm really hyped to, to play uh, again in a major. 
Uh, I made it like uh, easily, but uh, we work uh, a, a lot to to make it. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to play. Yeah, you you mentioned there a lot of work to to make it. I mean, you and Exotic and Rally are a new team for the split. You've obviously put a ton of work into making that team work, but did you think it was going to be working this well this early? Did you guys think? Did you think you'd be this strong uh, with this brand new team? Uh, not that strong, but uh, as I said, like we we worked uh, a lot uh, in the off season. Uh, like we tried uh, uh, with uh, each other uh, in uh, September. So it's like uh, four months, four months, five months, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, not that strong, but uh, now we are good. We are we are C2, maybe now. And yeah, so yeah, yeah, you are. Uh, yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, I think yeah, amazing to, to be showing up this uh, huge so early. Uh, but yeah, it's not been easy the entire time. I mean, yesterday in the Swiss, it was a bit of a struggle. You went to round five, um, but then today you're four zeroing gentlemen. So what, what's happened <laughs> between yesterday and today to in improve your performance by uh, that degree? Uh, we, just, we just talk, uh, like uh, we talked, uh, all the team uh, talked. Uh, we tried to fix the uh, fix issues. Uh, yeah. Like we played bad yesterday, and we were like, yeah, we have nothing to to lose today. So let's try to to play like uh, we did the two first uh, regionals. Well, it definitely looked like the same level. So I'm yep. excited to see what else you guys can do uh, this event. But tomorrow you'll start off either playing against Carmi Corp or Magnifico. They're the next match on on the stream, if uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, are you hoping for the Carmi Corp rematch? Because every time you guys play them, it's a really good series. Uh, is that what you who you'd rather play uh, in the semi final? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, it's always good to play uh, Command Command Corp in English. It's weird to say that. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but yeah uh, yeah it's, it's a good match against uh, Carmen. So but if I can play Magnifico, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, uh, yeah we'll see. Yeah, we'll see tomorrow, but Monkey Moon, congrats again on the win. Congrats on qualifying to go again. You go enjoy it with your team. Thank and uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to us as well. Thank you. BDS cruises on through, and if they uh, if they can take Magnifico, they will. Shogun, I that's think that's a statement we would all say. Uh, yeah, Good. I feel like... <laughs> You would always try and pick that. Over you know, K-Corp. Like, <laughs> absolutely fantastic to, te to get Monkey Moon on for an interview. It was so good to hear from him. Uh, it used to be uh, extra all the time that we used to get for those. So uh, mm. fantastic to, to hear from the absolute legend himself. And hopefully more of that to come. And for BDS fans, they'll be hoping that more of these sort of matches to come because they ran rough shot, Cole. Yeah, they did. I mean, well, I say they did. I think that the 4-0 maybe flatters them a little bit, bearing in mind we had that zero-second moment and each game was between one goal. But yeah, I think on the balance of play, they were relatively comfortable moment to moment. Sorry, I, I'm giggling there because, uh, Alif, you might have heard it backstage, uh, where me and Stumpy were the ones that actually predicted gentlemates to win that. The moment that zero-second goal went in, I just had to just go... Shogun, I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I really it, like you, Shogun, for what it's worth, as the the sort of would be loser. So, cheers. It just it sucks because overall for for gentle mates, I mean, there were there were some a few moments where you know the three defenders in net, how is it going in kind of situations that you're like, mm. why is it that close? And and if those mistakes are happening, this feels like the way yeah. Cole it should have gone. Like BDS is the team with the most form on the field. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the gentlemates have done so much good work up to this point. They still have a relatively decent chance of making it to the major, of course, until there's a, um, uh, what's it called? What's it called? Oh my God, my brain has gone completely dead. The knockout thing. Uh, tiebreaker. Thank you oh, very much. Oh, there we go. That, that's all <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, I got there in the end. Really Unless, to help you there. <laughs> no, thank, thank you. you I appreciate it. Um, unless there's a tiebreaker, there's nothing else that they can do from this point. Right. They've earned their right, potentially to make it there, then they've earned their right yeah. to not be able to break down Team BDS yeah. that much. Man, you can see it right above my face there, BDS locking themselves in. It's on that side. Uh, as, uh, 
as a team coming from Europe to that major. So only two spots now remaining. Let's glance at the bracket, see where we end up. BDS choking into the semifinals where we still have six teams remaining to fight for those other three spots. Yeah, and gentle mates now vulnerable to uh, results around them not going their way and maybe knocking them out of that top four. So they'll be very much watching with a keen eye for the rest of the day. Right. Uh, could get very interesting. Yeah, I mean, you said, Leaf, that anybody would uh, rather face Magnifico than Carmine Corp, but I'm sure that gentle mates will be rooting for Carmine Corp. They want the big bad KC to steamroll their opponents. That, that, is, so. that is fair enough. Let's start talking about that matchup. It's K Corp, the blue wall with Magnifico on the other side cj's favorite team at this point uh in the region this is a massive uphill battle i mean with two spots left and magnifico not out of the running cole you know that this must be a daunting task but they have to be having the right mental about this yeah you just have to go into it and believe if you want to break into that top four right. occasionally you're going to come up against a team like Carmine Corp and for Magnifico it all comes down to this what I would say they've done brilliantly Shogun is give themselves the platform they have a chance and my goodness they've earned it yeah it doesn't feel like a team that's sort of just waiting for things to happen around them which has been really good they are actually going out of their way they're trying to fight for these matches that's what makes them so unpredictable and it's sort of that level that you need in a matchup like this one because because these matches, whilst obviously going to be KC very heavily favored, they can swing. It would not be the most shocking thing in European history to see that swing happen. No, not at all. I mean, Magnifico, they are certainly capable. Stizzy's been brilliant. Uh, Atomic, we were saying yesterday, he sort of blows hot and cold. But when he's blowing hot, then my goodness, he is a fantastic player. I'd say the most dependable player they have is Tox, because that's sort of his role. And he's performed it very well, I'd say, as the anchor of this team. I mean, uh, I, I guess percentage-wise, and I'm not not to give predictions, but percentage-wise, I mean, where do you think you know even a, a, a chat would land on something like this show? And I mean, I, what are the odds? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean the Casey. <laughs> So, yeah, and I think historically, I mean, chat's got a great chance, by the way, of winning our prediction contest, which is absolutely horrifying, by the way. But even the last two times these uh, teams played, they played uh, two weeks ago twice. Uh, KC beat them in both of them. The Swiss and the elimination stage in the semifinals beat them 4-1 and 3-2, respectively. So, yeah, it's an uphill fight here for Magnifico. But if they want their chance, if they want to make it to the major, this is the team that they've yeah. got to beat. And they will have to, and we're going to keep reiterating this, until it is not a thing anymore, right. they have to eliminate Ferra from a tournament still has not been done. Yeah, that's what I was about to bring up too, is that, that Ferra again in Rocket League right now is the main character. This is his story arc at this point. I mean, not to take away from the players that are, are there, but he's been behind Cole, the successful teams as of recent, and he's had his own successful career before that. So uh, you have to be looking at like, this is the team of the guy specifically to beat. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we've had a run like this in Rocket League of a coach between two teams who's moved from one to the next and, and just continued <laughs> in his tracks. Yeah, it's it's quite an incredible story that Farrah is brewing up. But I mean, it does feel a little bit easier, Shogun, when you have, you know, Rise, Matera and Atto at your, uh, at your like, use. It's it's the pep thing, isn't it? It's like, oh, is he doing Yeah, that? true. Because the plight like that. You, you get to coach these style of players because you are the best around. Right. And the players know that players... Look at the buy-in that you're getting there. How many players have we seen talk about coaches go, oh, they're not all that useful, but mm -hmm. players are listening, players are good to go. Hopefully we'll get them in on time. They have been a little bit uh, late on occasion listening to the pep talks, but we'll see how all of that is. Fist bumps, oh, there fist you bumps, go. fist there bumps. We go. There we go. Time Turn to around. walk into the series. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Good guy Atto as well, standing up so that Vatira and Rise can sit. <laughs> yeah. It's just play standing up. I I wouldn't do. We, we have to debate. No, to I debate. think they give him a chance. <laughs> yeah, the debate about the controller over or under the desk. Well, now let's we're taking it to the next level. Stand playing. Who out there stand plays? Raise your hand in chat. Uh, imagine if we had somebody that played RLCS with a standing desk. Like that would be so awkward for the LAN. <laughs> would we accommodate for that? Or just I think say, you'd right. have to accommodate for that. If they've earned their way to a major right. slash worlds, it's like, yeah, get them, get them a standing desk. It can't be that tough, can it? Surely just like hike up one side of it. So everyone's like playing at a 45 degree angle. If purpose left is probably the most comfortable. I, uh, I've tried stand up playing and it's not it's not the easiest i thought you were saying you tried stand up leaf like now that i would tune into <laughs> no you wouldn't want to <laughs> <laughs> i would come on chat type one if you tune in for leaf stand-up comedy uh, yeah, this is gonna be a 
massive amount of twos. Uh, <laughs> but I, I do have to shout out here is the Stizzy Cam. I I absolutely love it. It's a. It's my, I think all players need to from now on we need to have their cameras to the to the side like this. Uh, but it's cool, isn't it? Get your votes in chat as well. Well, oh my God, there are too many ones by the way. <laughs> that is, you they know, are. love this idea. Got a platform, Maybe you bro. just don't back yourself enough, Leaf. They think you're exactly. a funny man. Yeah, it's true. I had one good joke today, and now it's it's all skewed, but. Casey, I like that you track your jokes. I appreciate that. I approve of that. <laughs> Magnifico hashtags in <laughs> chat. Get rid of the ones. Use the hashtags now. <laughs> Let us know how it's gonna go. We know how it's gonna go. To be honest, remember, we're, we're t- you guys could have an upset here. You guys could get ahead in the the predictions. Well, they can't get ahead here because I get a feeling we've all gone a certain way, and it's gonna be the same way. So they'll stay like one behind CJ. Uh, I think so can I back you stumpy. to have rooted for Magnifico here? If anyone on this panel is going <laughs> you know, to, have, because you are I so really desperate for points. If I want any chance of not being last, I actually would have to start going Magnifico. Look, Shogun, you're a competitive man. Surely you got to go for the dub, and that means predicting Magnifico right I'm here, I'm a right competitive now. man, but I'm also a broken man at this I point. See. It's... It's not gone the way. I'm going to ask production tomorrow if I can just like have FF be next to my predictions. I'll just give it up. We're way over two minutes in now. I, I deserve it. That's uh, brutal. I mean, do you do you feel for for these guys from Magnifico that they're feeling the weight of this match, or or do you think no no um. No, because they went to five in the Swiss, you know, and what they we, got Carmine we... Corp. It's going to happen. They're, this is their quarterfinals. They've got Carmine Corp. You can't complain about that at this point. But like I said earlier, they've given themselves a chance to make Copenhagen, which so far has been a fantastic split. I want to also point out that they're having a typing battle uh, going on in <laughs> in their uh, in the in-game lobby there. So I don't know what that's all about. But uh, let's I find mean, out. We noticed this yesterday. Rise got people to join the lobby early by trying to impersonate an admin and saying go. <laughs> He was so happy with himself <laughs> when two people joined. What a troll. That's too good. All right, we have to find out if there's a split. I'm going to spoil it right now. There's there's no split. It's got to no, be no. the blue wall. Which means Magnifico definitely win. It, it, <laughs> we all win and lose together, Shogun, well, even you. That's the thing. Is C, again, it's always been the opposite of whatever CJ puts in. Hmm. And he's put KC, I believe. Oh, right? no. Oh, th- Oh, big day for uh, tiebreakers uh, then. Uh, right? Tiebreakers loves around the world. <laughs> Loving this. Yeah, they're called knockout things, guys, not tiebreakers. Right? I rebranded them earlier. That's great. Yeah, to, chat is, of course, on our side. And I feel you were, you were pretty close to your, your 80%. You said above 80%. But yeah, as we said, game's ready. And in pre-show, CJ fought for Magnifico through his bad predictions alone. But K-Corp looks to make it three qualifiers in a row. And Magnifico trying to keep their major hopes alive. Can CJ bring the downfall to the blue wall through a reverse sweep? cast your curse alone there's a lot on the line here and it's not just cj's predictions against magnifico it is carmine corp aiming to make yet another champ sunday but it's magnifico with the biggest mountain standing in front of them it is do or die for a team that has not made a major yet yeah, they've got to win here they really want to make top two to to give themselves the best chance magnifico but well this is step number one. They can't be looking too far ahead, particularly when they're staring at Mount Everest in front of them. <laughs> the Tira is actually an anagram of Everest. You checked. Uh, I know that you checked. I know that somebody in chat checked. I had a look. I up the and said, I'm pretty sure that's not true, but I'll double check for clarification there. But as you said, no, Magnifico. Massive underdogs uh, in this game. Not only because of obviously, you know, K Corp winning the first two regionals looking super impressive, but Magnifico yet to really test these top teams, tippity top, I guess, of Europe. They're so good at getting to this point, so consistent making the playoffs, but I want to see them do some more damage. Yeah, meanwhile, Magnifico, what a world that we've had from them. What a series, what an absolute event. And not just this one, but the fact that they are now competing to make that major. Tox for the first time in his career could be making one. Yes, has to go through Carmine Corp, then do a bit more on top. But what a start it would really be. You know, a start and also a final nail in the coffin to hopefully for him be able to make it. But we speak about the chance that Magnifico have. Carmine Corp, they've already locked in the major. They've locked in first place in the major. They are playing right now CJ for perfection in the opening split of the RLCS 24 season. Yeah, three from three would be something that will, you know, over the NA side of things, G2 couldn't quite get done. And Sathya, the coach of that team, talked about the lack of 
I guess the, the drop off in, in practice a little bit. We'll, we'll find out today and maybe tomorrow pending this series of K-Corp have it still kept locked in for this regional, but not only that, not only for team performance, Stumpy, but mm -hmm. for Tira. 25 championship Sundays in a row on the line. That yeah. is ludicrous. Yeah, outrageous. And Magnifico, good chance for them. And obviously to make the major, if they can go through the hardest battle they're going to have. Ryan is there with a bit of a miss, and Stizzy goes high with it. Couldn't get the open net, but he does get a pass over. Can get it again. Stizzy up high to the backboard. A reset. Atto just about sneaks over the top. But look at this dedication and the ideas. The positioning from Magnifico. Stizzy with the opener. And he just hung around like a bad smell. Or tried to get the reset double. Tox just throws it at him. And Rise in net had to respect the touch, had to wait. Stizzy finds top corner. And that's fantastic early aggression from Magnifico. A bit of a rough misplay in defense a couple of times there from K-Cobb Zumpy, which is not something we're used to seeing. Mm. Maybe a kickoff goal, no Tox almost finding the shot. I mean, Stizzy, we're going to be mentioning it a couple of times, I'm sure. But he had the open net miss versus top Cougars. And when we say open net, go back and look at it. It was outrageously open. But look, you see the confidence there. Maybe a missed touch, but the fact that he takes the ball for himself, wanted to have that play for him. The confidence had to return. Looks like it has done. And a teamed up double tap between who else but Ryzen Vatera. I don't think this is what they meant to start this play. The Vatira got one over the top. Ryze wanted the catch. Vatira's <laughs> been bumped off by Stizzy, and Ryze gets the double off the backboard. I mean, it is a bit of the cake hole special. The air dribble bumps, the two men in the air at the same time, the aggression in offense. And when you do that enough, you do get a little bit lucky sometimes. The manager smush it in under the crossbar from KC. And a demo from either side, Atto to Atomic, and vice versa. Central from Stizzy. Stizzy now going for the bump on Rise. Rise does manage to dodge it. And the defense for Casey is going to be standing strong on this chance. A reset, though, onto the net. But Tira does it all. End-to-end -end magic. I mean, just how he resets. Look at the power on the shot as well. He just rips <laughs> it over the top. And no one can get back in time. I wasn't expecting that second touch off the reset. I think for Tira must have been. He's just he's just built different sometimes, this guy. And yeah, with well, as we mentioned before, Snuffy, with a champ Sunday on the line, there's more mm -hmm. motive. This guy just doesn't lose motivation. Well, That's yeah, ridiculous. He's probably one of the most natural born winners that we have seen in Rocket League. And, and the fact that even if he is winning, he doesn't then think, oh, okay, I can slow down a little bit. It's like, no, I've, I've now got even more ambition to win because now I know how good it feels. And I mean, his teammates really seem to be sharing that sentiment. Atto with a gorgeous oh, no. tap down. Again with the air dribble, again with the backboard, and again with the magic. He got such a fine touch on this that he had to give it a helping hand. And he's just almost devoted off the crossbar from the double touch. This guy, we we haven't, I mean, we have talked about it. Oh, we have. All we do oh, is talk, we all have. We do is talk, <laughs> all we do is talk about KC, but obviously, you know, you've got the rise and Vatira chemistry. You know, Vatira's incredible record. But what an addition to this roster. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk about just completing an already near-perfect lineup. Atto is something special. Yeah, I mean, Atto, obviously, last season, looking on Liquid to be one of their best players. Him and Oski really being that duo that everyone seemed to be afraid of. And he has now joined a duo that everybody has historically been afraid of. It's, it's, it's a three-headed Hydra, and it's an incredibly scary team to go up against. Yeah, you, you nearly say with Atto joining that they're truly head and shoulders above the competition. Very good. Minute remaining, two goals clear for KC here. The Tox with a little bit of ambition and a reset. Can go high. Stizzy thought he might be faking that one out and so tries to dive in underneath him. A demo removes Vatira from the pitch. Stizzy is the man with the dagger. Now this midfield just battle starting to commence here. Starting the ending. Nothing really coming from it and this is good gameplay from KC. Keeping it calm, keeping it a little bit uh, collected. Making sure that nothing goes too crazily flying towards the blue side. And uh, Magnifico after that perfect start. There it is again. I, it, I feel like KC just have found these air dribble bump handoff pass plays more than any other team with so much efficiency and really optimise that strategy. I'd love to see it implemented by a lot more teams. I love the chemistry and offence from this side. And with 17 seconds left, Magnifico, it was a great start from them. They found the pass plays, the bumps, the early aggression. But since then, it just looked like K-Corp warmed up. And here we go again. Maybe That's some another. Oh. Save off the post from Atomic. 
but they need it down the other end. K-Corp, a really strong start outside of that first minute and almost a fourth on the board. Yeah, not quite enough time for Magnifico to turn anything around from the first five minutes and first blood falling quite handily to Carmine Corp. You see that first goal coming in from Stizzy and you think, okay, might be a little bit more interesting than just, you know, another 4-0 that we saw previously with BDS and Gentlemates. But Magnifico still putting up a fantastic appearance um, on this top eight that, you know, they don't always manage to make it to. And we saw Atomic at the end making a fantastic save. It didn't really mean anything, but the ability and the quality that we've seen from Atomic so far this event, CJ, has been astronomical. Yeah, he's, he's just that wild card factor. I love watching him, and he's a reason why I'm not sure whether I can predict for or against Magnifico sometimes. You just don't know what play style, how he's feeling on the day, but when he's on, truly make a difference to Magnifico. But as you said, Kaykov, just different. For Tira, this whole event has been mm. sensational. I think you've got some stats there, Stumpy, for us. Yeah, he's been rocking out in goals, number three currently, over one goal per game. He is um, number one in saves per game, number three in demos. He's got number one goal participation, 80% of Carmen Corp's goals are either scored by or assisted by Vitera, and he's got the number one score per game and ridiculously enough it is nearly 100 points per game higher on average than the second place he is a machine this time around a golden god on the pitch for KC 588 score per game. I, I dare say the 13th save overtime might be carrying that stat a little bit. The <laughs> RCS record. But they were all good saves. How does he keep doing this? You know, we talk about... Oh, well, I used to talk about these players that as they get on, they just, you know, get a little bit a little bit washed up. I don't mm -hmm. think this, this man can ever get washed up. I want to see this guy playing when he's 60 in the RLCS. It's, it's phenomenal just how he keeps getting better and better. When we think we've seen the peak of a tier up, Mm -hmm. He says, watch this, I'll make another champ Sunday. I mean, his peak is, is, is not even come yet. He's still not won Worlds. He said historically, time and time again, the fact that he has said, that, like, look, I'm not going to be the GOAT even if I win this Worlds. I'm not near there yet. I need to win multiple Worlds, even multiple Majors. That kind of ambition does not come around for every single player. But ultimately, Magnifico are that team that want to be standing in the way. Stizzy stands in the way of Rice, sends him over to the graveyard. Comes long by Tox, now Vatira catching it at the back. Can't quite get the double, actually o leaves it open for Tox to take the shot, but maybe not lined up perfectly as he thought Vatira's normally going to be securing a touch on him. Yeah, not a bad start for game two here for Magnifico. A few demos coming through as well as Sizi's just trying to hand that one back to Tox. Rise getting in, likes to play laser for Adso. 50's coming through again. This is a bit of a vulnerable spot for Magnifico, but they're going to be able to walk this one out. Vatira keeping that ball in. And this is what I like to see. Atomic being that first man, going a little bit demo crazy, could throw off this structure. Mm -hmm. And maybe catch KC off guard if they get too confident. We've seen how well the Magnifico can tune into those demos and make sure their opponents do feel uncomfortable. That's how they've won their series and previously too. Their aggression and their positioning is something that is going to be threatening their opponent. Tox is going to be a man that will be leading that charge as well. Atomic dives in. Can't make touch to it, but instead Stizzy will be the one. Ryan sends it high right-hand side, but Stizzy again to catch. And the debut, not even the debut, I suppose the debut you know, series, the, the, the debut um, season so far for Stizzy has been a remarkable one as well. Seemingly out of nowhere. Yeah, albeit that moment that he had yesterday mm. uh, that we he, I'm sure, has forgotten about. Sorry, big Stiz, we are going to be bringing it up. Yeah, we, uh, we have not forgotten about it. And I certainly remembered every time I missed an open net. Uh, was How do you keep all that information in your head, mate? That's a lot. lot. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It takes up a lot of space. But Atomic with a double almost would have been the perfect start there for Magnifico. They did get the first goal on the board in game number one, so it would have been strange for them to kick off game number two in a similar manner. But not to be that time. Atto, zero boost. Just trying to fake it out and... Buy some time for Rise to get in there. He does have some support across from Vatiro. He's going to wait on this touch. There we go. Atto across now. Atomic. I popped that one up. Vatiro keeping that ball and dropped down to Rise. There's the handoff. One, two, backboard double just by Tox. Saved away. And with Rise as well. He was waiting to see if Vatiro could come in. Vatiro had the ambition to get there. And Magnifico, they are holding their own. We're now three minutes in. Shots relatively even across the board as well. Two shots for KC, one shot for Magnifico. Atto to the backboard here, not going for the simple shot. When does he? Rise now crossbar down. Can he come back round? Yes, he can. Another jumping off the backboard, down for the shot. It's a lead for KC. 
It's a bit of a signature move for this team. Just hopping down and Tox not quite ready for it. Off the bonnet. Rise says, can you please put that ball in? And, well, message delivered by Magnifico. Take all 1-0. And this series, Stumpy, I'm well, feeling it like it's trending towards the first regional where the quarterfinals, we did see a lot of sweeps, four ones. Well, we had a sweep in the first series. Are we going to get a similar story here? Can Magnifico change this script? Because right now, well, the whole split has been the, the K Corp show. Minute 30 in this KC lead, currently holding pretty strong. Rise now to the backboard. Tox needs to make a touch as Vatira moves Stizzy. Even more pressure on him. Vatira now challenging yet again. Caught and then sent central by Atto. That pass is devious and devilish. Just completely cut them apart there. Vatira keeping pressure on. But he sliced, got the bump, he got and Tommy threw into himself it. for the ball. And Stizzy, I mean, he was just, he had a question mark above his head. He had no idea where that ball was going, what was happening. Rise gets the open net. That's a brace for him in game number two. And it is, I mean, this is, this is a one-way ticket to the semi-final at the moment for K-Cop looking so solid. And as I say that, they've all nearly overcommitted, but 2-0, looking good. Final minute, we need to see Magnifico have a little bit of something different in the tank because right now it looks relatively routine for Carmine Corp. And we've seen them before, when they score one, they do not slow down. They will let these floodgates open. They will continue to score goals. Rise with the reset in defense, forces Batira onto the ball from Tox's challenge. Now Stizzy, right hand side, another challenge. Central from Atomic with 30 boots, he can nearly tap around the side of Batira, who makes himself nice and wide for it. So now with the catch, takes it upstairs, reset, trying to lay it. Tox does well, just to position himself in front with a bit of boost as well, gets the 50. That's better for Magnifico. Good he bump. up on Matera. He just angles his car perfectly to avoid that one. 20 seconds left. And more trouble now. Magnifico just can't quite break this deadlock. The defense, K-Corp has just locked it down. Ferrer, I'm sure, trying to... Well, this is what a coach loves. Just structured mm -hmm. play. And a solid game number two, 2-0. Two -oh. And it looks like it's going to be a clean sheet. Perhaps one more for k -Corp. Perhaps party time in this best of seven is, well, they barely put a foot wrong this game. And I think we need a timeout now if you're Magnifico. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're completely right as well when you said about structured play. That's what coaches love. That's also what Carmi Corp love. They want that structure to their game. And what team wants absolute chaos and nonsense and with no sense of what's going on? It's Magnifico. They thrive under that messy pig in mud meta. But Carmine Corp, they want to make sure that they are keeping them at a distance. They're going for these doubles. They're going for air dual bumps. Some relatively routine plays, but just putting a little bit of spice on them. Magnifico struggling to read it. And I think the structure is really tearing this apart. We do get the timeout confirmed for Magnifico. So certainly... We won't have to talk about it too much. I know so many times teams wait until game 3-3-0 three, three, oh, down to call a timeout, but you're going to take the extra 60, 90 seconds to reset themselves and try and find a way back in. But the problem is, Stumpy, mm -hmm. it hasn't been a single team in Europe that has been able to work out mm -hmm. how to beat K Corp. So what do they have to do? I mean, this is an atomic. I mean, you're right. You've been saying that... Carmine Corp haven't been figured out yet, and not just in the fact that, you know, they're going to be getting into another championship Sunday. They're yet to lose a series. Like, they haven't lost a series yet this entire season. That's the crazy thing. They're going for an 18-0 and series wins in a row, which is outrageous. If Vitality couldn't do it, if BDS couldn't do it, Magnifico, they want to be the David to the Goliath of Carmine Corp. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, for, I mean, forgetting about that little double alien. Uh, hiccup for K-Corp. Oh, of course, yeah. Be, uh, oh, yeah. You're, yeah, sorry, you're very right, yeah. Apart from the, the main event. Uh, in main event, they're currently on 18-0. Well, they're going to be going 18-0 if they get the win here. You're very correct, CJ. That's all. Yeah, but as, as Ferris said on Twitter, I believe, he, you don't count those those double E-Lim losses. So as far as we're concerned, everyone, not many teams should It'd stop be them. for a Magnifico. perfect main event. Three perfect main events. Is that okay for you, chat? I Is see you, I see you saying, sir. Event? I see you. Is this a main event? Do we call it a main event? What you want about? Is it a main event or is it just one large qualifier? I'm not sure yet. We'll figure it out by split number two, I'm <laughs> sure. But K Corp, well, as I said, they're, they're certainly locked in right now. Fair is just strolling around, hands in pockets. That, though, is looking very comfortable. Magnifico, I want to see them just throw the kitchen sink at it. I, I absolutely despise Stumpy. Mm -hmm. when Stan, okay, when harsh. Teams I am think, right here. 
So, <laughs> I Stumpy. I absolutely hate okay. Stumpy. Okay, when I'm teams, still I cannot stand <sighs> Stumpy yep. when teams just sit in net and think that the, the team, the, the better team's just going to give them the win, that they're going to mm -hmm. overcommit, that they're going to be able to capitalize, capitalize on mistakes. It is about taking it to the better team. Play your way. Lose trying to play a style that you think can win a series. Mm -hmm. And for Magnifico, I think that's... I want to see Atomic up front. If he has to demo chase, if he has to play the most ridiculous first man ever, then do it. Because it's better than just sitting in there and hoping that K-Corp can gift you a few freebies. Absolutely. Give them hell. Make sure that whatever you do makes them uncomfortable. Force them into playing your game. Because if you play into the structure of Carmen Corp, they're better at it than you are. And they are going to be taking the dub. But 20 seconds in, and we're going to be hoping to see a little bit more out of Magnifico. And it's a great block from Tox to start things off. Atto with an early shot. Matera around the side, bumps Atomic out of the way. Who's coming in to shoot? It's going to be Atto. It's relatively open. It's crossbar again. That has been plaguing Casey somewhat. Usually they can get the second touch in. On this occasion, not quite. Yeah, this is where, again, I just feel like they got stuck in net which is worrying signs early for Magnifico. I'd just love to see someone sitting downfield like that touch there. Atto just gets such a free ball in the midfield, grabs the 100 boost as well. Where's that player for Magnifico? Just here it is, sitting downfield like a Tomic there, going for the bumps and just trying to break up this K-Corp structure. I love the aggression trying to be shown there from Atomic, but I need to see more of it. As soon as K-Corp get on the attack, this kind of happens with three of Magnifico all stuck in net. Yeah, making sure that KC again continue this push. A pinch from Atto goes central. If we had soft body physics in Rocket League, that would have dented the defender's car. That would be cool. Oh, well, maybe, maybe an update, maybe a feature update with Dents. But what I do know is that Tommy's got a top pins. And Magnifico again get the first goal, just like game number one. Can they maintain it? And Atto not showing enough respect to Atomic or anybody on Magnifico there. He punts it into the back wall, maybe thinking it's going to roll up, but it does go to turns, so anticipating that it may well go back out again, and it does so. And Tox is there, to, sorry, Atomic rather, is there to take that shot. Another lead, Magnifico, have got to hold this one or extend it at minimum. As you said, it came from the bumps, and just want to see more of it. I think what they just have to take the risk, Stumpy, of not worrying about playing three-man defense, not worried about rotating back so fast to get in behind. Trust your teammates, take a little bit of a risk in the defense, see if you can pay off down the other end in transition, like this, with these bumps. Dizzy trying to work it around. He's been bumped himself. Atomic keeping in. Can Tox get the net? No, Atto. Just getting a touch on it. Much better from Magnifico, however. What a pass downfield, too. Atto taking that shot with zero boost. Batira tries to pass it down, but nobody's going to be there to secure it. Batira moves Atomic from the place. Dizzy takes a bit of a wild shot. Atto can catch it, but with nobody up, Tox is now back. Flippers rise, does take the initiative and gets to the ball first. A reset only as far as Atomic midfield. Again, the site of a lot of battles. Batira removing Stizzy. Both players, 4KC on the back ball, but nobody actually there for Magnifico to take the shot. Uh, Stizzy was just so deep then when they had space in the midfield. That's what they had been winning previously. Sato gets a smart 50. Stizzy going to be able to just help out the net right here. But again, this is a situation where Magnifico do get stuck. I want to see passes downfield. There we go again. Atomic able to push forward. Got that corner boost. A huge sling over the top. But Tira can't get it. It's okay. They can, they can afford to just leave one back here, Magnifico, if they're able to push that number forward. And there's the outpace again. Starting to win the midfield battle. Pays off with the pressure now. Oh, Tox with a lovely touch working it around. Vatira's in. Stizzy, can he get a pass across? Ops for the shot. Off the backboard. Atto catching it, but it's down the right end. And low boost for K Corp. So they've got to try and hold on here. Magnifico, this has been much better. Yeah, I mean, we also see, as I say, about the low boost. Vatira was the only one with boost for about 10 seconds there. And there's a chance again, bumped out of the way of the shot is Atomic. Stizzy, can he get this one central? Instead, Rise comes in to intercept the right-hand side. Sees Atto going central with it. Nobody there to challenge until Atomic. Again, the, the main word being initiative. A few balls going completely floating, but Tox here, ready to attack it straight away. No reset for him. Tries to go for the lean back, but Atto is there with enough time. Stizzy has to face down Atto and Vatira, and does so wonderfully. So good. He just had to go. He knew it. He didn't want to get caught in a bump situation. And here's the free shot. Great save from Rise. Still inbound. Atomic trying to keep it in. With a minute left, Magnifico have to keep the foot down. Don't want to give him too much space. 
Hakor can score in a matter of moments here. Here we go again. Rise off the corner. Toes in. Backboard double. Saved out by Tox. But low boost from Magnifico. Oh, it's going to be a worry in 50 seconds because Rise is right there. And the equalizer comes through. And somewhat of a difference we've seen there too between the different mentalities of these two teams when they are low on boost. We saw how well Kami Corp dealt with it. They sent one to it. Rise waited on literally the side wall next to the post for about 10 seconds or so, waiting to see does he need to go. Magnifico, they get low on boost. Kami Corp, they take full advantage of it. Completely different approaches to not having anything to go into the air with. And I'd love to see that broken down at some point, but right now we are still in this game number three with 40 seconds left. Magnifico need to make sure that they can just get one more back. Kami Corp, can they close it down in regulation? Yeah, it shows how Rocket League, it, it's such a mental game, the mindset. And you saw the switch from Magnifico when they had the lead. Here's Rise going one, two, the bump's coming through. Tommy's going to be able to land on this with boost. Tira is getting bumped out of the way. Somehow dodges it. Stizzy's. Well, I don't think he was meant to flip out of the way there because Vatira's got a free ball. And he's been faked as well. Gets another 50, Vatira. But Magnifico have certainly put the brakes on this one ever mm -hmm. since they had that lead. And they've let K Corp get back into it. They've let them get comfortable. We're going to have overtime. Such an important game for Magnifico. And what a different game it looks like too after the timeout as well. Making sure they're taking full advantage of the buff, the slight buff that you do end up getting from it. I wonder if it's the same this season. Previously, it's been about 55% um, win rate when you do manage to get the uh, buff. But 20 seconds in and the pressure for KC already starting to build. It's a great pop. Svetira is going to be able to sit back. He does have rise on the sidewall. Takes the touch, ceiling double. Atto's going to wait across as well. Look at him setting up this offense here. k -Cop trying to squeeze the pressure on. Still some boost. Is he trying to work that one forward? If he gets a 50, that could be out here, Magnifico. Yeah, the Atomic should be able to get the beat out of Atto just with the read. Rise keeping that ball downfield, just parrying it away. Atto with the follow-up. This is what we'd love to see down the other end for Magnifico. As Rise just trying to keep that pressure on. Does grab that boost. That'll be huge because Atto's a oh! He's missed the shot of Matera. Has he got the follow-up? Rise is right there. Tox pre-jumps, top bins, gets the save. This is now a much better zero boost defense that we're seeing from Magnifico. Admittedly, we don't see Atto miss them too often, but, but Tox with zero boost still managed to keep that, that, that defense going. Now, Rise has to receive it once from Tox on the backboard and second from himself over towards the midfield. Tomic now going high with Tox moving Batira from the pitch. It's going to be a little bit more open at the back. Stizzy has to turn. He doesn't get there first, though. Rise will be. Then Atto's the second. Tox again on the goal line with a save. Incredible save. They try to go behind. Atto wanted to find that bottom right corner. Tox read him every day of the week, but here we go again. Vatira fake. fakes it out. Where's Rise? He's going to have to wait because Atomic has read the fake and just put his car in the way of that pass. This rise works that ball forward. He won't be able to get a goal here. That's not the best touch from Stizzy. He's going to have to play a bit more defense. Jumps up, 100 boost. He'll be able to land on it, but he leaves it for Tox. Vatira keeping that ball in. Acorp don't want this OT to go too long. As so Magnifico is starting to really warm mm. up into this series here. Atomic. It's been that first man, that midfield play has been huge from him this game. Magnifico still on defense, but winning these challenges. I mean, it's also looking a little bit messier. It seems to be benefiting Magnifico a lot more. Rise, though, goes low with it from the ceiling, from absolutely nowhere, after being challenged every single time in the air. Look at how much space he has. Nobody up, Stizzy with a backflip. Tox reckons, OK, well, I've got Stizzy there ahead of me. He's going to challenge. Starts to turn back, Rise on an opener. Carmine Corp, 3-0, one more, and welcome to another Champ Sunday. I mean, a phenomenal shot for Rise, but puzzling defense from Magnifico. You could see Tox was waiting for a double, expecting perhaps a ceiling reset double. Rise is throwing it straight on net, and then Stizzy, that second man, just, just getting caught in no man's land. He mm. added nothing to the play there and just, le just left Tox on an island. Last man, fantastic shot, top corner off the ceiling from Rise. And... Well, if they were ever going to get back into this one, you would have felt that game three was it, Stumpy, but they couldn't get it done, mm -hmm. albeit seven shots, a lot of pressure. They just let K-Corp back in. Seven shots across Magnifico is somewhat misleading when you say that Atomic has got six of them. Uh, Stizzy has the other one. In the end, it was unfortunate, I think, that Magnifico lost that one, considering 
That was first in the messiest game that we've seen, and it clearly played into the hands of Magnifico. And secondly, it looked to be the most confident Magnifico were as well. They were pre-jumping a lot more. That's definitely the meta right now. Don't let your opponents go up in the air for free. Don't give them space at all. But when you're low on boost, and when Carmine Corp know that you're low on boost, they're going to keep sending it skyward, and they're going to make sure they eke out every single drop before they then send the next one on target. And you know the worst thing in the world, Stumpy. Australia. Is getting that oh. lead. He's getting, he's getting a lead like that and then just switching up the style. But here we go again. He's just got to be another. Again! First goal, three games out of four now for Magnifico. Where they've come out with confidence, found the early pressure, got the beats they needed. They have to maintain this over the five minutes. A technical Vatira own goal, but there were multiple players for Magnifico there, ready to tap it in if needs be. But yeah, another early goal. They just can't hold these leads at all. But Stizzy taking initiative, removing Rise from the pitch now. Atomic midfield, 30 boost, a reset only as far as Atto. He's got a reset of himself as well. He's got a reset of his own as Vatira. Did he catch that one? Well, he didn't quite catch it. He slung that thing across the field. Stizzy works it around Rise. Vatira side ball, trying to get a 50 in there. Magnifico. With the ball in the right end. You don't want to see them creep up too high. We saw their positioning catch them out. In the last game with that OT winner from Rise, and there's the demos coming through. Stizzy this time positions himself well, goes to the backboard. Vatira with a free clear, and there's the difference. Atto just getting the touch and cutting across in the midfield. That's what. That's really the, the linchpin right now mm -hmm. for K Corp. The way they're able to control that midfield, their pressure, their presence, and their positioning. Oh. The drop down isn't going to quite work from Stizzy as K Corp walk it out. I feel like we're seeing a really nice amount of passes coming through and a lot of ideas coming through from Magnifico. Unfortunately for them, they've just not got that extra 5% that can really make sure that they're getting on the end of the passes or with enough boost to finish it off. Or I mean, a cheeky bogo for Stizzy there, but ends up going nowhere, unfortunately. Toe now, again, taken up. And there's the K-Call special. <laughs> Throw it up, look for the bump. Trying to beat out. One by one, this defense of Magnifico Rise taking it up, gets bumped himself. Tox is going to delay. Atomics <laughs> dropping from the ceiling as well. More defense from Magnifico. It's very awkward, but there's the clear they needed. Can they push forward, grab some boost? And this could be a free Pass. input if he finds it, but he just didn't throw it laterally enough, I don't mm -hmm. think. Is, and he just enabled the 50 to come through for K Cobb still. Magnifico keeping this pressure on, trying to worry out this defense. Atomic has to dodge the bump, pops it on net. But there we go, Magnifico just backing off. And when you give Cake up a little bit of space like this, mm -hmm. more often than not, they're, never, they're just going to get that free out. And there it is. Atto takes it upstairs. Reset. Stizzy with a touch. Cake up keeping it in. Big oh! fakes coming through. Matera almost with the goal. Lovely block from Stizzy. Though. Actually ends up trying to block the initial shot. Can't get to it. And so holds his dodge and then blocks out Vatira instead. Incredibly well held on that reset. Minute 20 has elapsed. Atto goes just above target. Forces Atomic and talks to it. Rise is there for the second one, but sending two defenders to a play isn't going to do you particularly well. Oh, that was almost open as well. If you could find the touch, he went for boost instead. Tox is... Atomic is trying to keep that ball in. It's better for Magnifico. But you see again, they went for the infield and it wasn't quite on. It's a miscommunication. Just the positioning, not quite A1 here from Magnifico. Missing some chances that really you need to be taking against K-Corp. We're halfway through the game, and yes, we've still got that Magnifico lead, but I reckon in about 45 seconds' time, if we keep following the scripts we have done for the first three, mm -hmm. we're going to be seeing a Carmine Corp goal coming in, probably from unrelenting pleasure, when Magnifico are going to be low on boost. I mean, but when, when the scores are level, they're instantly challenging these touches, but you know, I talked about the mental game of Rocket League, the mindset, they're just a little bit more passive, knowing that they've got that... One goal buffer. Demo. I want to see him keep the foot down. There's the demos. There's the touches. Can he find the shot? Rise waiting on it. Tox just trying to keep that ball in. Knowing the demo from Stizzy gives him time to get back and help out this offense. But Atto's going to get a beat out. Rise underneath. Throws it on net. Tox has been that guy that just loves camping the net. He's done well again. Brilliant defense. Magnifico too. Making sure they're shutting out a lot of these opportunities well before they become really dangerous and before they even registered as saves. That's what you want to do. If it's registered as a save, normally it's a little bit too late, even with the funky system that Rocket League has got going on with registering saves. Rise moving tops from the equation. Steezy can get on the end of a pass from Atomic. It's on target, but Atto with a block off that ground pitch. Final minute now, ticking down, and it starts with Rise in the air. 
And this is when K-Corp time and time again just find another gear. Can Magnifico hold on? Can they Open. find a final? Or have they just given up? Oh, the goal, what a save coming through from Atomic Rise. Trying to get the drop deal with Tira <laughs> circling. Somehow they keep it what? out. They almost just gave them a freebie. The save of the series so far. Atomic, unbelievable, out of nowhere, manages to get it away from the immediate open net that was ahead of the attacking player. 30 seconds, ticking down, Batira takes it low, challenges versus that goal line demon in Atomic. Atto, backboard, double comes in, it's a pass down, wants it to be a shot with no one in net, and Rise isn't quite able to get on the second touch either. Well, here we go now. Can they get their first game win on the board? Can they avoid the sweep? Get some momentum. Well, Stiz is just backflipped. Rise goes corner. Fatira trying to keep it in. Atto now, last man. Kekov throwing everything. Rise with the half rotation. Tox just sitting in it, setting up a tent. And it's worked. Magnifico, hold on. They get their first win. They deny any chance of a sweep. And there we go. Game on. They got the lead early, Stumpy, and mm -hmm. they held it. They got the lead in, what was it, seven seconds, I think, in the end? Well, very early. But why why couldn't they do this previously? <laughs> They've actually figured it out a lot more. It seems like they're a lot warmer. And the fact that now we're seeing all of the players on Magnifico challenging earlier too, not giving Carmen Corp the respect. Screw respect. Don't give them anything. It doesn't matter that it's Carmen Corp. Like, you need to just think of them as any other three players that are going to obviously be playing to an unbelievable level, but you have to make sure that you have got the initiative in every single situation. Be the first ones to attack it. Don't give them anything. And the defense for Magnifico, they were put under the pressure a lot and they held it before those situations became threatening. And look at how, where Atomic sneaks in from there. Wow. The fact that he can get underneath Atto and clear it high is outrageous. I mean, what is safe from Atomic, but also we have to mention that was a defensive masterclass from Tox. And I think yeah. they might have figured out the play style because Tox is seemingly incapable of leaving the net. He may as well have a hard hat on. <laughs> Call him Gibbs 2.0. But that might just unlock Atomic and Stizzy in the front end. They could be more aggressive. Position up front, work that one and two man roll, and trust that Tox can lock it in net. Here he is again, sitting in net. He and he's just performing time and time again. This might be the game plan for Magnifico. That could be the key to success. I mean, it definitely seems like it's turned around that way. And Atomic, again, an early goal. Has he scored all of the early goals for Magnifico here so far? Because this time it comes from Tox on the dunk. And Atomic, perfectly positioned. And when Tox finally does get downfield, it is so surprising for the K-Corp outfit. That defense has gone, what is this man doing? And he does get the double beat out. Atomic with the goal, Magnifico, four times now. First goal on the board. Four out of five games, and, well, they did this exact same recipe last time. Can they do it again here? I mean, Tox again. Can we talk about Tox for a minute, ladies and gents? He just <laughs> leaves that. He doesn't leave the goal line. And he's found another save there already. A couple saves for him. And a assist for the goal. He's doing everything right now for Magnifico. Mm -hmm. And I love this change up in games, in play style. I mean, also there you see Stizzy and Atomic both taking advantage of the clears that Tox has made. Again, Tox now pushing in. Atomic, brilliant demo on Atto. Nothing can come from this too much, as seeing as Ryze has sort of take over as that second man. Tira now taking it low. Forces one out, actually tricks Tox. Great play from him. Throw a little bit of a wrench in the works. Atomic takes it low again. Atto takes it high. Seems to be going like a yo-yo up and down. Another reset for Atto. Rise quite weak, but an error on the defense. And Atomic putting it on a platter for Rise. I mean, Atto it was, was turning that into the Freestyle Cup. I'm not sure what was happening there. He tried to get 48 resets. The utter confusion had Magnifico in a spin. The save was not great. It didn't keep it out of harm's way. K-Cop do get that early equalizer. And now... This is where you worry a touch if you're Magnifico. They've lost that lead pretty early on. K-Corp don't have to stretch themselves. They can really work into this game again, build that pressure that we've known and loved. And Atomic, unfortunately, tapping over the top of Stizzy. And you've got to just make sure that, as we always say, don't let it get to you. You're fine. You've still got... That at worst, you're now drawing with them. But Vatira wants to make it so much worse. A reset, a pass, a third touch from Rise. The sheer power that comes from this reset that Vatira secures. Bang! Straight to backboard. Stizzy has his head spun. 
for me, it's not even the reset. It's if, if I was in that spot and got that reset, I would have hit that ball so hard off the crossbar, it would have gone in the other end. He just <laughs> pre-flips into just such a deft touch to find Rise on the drop down, beating that guy in net. I mean, this guy just, that's why he's just different sometimes. The way he's able to set his teammates up, not only himself, and there's a lead for K-Corp. They've lost that one game. They want to lock it in 4-1. Can they get it done here? Can they get one more goal for the buffer? Rise is just what waking everyone fake. out. Atomic let's get the save, but here's the follow-up again. Vatira blocked out. k -Corp keeping the pressure on. It really looks like they want to make a statement here. Oh boy, Atto Free double drop down oh. and he's nearly landed again. <laughs> he tried to do it two times. Wasn't able to on the second. Magnifico definitely aware of his tricks. Halfway through the game, pressure for KC is as ever high. However, they're not able to get anything through that defense in the last minute or so from Magnifico. But they've still got the lead. We need to see something down the other end for the for the boys in orange. Yeah, they look stunned right now and probably for good reason with a couple of goals coming in such quick succession. There's another double commit. So Tom is going to leave that boost for a clear downfield. Gets it across, but Atto's up straight away. And look at him just getting that touch around. Forcing CC to go. It's Tommy's pre jumps It's worried Vatira a touch, but the help defense coming through from K-Corp able to stave that play off. Under two minutes, rise now. Right-hand side actually sends out the ball wide. Atomic now has free reign over it until Atto comes in for the 50. Sizzy with the catch, but letting the ball go a little bit too far past him. Trying to go for the pinch here. That's going to be bouncing straight on target. Stizzy with a worldie. Now, hang on a minute. Atomic with the demo on rise. No one back. Well, not even on Rise. He gets the demo there on Atto. And the pinch out of nowhere. Rise gives a nice one in chat. And something out of nothing for Magnifico brings him right back into this game. Stizzy, a gorgeous play. A bouncing pinch as well. So much power found on it, but completely opened up on the backside for Atomic. Again, removing Batira from the play. And that's where we see Magnifico thrive before when they make the game messy, full of demos and bumps and complete disorder. Here's Tox again, sitting on back wall. Just looks so comfortable when he's able to rotate into net. Vatira challenging. More midfield play. Atomic with the beat. Got no boost, but just going to try and worry Vatira out of a touch. He's done really well. It's quite awkward now for Magnifico, but Stizzy has to go. He makes a huge beat third man. They're squeezing up this structure right now. Magnifico, and I like this. It's 2-2, but they're still looking to take the win. They're not trying to sit back and let K-Corp make a mistake. Stizzy now, back wall. Fakes out the pre-jump from Atto. Flick over the top, finds Atomic, who goes low. This is really nice from Magnifico. Rise now, third man gets bumped out of the way. More pressure coming through from the Mag team as Rise trying to keep that ball in. Everyone front post for K-Corp, but there you go. They've just sucked back off there, and no. <laughs> Stizzy's got to have to get oh. a psycho, but it hasn't quite gone. Exactly as intended, but it's but not it was still respected though. <laughs> you saw KC turn around being like, okay, you might actually have this considering the pinch earlier. Atoma now up for the one, two, the third, falling back down towards Tox. It's open, it's dizzy, it's on target. Unfortunately for him, Atto is going to be able to tap it away. Now the final 15, KC on the push. Atto takes it low. Atomic reads him somewhat. Pinch is right in front of the net. Stizzy, no! Sends it on target and then saves it with a post pinch. And Atto, oh, what a save in chat, but it's not over yet. Yeah, it's really worrying here because Atto's thrown it to Vatira, who's going to try and find Rise, who goes high. Atomic with the challenge. K Corp, they want to get it done here in regulation. Overtime would be a dream right now for Magnifico. But Vatira oh! says no! <laughs> He says, we'll see you in the semi-finals. K-Corp 4-1, zero second goal, the blue wall. Just get it done there on zero. Undying determination from Batera to the death of game number five. Carmen Corp semi-finals and Magnifico with a send-off. Unfortunately from this event, and also that is getting Magnifico out of contention for the major. Before we say goodbye to them fully, CJ, what a pleasure it has been watching Atomic, Tox yeah. and Stizzy this early in the season. Yeah, phenomenal. As you said, they just, they absolutely ate up the Swiss stage throughout this split. And they'll be coming so close when you, when you see the final rankings after this regional, after this weekend. Be desperately close to the event, but they had to win today to make it through. We'll see them again, I'm sure, next split. Hopefully, I don't want to see them make a roster change. They've certainly figured it out there. They're looking impressive against K Corp. But Vatira, he's a championship Sunday specialist, and you just know he had to be there. It's the 25th one for him in a row. 
an outrageous performance from everyone on Carmen Corp. 4-1 in the end. And Carmen Corp are going to be facing the winner of BDS Gentlemates, which of course was BDS. Up next, Redemption versus Moist.
Charming Court with a relatively routine 4-1 win over Magnifico there in the quarterfinals. And that puts them on track to yet another championship Sunday. They're going to be facing off versus Team BDS. But before that, I've got the pleasure of talking to Rise. Firstly, Rise, the classic question. How are you guys feeling? Hey, we're feeling great. Um, you know, we've uh, we played well this weekend so far. Maybe the best we've played, I'd maybe say. Um, mm -hmm. And like we were, I've said this in three interviews now, I think, but you know, we go into the same series with every mentality, confident, playing, playing our game. And you know, that series, it, we had a really good start and they got a game that bounced back, but we, we finished it off. I mean, talking about you taking every game um, as, as they come or every series as they come, currently Calming Corp are on for the perfect split. If you guys can win the entire regional tomorrow, you'll be going 18 and 0. And that'll be the first time in Europe that has been done in the main event. Of course, I appreciate you guys lost to Sir. Chat have already pulled me up on that one. But in the main event, are you guys even thinking about that going perfect? Or are you just thinking, as you say, each series as it comes? Well, we're trying not to think about it. But, you know, when I'll it's something like that... in your head now. Exactly. No, no, no. no. It's, <laughs> it's something that's always been like, you have it in the back of your mind. You try and keep it out. But, you know, you it's kind of there. You, you know, if you win, you're it's the perfect split or the three peat or the two peat for last regional or back to back like you, you we don't focus on it we don't think about it we, we take it one game at a time but you know it's it's hard to, to keep it out keep it out of your, your head i mean look, as chat was calling me up on it a little bit earlier on too would you consider it a perfect split seeing as you did lose to sir before you came to a friday stream or is it a little bit tainted i will let the people decide i'll let the people <laughs> decide we don't if we win everything, I'm not going to be complaining that people say we didn't do the perfect split, if you know what I mean. If, okay. if it's tainted, it's tainted. I'll, I'd, I'd take the wins anyway. Yeah, fair enough. You've still got the three peaks, so it's kind of like whatever at that point, I'm sure. Hopefully. Um, you guys were also, um, of course, with Vitera um, as your teammate. This is his 25th Championship Sunday in a row. Of course, it started with yourself on Team Queso. Can you describe what it's like playing with him, obviously as a friend, but also as a teammate? I mean, I'd say probably top five teammates I've ever had. No, I'm, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> obviously, um, the best, the, probably the best player I've played with, him and Atto, probably both up there um, easily. Um, great guys. We have a great like environment here. We, um, you know, we're all grinding. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's great. I, I can't complain. You know, we're, we've won two of the regionals so far. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we can get this one. That's what we're, we're aiming for, we're striving for. So I can't say much on his stat because I wasn't in, in the, the team with him for, for half of them, I'm sure. But yeah. I mean, you're, you're hoping the streak continue at least. And that streak yeah. has so far brought you, um, obviously, going into the major as our number one seed from Europe. Can you just briefly tell me what you kind of think about the international scene that's going to be at the major? Because there's obviously a lot of contention going into the first one of the season. Yeah, I mean, it's something that I've said before, but I really dislike the whole... I feel like it's a bit of a forced agenda between the EUNA debate, all that stuff. Copenhagen happens in a few weeks. You're going to find out who the best team is. Just watch. Like, there's no point speculating. There's no point guessing. D2 better than this. JNG better than this. Falcons better than this. Europe. Who cares? You know, you're going to see in three weeks. Just watch and we'll we'll find out. All right. Well, hopefully every single person in chat is going to be watching that because we will be finding out who the best teams are when we go to Copenhagen. But for now, Rise, thank you very much for chatting to you, mate. Appreciate it, mate. Have a good one. It's very true. The Major is on its way and K Corp will find themselves there locked in as that number one seed from Europe. They do what they do, and today they've ended Magnifico's chances for that major as they'll be facing off against BDS next. And CJ, I feel like he has just completely shut down the, the purpose of the subreddit existing, the purpose of our jobs by saying no more speculation. Yeah, I don't agree with that. NA on top all day, baby. Um, I'm not sure what he's talking about. What's the point of any any form of meter if you can't have a little bit of fun with some speculation? That's what it's all about. And, uh, well, I mean, I'm sure for him, though, they're going to be keeping level-headed. They don't want to get too far ahead of themselves, as he said. He's not thinking about the, the perfect sweep, uh, the you know, the win yet. He's taking it one game at a time, one series at a time, and it worked there in the quarterfinal.
Yeah, cool. I mean, it. Uh, I, I, I see his point, though, is that very soon it's going to get proven, and then we can speculate based off those results. But it, it's yeah, true. We're going to find out. Uh, we, we are going to find out, and I, and I can't wait for that. But it makes it all the sweeter to argue and debate up to that point as well. I mean, for me, I, I feel like Carmine Corp are currently the best team in the world. I don't think that's a controversial statement to make by any means, but until you're in Copenhagen, until you're sat there at that major, none yeah. of it matters at all for players at that elite level. Hey, if we didn't get to speculate, we wouldn't find out how wrong Shogun can be, <laughs> right? That's just the way it goes. There's the bracket. K Corp, BDS are into your semifinals with four teams left. Uh, we're, we're starting, CJ, to hone in on the, the, the question we asked earlier today is it going to be <laughs> is it going to be a one nation region yeah and i think i mentioned it in the cast as well it's going eerily similar to the first regional where we're getting sweeps four ones across the board will the trend continue throughout the right. rest of the day well i'm not sure because this this next matchup isn't exactly a one-sided affair leaf yeah that is very true cole we have coming up now redemption facing off against moist esports moist finally finding their footing getting themselves into a top eight looking like they got that potential but cole their journey is long if they want major why didn't they make the separate second original <laughs> top 16 leaf it's gonna keep me up at night so i'm certain it's gonna keep joyo Oli and Resi right. up at night as well but they have to put that pass and they are still in with a chance i mean the permutations at this point are very very complicated if this team beats that team things are confusing etc but basically Basically for Moist, surely you got to end up winning this tournament if you are to make it. They are currently seven or so points behind, maybe eight. And you just need to keep on winning and hope the rest of the dominoes fall, CJ. Oh, yeah, and I think, uh, well, Moist currently in this matchup is head-to-head 2-0 in series wins. We saw yesterday, we had a look at the highlights. It was reverse sweep. So it's not exactly a dominant 2-0 in series score, but I guess the ball's in Redemption's court, Leaf, as they have yet to uh, find a win against them. Yeah, it's interesting because you look at the players on this this roster. I mean, between uh, Astral, Ivan, these are players that have so much experience. And then you got Cash, the one that everyone was so hype on before. And then them not really being in a lot of the talks for for like top four and beyond that. Do you believe these are these are players that belong in that position or, or these teams that are great? but don't quite have that same gusto that, uh, you know, teams like BDS and K-Corp have? That's a heavy question. That's a very heavy have. question. I'm loading you right had, up. <laughs> I think we had sort of moist right around the mark. You know, we talk about oxygen, sort of that 5-6 mark, or for even 4-5-6, but obviously Gentlemates came out and dominated. Uh, oh, it looked really good in that first event. So they're certainly right there, and maybe next split for these guys. It's going to be very tough to make the major from here. Yeah, it's de best of the rest for me between these two, and right. it's so difficult breaking into that top four when the French teams are dominating. That's very true. Hey, chat, let us know. Do they got the gusto? Hashtags, start throwing them in the chat. Let us know what you think. Is it going to be moist, or is Redemption going to live up to their name and fly on through to the semifinals. Let's find out what the desk threw on the board here, because as as it was mentioned, this could be different. We've all gotten the same. I actually haven't looked at what other people have picked uh, across the board. So and it's mostly moist, actually. Yeah, so I've gone for moist today. At the top of this split, one of my uh, crazy predictions, and we all had to name one, was that Redemption mm -hmm. would make Copenhagen uh, and then they would make a terrible roster change. So that still could happen. You know, they're currently five points behind Magnifico True. and hoping Vitality lose later on. So who knows? But yeah, I think the Moist are the slight favorites here. Chat's locking in with us as well at near 70% for Moist. Why don't we find out? As Rise would say, you can only find out when the matches happen. Redemption's still alive for Major, but so is Moist. For Moist, however, they have a monolithic mountain to overcome when it comes to their Major chances. And it starts right here, right now with Redemption. It is about winning the entire thing. They have got to go the whole way, Johnny. Otherwise, they don't stand a chance. And even with that, tiebreakers have still got to go their way. Can they do it? Well, it would be the most moist move of all time if they were. You know, both teams, I think, have got the dream quarterfinal draw, though. So even if you do have to make that run and win the entire event, at least you're starting off with the easiest matchup, at least when it comes to uh, overall split performance. I don't think either team can complain about playing the other um, in round one here. So here we go. Best of seven. 
for either of these teams. So much on the line when it comes to their major. Redemption are one of those outside shot teams that started four points, or five points, I should say, behind a qualification spot. They need this and more if they want to make it. Seems like Gentlemates not getting over the line. Seems like Magnifico being eliminated. All have helped them, but now they need to help themselves. The last thing they need is to be beat like they were in a reverse sweep against Moist yesterday. Oh, you know, both, both teams have had promising results um, in the Swiss stage yesterday. Of course, the two teams matched up. Like the desk mentioned, Moist were victorious uh, with a reverse sweep. But, you know, wins against BDS on the side of Redemption, wins against Gentlemates. These are promising um, starts to the event. They're definitely both looking like uh, contenders to make it into, uh, you know, a top two. It's possible. What can Joyo do here? He's going all the way himself. Actually lands an Ash on the backboard and Rezzy's quick to pounce on it. Ivan will collect the spoils and start to dart down the line. He's got another free touch on this one. Goes for the tight angle double into the middle and Astral buries it as he gets it straight through that last defender. For Astral as well, there's going to have a little bit more spice to it. The former Moist player himself. Looking to try and crush his former team's dreams. Does it after a very strong challenge. Over on the goal line, gets it over. There's the first one for Redemption. Who seem to be getting stronger and stronger as the season has gone by. There was a lot of hope for them in that very first Swiss stage for the first open qualifier. It kind of fell downhill where there was a lot of Ooh. people singing their praises at the moment. There's only been praises to sing. They have been utterly dominant and ruthless in this opening 90 seconds. You know, it's, it's a group of three players who have performed well at different intervals throughout the past year. Obviously, Astral had the uh, grand final when he was part of that moist roster over in Rotterdam. And then uh, Clash, you know, he had multiple moments throughout the year where he looked like he was able to play at that S tier level. And Ivan's just, you know, been steadily improving throughout the years, all the way back to 21-22, where he had his land debut in Los Angeles. But can they keep improving as a team? That's the question. Will they be able to fully gel together and Figure out their play style that they want to operate with. If, you don't, if you're not on the same page these days, you have not, you've not got any chance against the big teams like KC and BDS. Well, there was the talisman for just a moment on the ball. Joyo, oh, he's so dangerous at creating his opportunities. Not going to be able to do it, though, if he is demoed. Now just goes for the booming clear, and he has actually kind of caught Astral off his line. First chance to really push oh. over, and Cash has faked out two of them. Now he's got the one-on-one -on -one temporarily of Rezzy. Wanted to see if he could just swipe that ball across. Maybe take out Rezzy's car along the way. Didn't quite happen. But Redemption for the first time forced to defend. And they seem to be doing it pretty well. Yeah, oh, Cash was <laughs> he's being chased down there as he tried to get the counter-attack rolling. It made it a bit more difficult for him to send the ball to a teammate. First touch by Rezzy goes very high. And to the ceiling he goes. Reset is his. Rezzy defended well and actually looks like he was leaving that one for uh, Joyo to take over. And in comes Oli. His 50-50 will not go on target. Joyo in an attempt to quickly get up the wall. Gets beaten to it. It's left it for Rezzy. Well, I don't think that was too well planned out by Moist. But Rezzy pounces first on the loose ball. Yeah, there have been a lot of fake outs. Some of them good, some of them bad. I think that one was sort of on the more questionable side. But it was a question that threw Redemption off entirely. Expected a hit. Never happened. Now we see the fake kickoff. Ivan passed over. You can see Cash getting harassed by oh. Lewis. Astral has to change oh. the play. Would have preferred to pass it. Realized it wasn't an option and almost got the solo play to work. Oh, it's phenomenal stuff. The team play with the kickoff strat. The solo play from Astral. Almost connecting. Extremely difficult mechanical play that we know is within his capabilities. Astral, the goal scorer of many a worldie over the years. I think he's got more where that came from before he's done and dusted with Rock League Esports. Yeah, Astral has been a consistent at the top of the RLCS playing field for quite a while now. I feel like he's owed a little bit more of a, well, a silverware towards his name. Maybe he has received, but when he wants to do that, get over to Copenhagen, go and win those tournaments. Reestablish exactly who he is. And he is the player on the ball. He's got another fake out. Ivan trying to move in. Oh, he's pulled himself oh. out of position. And Moist have tied themselves in knots and got away with it. Yeah, that ended up being quite awkward for Rezzy, who pushed out just a touch early, not realizing that there was about to be a shot on target. But a nice half flip back into position enabled him to get the clear. Yeah, here's that same player now, Rezzy. A lot of these first touches going high into the air, uncontested. Redemption. 
having a hard time stopping Rezzy from getting these plays going. Now it's only off the backboard. Joyo thinks better to move in on that play. Third man jumped in quite heavily. Joyo now has to get the save. He's done it. Now they can break away. It's only Cash. Ivan does turn up in time just to try and make that more difficult. Did enough. One each still. Next goal is crucial. A great recovery there by Ivan. Helping out Cash, who was last man against Joyo by himself for a second. Rezzy that beats Ivan to punch in defense. He offloads to Oli, who's got a brief 1v1, but not quickly enough as Cash recovers and takes him out from behind. Yeah, not for the first time. They thought they had the chance to break away and get that 1v1. Suddenly, someone's back and ruining the offense's day. Chris is going to prioritize the 100 boost. Has a good decision. Onto to the part where his car got wiped out. In goes Joyo. And who dares challenge him? Oh, you need somebody to get there. Astro caught into action. Oh, he's going to take his time. And didn't really get too much done for it, as it seems like everyone just kind of gave up on that play. Yeah, Joyo's looking active so far when it comes to moving the ball forward. He's been able to outplay a lot of players, but oh no, this bounce has outplayed everyone as uh, Redemption and Moist both simultaneously unable to read that one and play grinds to a halt again in the midfield. 50-50 goes sideways into the ceiling and Joyo always there to match whoever's up against him. As we approach that first minute of overtime, Neither team has had too many clear-cut chances. 50-50 middle will be met by Rezzy, who's flanged at the full pitch. I think that's a good point you bring up there as well, Johnny. How the majority of the great plays or the goal-scoring plays that we've seen have come off small mistakes, rotational mistakes, not quite reading the play properly. What's it going to be to find this overtime goal? Cash does take it. Goes underneath him. Ivan. But it's the path of Oli, who does avoid getting hit as well. Astro had to jump to both oh. the and he needed the help, and he did find it. Yeah, what a clear that was on the recovery from Cash. Some of these recoveries, the last second recoveries from Redemption, have been crucial. Whether it's challenging a dribbler from behind, whether it's lunging in at the near post shot that's about to be scored. Moist have had openings, that's absolutely certain, but they need to be very quick with them. Redemption have not left the, those windows open for all that long. Good stop there from Cash. Tried to get a second one. And now that bounce out is actually really bad news for Redemption, but Joyo's first touch let him down. Oli moves oh. in, goes for the shot. Sometimes you gotta do that. Just test the defenders. Go a little bit more direct. I actually got that boost. Either way, it is out to Oli. Gonna go backboard. Question Ivan's backboard defense. Ivan passes that with flying colors. Now they've got good territory. Joyo beats the ball. Rezzy's going to leave it for Oli, and that's not the best touch there from Oli. Now Rezzy has got an awful lot of work to do. He knows he's got players waiting around him, and he does oh. so well. Almost found the pass to Oli. Yeah, a lot of counterattacks being threatened here. Now Rezzy's accidentally jumped the wrong way. That was nearly a disaster for Moist. Rezzy just completely misread that one. It almost ends up in an awkward position. Once again, it does. This time Rezzy gets the jump and the read right. Redemption are setting up shop at the edge of the box. One consistent touches. It's Astral. Stopped by Oli. Nice little recovery midair there by Oli. Just get a surprising touch on the ball. Again, it's Joyo who's advancing. Joyo who's getting outplays, whether he's getting the ball past everybody. Well, not quite yet, but at least one or two. Now Oli with an early interception. Drop to Rezzy, and that's going to be the winning goal. Early interception from Oli. Completely surprised Redemption. And Rezzy, not for the first time this game, pounces on the loose ball. And very quick communication that the player needed to go that way because there was the chance for Oli to take that. He had a good position midair, called off, and Oli puts that one top corner. All right, Rezzy puts that one top corner. He gets the brace, and he gets his team over the line. So Redemption, despite good spells in that game, have got to take the loss. I feel like, Johnny, that it's difficult to really glean too much from that one. That was a very, very rugged affair in our opening game. You know, well, you know, Redemption were scrambling back very well, but they were giving away brief 1v1 opportunities and leaving some gaps in the defense. Um, you know, you don't always want to be relying on those last-ditch recoveries, those last-second challenges uh, to stop a team like Moist especially. Because, you know, Moist have scored twice this game, um, just thanks to Rezzy's shooting from close range. 
Uh, well, somewhat close range. He did have a fair bit to hit the ball, uh, in, in fairness to him. But uh, yeah, you're going to get some solo plays from Joyo, from Rezzy, from Oli at this series at some point. Um, and Redemption will not be too happy that they've just conceded some pretty uncontested shots. They were contesting late on those shots, but you know, getting beaten to the ball like that by Rezzy uh, is not good for a world-class defense. No, and for me, Redemption's entire play style is going to come down to whether or not they can control that midfield, keep winning those races to the ball, and control those positions. If they can't, well, you get goals like that last one that we saw. If they can, well, you get also long periods of possession that they did have for decent stints during that game. And you break them down, though, off the ball. Oh. That was a little bit too quick. Rezzy has got his third for the series. And like you said, that's the problem. You're going to run into those big plays at some point. Joyo makes that solo play work much closer to the redemption goal. We've already seen him several times this series, outplaying one, two players in a row um, as he moves the ball from defense to attack. But you know, when it's point blank range like this, much, much more difficult to stop. Good defense as well by Joyo. That's not going to be the easiest read by Cash, but he gets it into the top corner. And he didn't waste any time doing so. Did not want the recoveries to happen. You see Joyo, he's already oh, getting wide. into position. He was not far off. Cash had to execute brilliantly, and he did. I mean, you know, trying to read a bounce like that that's come off of a pinch, essentially, a 50-50 that's pinched into the backboard. Cash was up mm -hmm. immediately. He didn't even have to change his course, which is a perfect read. He slammed itself in. And then Rezzy's coming the other way. It's all about the solo plays with the setups for Moise, but they are looking for passes in that final third. Yeah, didn't they had decent uh, effectiveness on the transition out from defense, but not necessarily creating goal-scoring chances from them in the previous game. Now Moise seems to be at least getting a little bit more of a buy-in from Redemption's defense. Holy, oh, how's this one going to pop out? He's got past oh. two of them. Who's up oh. next? Joyo across the face of the goal. We stare one each. Oh, Cash was just hustling there, trying to get the ball away from danger. Attempted defensive post pinch. Didn't go too far. Now, what can Joyo do in this situation? He back corners it. He's actually uh, in a headlock with Astral on the back wall, and both players are committing to this. So we've got 2v2. Holy and Rezzy. Looking to try and take on Cash and Ivan, and there's the demo. It's just going to continue to chase up. What's the prediction for here, Johnny? I mean, Which two have you got? Th there's no denying that the, the position that this one's in does favor redemption. Astro could at any moment decide to, uh, you know, break this and make a critical save. So if you are predicting um, a uh, break from Astro and, pa and Astro and Joyo, then you'd have to go redemption here. They've got the favorable position. Uh, but yeah, only. Um, is definitely known for his 2v2 play. That's uh, something he made a name for himself with on his come up to the scene. And uh, so far himself and Rezzy have got oh, a good position. It's off the bar. Astral oh, keeps his honor, go, does not go. break free. He is just going to hold firm and let his team get back. Only did not have the read on that at all. Got a little bit too close to it. Realized if he went for the shot, he was going to sky it. And now he breaks the opposite side of the field. Oh, uh, scores! 2-1! <laughs> That is unbelievable. The faithful are rewarded. Astral did not panic. The ball was right in front of his goal, but he just kept Joyo locked up in net. And it is Redemption who break the deadlock and take the 2-1 lead. They do after the fact. Ivan going to try for the back pass. Realize he had only behind him. Cash, decent touch. Out to Astral, who... Didn't really get too much from it, but there's a misread again from Moist. Kind of invited Redemption back in, but the demo does help. Here goes Rezzy. Rezzy is starting Ooh. to fire on all cylinders. That is a confident player right now. You know, I don't, I don't really blame. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't really blame uh, the the early W call there. I feel like Redemption will feel like they deserve a win for that, but um, we can't get too far ahead of ourselves here. Moist are still. I think if, if we, we gave them the win, Moist would probably appeal it um, at that moment. <laughs> I don't know if that's in the rules yet, but um, honorable, uh, unbroken uh, headlocks are rewarded with an immediate win. You're saying Matt's got the rule book open. He's ready to get the appeals going <laughs> at any moment. Yeah, I, I would blame them, honestly. I feel like they deserve a win as well. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for them. I'm, I'm biased. I'm, 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 I'm full biased now. I want them to win because uh, that, that was impressive. <laughs>
insane from Asriel to just watch the ball next to his goal and uh, say, you know what, I don't care. Let's just let this one take its course. We've had the storyline go for so long about Astral's mental. I think that, that one play just gets rid of it forever. Strongest mental in the entire game. Now can they have the strongest defense? Pass out to Joyo. The answer's no. What a pass. And Joyo was not going to need a second look. Oh, that's so cheeky from Oli as well. He baked the wall play. It cuts in field. And he simultaneously centers the ball while bumping the defender out the way. And that's a really, really patient setup there from Oli. I think, you know, game one and the start of game two, they were taking the ball high a lot. So that would not have been what uh, Redemption were expecting. They so have the grinded play. Here comes another one. It's Joyo against Cash. He's going for the crossbar pitch downwards. It's out of the net, but that was not too far off from Joyo. Astral drops the ball down, but actually that's straight to Papavoli, who can now chase up. He's looking for the third man. He's found them. Now oh. Astral has to go. <laughs> Rezzy has to double tap and he's bailed his team out and got the goal. But that was so messy. Oh, the Joyo didn't need that last touch. He was trying to get it in perfectly, but he accidentally hit the bar after successfully outplaying the last defender. And luckily, Rezzy keeps his cool as he has been for the rest of the day. That striker for Moist. And will they be able to now hold on to that one goal lead outside of the Reef 2v2? They do look like the better team here. This looks like a scrim, to be honest with you. It's been that kind of wild time between the rule ones, whatever that last goal was, and just whatever else is going to happen in the last 40 seconds, uh -oh. which might contain a joyful goal. Ivan keeps it out, keeps his team in the game for at least now. But Moist Esports have got stronger and stronger ever since the rule one was finished. Uh, yeah, now that they're back into midfield play, I think all the Moist fans will be resting a little bit more easily what can redemption do as you know step one involves dispossessing moist that's a moist roster who have been difficult to dispossess today well he's still on this delaying cash's entrance to the play and it's not an easy ball for cash to collect Stroyal dispossesses him again and gets working on yet another setup let's go get the ball to the floor and they will take their second game Moist Esports, comfortably in the driver's seat. And Joyo now has a lot of bragging rights because he's topped his team's leaderboard and they did do a little bit better when he was a part of the 3v3 and rather than the 2v2. Yeah, Joyo's definitely got the bragging rights here. He's saying, come on guys, without me, you're you're zero and one. Yeah, and this, I come back in, we score two goals, but he has had a large part to play in uh, a lot of the goals for Moist. You know, Joyo's getting a lot of alone time with the ball. And uh, when he does get that, um, he, he's obviously one of the scariest players in the entire world. But yeah, yeah th I love that from uh, Joyo and Astral still. They, they, they're going to, I think, look back fondly at that moment as they did a good job not to disconnect from the lobby. You know, when you're stuck against each other for that long, it's very easy to just forget to press any buttons and get sent back to the main menu. So honestly, good awareness by both of them there. Um, it didn't work out well in the long run for Redemption, who have called the timeouts, actually. Um, yeah. And, and that's not a bad idea. As they, you know, got completely outmatched that last game. It was by, by the end of it, it was 15 shots to four uh, between Moist and Redemption. Yeah, they look good for the last game and the start of uh, this one, but as you mentioned, did kind of fall off a little bit. And it just seems like the individual plays that we have got from Moist, from Rezzy and uh, Joyo especially, are just getting them to move around like puppets on strings. They are buying on everything, they are diving on everything, and they are not making any contact or a 50-50 on the plays uh, that we have seen from Moist Esports. So if they can't find a way of slowing those down, and good luck, by the way, we're not saying that that is an easy task, but uh, that is always the step one of beating this Moist squad. Stop the individual plays. Yeah, you, you do need to get those challenges in early. I think in the first game, that's something Redemption had more success with. They were, uh, you know, they, they, they were needing to defend against those solo plays, particularly from Joyo, that were coming out of defense. And if you can get a challenge in early, force him to use boost and force him to maybe use his first flip reset before he reaches the edge of your box, or at least before he gets to your half uh, even, that's a good start. But, you know, letting him get close, uh, it, you know, that's where it gets a lot more scary to go up against and a lot harder to trust your teammates uh, to actually have saves in those critical positions. Yeah, it's now or never for Redemption if they want to make the major in Denmark, if he wants to uh, roll out of bed and attend uh, the international land um, as the, I think, only date left in the tournament uh, coach for Redemption there. Yeah, they've got to start winning and they've got to start winning soon. So off to Utopia we go. 
Can Redemption fight back in this series? Or does the Moist Miracle Run live on for at least another series? Both these teams way out when it comes to chances of making it. Right now, Redemption looking further away than anyone else. Yeah, so a long way back against a Moist roster playing like this. That's a panic in defense. It has been quickly cleaned up by Cash. Oh, Rezzy wanted the immediate touch there, missed it. Now Oli's alone at the back, and he's not going to have an easy time here. He's out of boost as well. And that miss proves to be costly for Moist, as Oli was hindered with his recovery and completely isolated alone in defense. Desperately need them from Redemption. They've got their first. Need to keep this up now, put the pressure on. Take that timeout buff. What does the fruity timeout buff look like? Can we get him? to be talked about, like the Pharaoh, like the Eversaxes. This team need it at the moment, but that backboard touch was so tricky to deal with. Two players committed. Moist now starting to swarm. Good challenge. In goes Shoyo. There was only one prediction, predicted result. And they did not take long again. It's a more panicking in defense from Redemption. Only stuffs Astral's attempt to clear. And the full commitment to offense from Moist immediately pays off. 1-1. They look like they mean business, Shogun. They look like they could be destined for a semi-final just as quickly um, as our other quarter-finalist were her victorious earlier today. BDS and Carmi Corp have sped run their way into it. Moist looking to do the same thing. It's becoming almost a, a point of frustration as we do see Oli go for yet another. Oh, wow. 2-1. And the question is going to start lingering here, Johnny. What could have been if they just could have sorted out the qualifying two weeks ago? Well, you know, I'm not an uh, expert in body language, but, uh, you know, a face palm from Cash and a head shake from Astral is not looking too good over there in the redemption camp. They've got a long way to go in this game and, uh, you know, a long way to go in the series if they are to come back, but heads are going down here. They're starting to realize that you know, they're getting outplayed and obviously it can't feel too good to see goals flying into your net left, right and center. You've got to stabilize the defense here, boys. I think that's step one to actually starting a comeback in the series is managing to consistently get out of defense like they did in game one. It just seems so, so much easier, didn't it? It was not that long ago. Only now, reset. Even he's starting to feel confident on these plays. He gets off the backboard, Rezzy dives on in. Only can just cut rotation and keep this one going. Didn't quite land for him. Astral, what a read! Joy! Oh. He almost got it! Read him like a book and almost scored off it! That's yeah, good defense by Cash again to dive back, but as we keep mentioning, the, these last ditch efforts in defense are not things you can rely on. I mean, you know, we, we, we've seen that a lot in RLCS over the years. You cannot rely on just goal line defense and last second challenges. Much better to get out and challenge early, and it's something that Redemption are really struggling to get going right now. And this is much better. You got Astral in the back corner, 50 50 it through one, and then creating a same 50 50 situation with another. Oh, what a play by Oli. Oh, he's just skipping and jumping over everybody as he makes it 3 1. And, you know, early challenge or not, Oli has just got way too fast to recovery there. That is insane to get back to the ball as quickly as he did. You know what? I don't even blame the defender. That is a sort of pace that you just never see on those recoveries. He maintained supersonic as he landed. That is just going to be a slightly wide. This Moist Esports roster, though, are oozing with confidence. Rezzy with Oli on the far side. Oh, look at this. They're trying to go for the freestyle plays. Joyo now. Up next. What can he do oh, to the showcase? That word. is insane, Musty. Rezzy's turn. <laughs> Redemption need to get moving here. They have got a team against them that are just trying to showcase themselves. Now Joy goes for the ground play. In comes Oli. Oh. Takes him out. I mean, they're, they're just so confident right now. Moist are going for any play they can conjure up in their head. There's zero hesitation and no doubt in their mechanical ability. And it's a tough spot for Redemption, isn't it? They just have very little going their way in this game or the last. You know, they really just trying to get Joyo locked with Astral again. Seems like it might be the best win condition. Astral's got to try and find him, especially now that he's zero boost. Just honestly driving to Joyo. I think Joyo, I think Joyo would get it. Yes, there it is. No, he's flipped away. <laughs> so they're going to have to remain in a 3v3. I have to look into that rule set. Maybe we can still give them the win for game number two. 
The worst part is, is I think if you offer that, Moist might still take it if you ask the players. They'd love another, another game. <laughs> just to continue showcasing what they're doing. Like, here's a chance. A challenge, though. You see Joyo is starting to scamper back. And Demo just ruins any chances Redemption had. Now off the... Oh, I was going to say the attempted flick, but Oli never really committed. Yeah, it didn't sit perfectly in his car there, so he decided not to... Um, actually commit to the flick. Look how much space Moist have got. At the edge of the box, there's no challengers coming in. Redemption is losing their momentum in defense time and time again, unable to close the distance. And it's giving Moist so much time to decide not just what play to make, but who to make the play. They've got options. If they Moist first to the ball, second to the ball, they're saying, ah, I've got a good line at this one, how about you? Okay, yep, you go for it, and it's in for Oli again. 4-1. They're laughing, and there's not a smile to be seen on the Redemption side. We are quickly hurtling towards six in a row for Moist Esports. Reverse sweep yesterday. As good as done in game number three here. Redemption just do not have an answer. Timeout is... Oh. Timeout did not work at all. And Moist Esports, they'll be singing bring on the semifinals today. Happily would play the rest of this tournament out as quickly as possible. Because this is the Moist Esports that I feel like we got glimpses of, Johnny, when we saw this team for the first time back at Flip and Spin. Yeah. And it kind of disappeared when RLCS began. Like they've really just been stunning to watch in offense. Their ability to outplay opponents is just so present with this roster. It's not just Joyo, it's the whole team. Oli has had a couple solo goals in this game alone. And, uh, I mean, Rezzy, players... I know looked up to Joyo over the years and a player that was handpicked by Joyo on this roster. They, you know, they've got chemistry on, off the pitch and now on the pitch, they're uh, looking like they've played with each other for much longer than they actually have. This is a brand new team for the season, um, as many teams in EU are for this split. Yeah, it, it, it's a scary offense to go up against. Uh, it, it all comes down to early challenges. I think when you face the very top, the uh, top teams in Europe, you're getting challenged a lot earlier than Moist have been challenged in this series. We're seeing so many times where Redemption have got multiple goalkeepers, they've got multiple players with zero momentum, uh, very little boost, sitting in defense waiting for the ball to come to them. That is just not how you, you play against Moist. It's not really how you play against any of the best offenses in the world these days. You have to take the game to them, you have to challenge. You know, we saw what BDS could do earlier against Gentlemates when they did so. Makes it much, much harder for those solo plays to work out. Well, I was going to ask, what is it going to take now for Redemption to get the win? But Ivan seems to have tried something at the very least. If the timeout's not going to work, maybe the car placebo. He's left the lobby rejoined. Is it, yeah, is it and, a car uh, change? confirmed. Well, uh, oh, is, our yeah. referee did ask about it and Cash did confirm. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. Is it a new car entirely? Is he on it? Oh, so no, Octane, okay. Right, well, I mean, nothing too crazy. We're not coming in here with uh, any off-meta cars for so Ivan. If one car has got a good track record this weekend, could have gone over that way. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, right, if it was... It work. Yeah. If it, if it was going badly before this game, well, it's going very badly now. Cash turns up field after grabbing the back corner boost on the kickoff and the dead ball cheat goes into the back of their net. I mean, it's a high-risk strategy, and uh, we've seen what can go wrong if the risk does not pan out, and this is almost just as bad with Oli now on the ball, and plenty of boost to spare. His shot is initially defended, but the panic is present once again for Moist, or rather, no, for Redemption in defense. That's good from Astro, he lands on the last defender, and what a crucial play that was. Moist would have had the free run at this, if not for Astral, bumping Joyo, who is up to try and defend the overhead. Yeah, the flip reset was like a trebuchet just to launch the ball, and then it was throwing the trebuchet at the player itself. 1-1, one, one. Redemption really needed that. Some life back into this series. See how Moist Esports respond to that. They have conceded a few balls they've been on this rather incredible run of play that they've had. Ivan, power clear. He's got cash. He will have to stretch for the ball. Did at least get some contact. Back out again. Cash. Bit of time. What can he do with it? Not chance for the last second there from Joyo, who does seem like just wants to wait downfield for the pass to come his way. In goes Oli. First time. Oh, 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 oh. Being attacked. Could not escape Joyo. 
Yeah, this time we have contact between Joyo and Astral that does result in a moist goal. A bit more violent than the last time the two butted heads as Joyo clatters Astral away from a defensive position. Moist are just so confident with their offense right now. It doesn't matter who's on the ball. Oh, that's another one, isn't it? I mean, you've not learned from your mistake there, Redemption, have you? Because that's the second time this game that they have made the exact same mistake. But honestly, well played, though. You've got to give it to Moist for consistently winning these kickoffs. They are putting the ball in the right spot for the uh, cheating player to approach. And that's what's catching Redemption off guard. Because like the Moist Esports org is... Uh... Always got some sort of kickoff goal happening, either for or against them. Same. Quite a few players seem to pop to my head. Oh, holy did get a flip reset there. Astro, oh my goodness, he's got pass too. Astro is trying to really put something together here. <laughs> was a major part of the first goal that they got. Now he's on the respawn, and we'll be happy with the side that he was respawned on. Game is not out of reach yet. Most esports trying to do so. You got wait. To what? Oh, don't. what? <laughs> well, you can say sometimes everything is falling for one team. Uh, that was in a very literal sense. That fell for Resi. I mean, everything's just falling apart for Redemption. Is even, even, even a, a clear at ceiling height is being immediately intercepted by Moist, who can't make any mistakes here, really, um, in the grand scheme of things. Obviously, they've, they've conceded a few times today, and uh, Redemption have caused them some problems. But overall, it hasn't damaged their confidence at all. They've just continued chugging along, and they continue to trust each other. And for me, that's one of the big differences between these two teams today. Is Moist look like a team who trusts each other's touches, who trusts each other's plays, and Redemption are a team who, unfortunately, just today have not been able to do that. Oh, well, never mind. It's oh no, it's oh, fine. It's totally no. fine. Absolutely yeah, fine. Over. I'm sorry, it's over. <laughs> Look, yeah, well, nothing is working for Redemption here. It is one of those series. Just, I'm trying to credit Moist for trusting each other's touches. They double commit on nothing and center the ball, but Astral can't even put that one on target. It's just all going wrong here. You can see that the mental has completely fallen apart for Redemption. They just don't believe um, anymore. That's a problem when you're down three games, down three, one in game four, and about to see the end of your split one in the new RLCS season. Astro's trying to create something here, maybe make up for the previous play. He was at least the provider of the one and only goal Redemption have got in this game. But they need more. They've got two goals in two minutes to find. Have not really had the looks of them of a team that is capable of it. Can they flip the script entirely? They've got a little bit of territory at the moment. Trying to chase down. Cash is going to get near that one, but it's out to Ivan. Joyo clears into the path of Rezi. Astro. I don't know if he was about to pressure somewhere else or why he was just jumping into the midfield. Either way, he is now on possession of the ball. Chance to outplay. Okay. Well, Astro, despite missing a glorious opportunity earlier on, has done well here in the 1v1. He broke free and then plays for the low pop bump to put them within a goal here with a lot of time left in the game. That's Astro once again with physical play onto the last defender. Creating a goal and hold on a second here. Where's that ball going? Joyo's able to collect it well. And that was pretty close to being a direct shot on target. Cash guides it back out. Oli will wait. Fully outplayed. Rezi though in support. And it's in these positions that Redemption just lose all momentum on their cars. They slow up so much where in their final third. Can't afford to that now. They've got to get rid of this ball and create a goal scoring opportunity for themselves. I think Ivan might have been wanting that one to just be left for himself. Now with the backboard, Ivan around. At least sticks with it for the time being. In goes Astral, and Rezi will just take his time, clear the ball. Yeah, that's well done by Rezi as well. Full control as he helps the ball forward. Well into the final minute now. Joyo's low shot will be defended, but Redemption starting to run out of time. And they've got a good chance here though, Astral with the solo play. Challenged nice and early by Joyo, and Joyo's done fantastically to just stay behind the ball and delay Redemption even more. Back to the corner, 30 seconds. Redemption still need one. This might be the chance to do it. Joyo not only saves, but controls and guides the ball back out. But Redemption have kept themselves in the driver's seat at oh, least at temporarily. Now <laughs> they are driven out of the tournament and out of major contention. That's a huge hit by Oli in reverse. Ivan did not expect that much power with the clear from 
Holy, who's positioned backwards with almost no momentum there. And now they've got to get the best kickoff of the game. They've not had kickoffs going their way this game, but can they get one here to keep themselves alive? Joyo delays his kickoff just to try and mess with Redemption even more. And that should be it. Moist are about to pick their spot in the semi-finals tomorrow. Cash clears the ball. It will drop down. Moist Esports, the miracle run. They'll look to make it happen. Oh. Gentlemates fans, <laughs> congratulations, you've made it. Uh, you know, if there's one player who's going to thoroughly enjoy that, it's going to be Joyo, uh, who played part of last season with Cash, part of last season with Astral. Um, and now he's just eliminated both of them from uh, this uh, first split of RLCS 2024. It, it was an improvement from Redemption, one event to the other. I think they did, you know, they, they, they seemed like they were getting better and better, but this is a tough one to, to, to you know, tough loss to take at the end of the split. They couldn't really get anything to work in this uh, in this uh, quarterfinal, whether it's kickoff strategies, whether it's, uh, you know, the synergy and offense, or really any kind of structure and defense. It just all went wrong and Moist were thriving. When you give this team space on the ball, you are not going to have a good time. Yeah, you've got to get over and challenge them. And it did feel like for at least the last seven minutes or so of that series, Moist Esports were just on a whole different level. They will march on. We will see them in Championship Sunday tomorrow. But we've still got to find out who they're going to play. And we'll find that out after this break. Stumpy, I need your help. Can't make it's 10 p.m. I went to bed two hours ago. I'm nearly 30. Oh, this better be urgent. I can't sleep. I'm trying to figure out the best way to let people know that Copenhagen tickets are available now. Cope Blan Hagen, but fine. I think I might know someone who can help out with this. CJ, hello mate. We need your help. How can we let people know that there are tickets available to Copeland Hagen? Copenhagen tickets are available now? Righto, fellas. What's Denmark known for? I need someone with a bit more worldly knowledge than me. Stax, we're struggling here. How can we let people know that they can get tickets to the Danish land? Ooh. Danish, you say? You guys are going about this all wrong. Wait, who added Gibbs? Who added you? This is Rocket League. Of course I'm here. Everyone knows that Denmark is home to the famous playwright and poet Hans Christian Andersen. And stop! Guys, I'm friends with loads of pros, and they all really respect me because, you know, I'm Johnny Boy, I'm kind of a big deal. But just leave it to me, I'll, I'll call someone up, I'm sure they can help us out. Yo, what's up, guys? Oh, hey, it's Jack. apparently Jack. Jack. G'day, Jack. Hi, guys, my name. Uh, is he okay? He's fine, he always does this, don't worry. Hi, guys, my name is... A... Hi, guys. Hi, guys, my name... As a Canadian, I quite like Lemon Kiwi Snow idea. Thank you. What if we really focus in on the fact that they had Vikings? This thing on? Hello? I hear Denmark so has... I've heard that salted licorice is delicious. Guys, I've got it.
from requiring a reverse sweep yesterday to seven in a row. Moist Esports make quick work against Redemption and book their ticket through to our semi-finals. Who will they be playing against? Well, we'll be finding out very shortly. But before then, I am joined by the man himself, Joyo. Welcome to the desk, my friend. Uh, you were saying it's been a while for you here, so it's good to have you back. Yeah, no, it's been a while, but uh, I mean, like I have to be here, it's obvious. I'm, we're back, so it was going to happen. Let Let's talk about that tweet, shall we? Because yeah. you were in that series up against your former teammates, both Cash and Astral. Uh, how did you feel about their performance in that series? Mm, shocking. Uh, they were they were pretty terrible. But, I mean, they played all right. Like, sometimes, but they were pretty terrible, in my opinion. <laughs> Is that your teammates behind you having a laugh at that? Or? Yeah, I think they're chuckling a bit. I don't know what happened. But... Okay. Well, let's also move on to talking about your, your teammates on this one because you've had to sort of scour out and find some new talent to bring into this RLCS season. Um, how are you guys feeling about how you've gelled over the past few months and sort of moving that on into the next split? Uh, I mean, it's been a sticky one. Uh, we had a few issues. We started really well, actually. We made like flip and spin and stuff. We were playing well. Uh, had a mm. bit of a bit of a hurdle there, you know, but we're back now. We're confident. We've got a... Uh, ready to play i guess i don't know i don't really know what to say we've just got on better in it <laughs> yeah i mean so you, so you gotta do it. it's a very very difficult format where it's just form over uh, a mm -hmm. month and a half uh so to speak um so for what you guys are requiring to maybe make more of this split you guys are aware that you do need to win this entire thing you do need a little bit of help from our next match up vitality versus off. you could take over the coaching role for oxygen at the moment and just sort of say anything to their players what would you do to encourage them to get the result that you guys need mm, i'd probably say bash <laughs> i mean i can even hear leaf like giggling over on the side over here so before we go over to leaf and the desk i'm gonna hand it over to you do you want to say anything to everyone before i let you go for the day Right, it seems like, oh, I'm this. <laughs> well, I'm going to hand this over to Leaf. Take it away, my friend. That is it. He's cracked He's cheeky, isn't he? He's cheeky. Uh, good luck, man. Uh, I love it. It's uh, too wonderful. But again, as Shogun said, Johnny, they they do now sit and watch this is you know some of the most nerve-wracking position for a team to be in is uh not having your fate in your hands for at least a little while yeah it's it's uh it's gonna be interesting i mean um it, yeah the advice from joyo to oxygen there i'm sure that's been heard loud and clear i'm sure that's very helpful actually to oxygen i know that really resonates Definitely well Archie. with them uh, yeah archie's gonna love that um, but you know the good news for Moist is that for Oxygen, it's in Oxygen's best interest to win as well. That's the only way they can qualify. So it's not like they're going to need to rely on a result that the other team don't care about. Sometimes you're, you know, hoping for a result against, and the team that you're rooting for are already qualified, and you're thinking, oh no, they're not going to, uh, they're, they're not going to prep as hard or whatever. They're right. not going to, they're not really going to dig deep and go for this. Uh, but now in this situation, they will. Like uh, absolutely, Oxygen need that win just as much as Moist do. Yeah. I mean, there, there's no reason for them not. As you said, they need it just as much as Moist. This is their game. They're focused on them, not anything about Moist. You see up above me here now, CJ, look at that. See those logos? Looking up there. Yeah, what's up there? There's, there's three uh, teams that are very well lit up. One seems quite uh, quite faded, quite dark, quite a shadow on Vitality. Mm. Yeah. Because that's uh, that What's means that there's mean, three like? locked in. Uh, well, that, you just answer. There's three locked yeah. in. There's one spot remaining. It's uh, between Moist, Vitality, and Oxygen now to to lock that spot in. We just mentioned Moist now. Johnny needs to watch this match. Oxygen needs to win this for themselves and Moist. Vitality wins it. Then it's just it's locked in for them, and that's why they're yeah. kind of faded in there because we feel like probably Johnny they have one of the better chances here. Yeah, well, it, it, this is what you want as a, as a neutral viewer. This is what you want as a, just a viewer of Rocket League in general. That you want the teams who are competing for the spot to be playing against each other. So this is fantastic stuff. You've got uh, Vitality playing Oxygen. Winner plays Moist tomorrow. These are the three teams who are competing, and they're not having to go up against other teams. They're against each other. So great stuff uh, uh, with how this, the pieces have fallen together here. Um, but yeah, Vitality haven't been talked about too all that much actually, outside of you know they are the defending major champions, defending world champions. Um, it's kind of Oxygen and Moist regain. That's the upward trajectory. And by Vitality, are the team that are just kind of flat at the moment. They seem to have plateaued somewhat. Right. Uh, 
CJ, if you got some yeah. thoughts on it too, Moist. Now look, through semifinals, I just wanted to get this on screen. You see three teams in there now and only one spot remaining. Yeah, and I mean, as we said, Moist obviously heavily relying on Oxygen, and obviously we'll, we'll get into the matchup in a second, but Oxygen, it's obviously it's now or never. I mean, that's 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 like the biggest casterism I've ever said, but uh, they yet to really challenge a top team. Vitality look like they're in top form now from that Swiss stage, so uh, yeah, can they do it? Yeah. Well, CJ, let's not get into it in a second. Let's start getting into it now. Let's okay. get talking about this because, again, Oxygen up against the reigning world champions. Vitality stands in their way, and Oxygen and Moist both need this. There's a lot of weight for that final Copenhagen mm. spot here for Oxygen to take this win. But Vitality, you know they ain't going to back down. Yeah, as, as Johnny said, 9-0, and we haven't, or 9-1 and through the Swiss stage, 3-0, and we didn't talk about them because we didn't need to, and we didn't really see them, uh, they just kind of walked their way through the Swiss, Oxygen, however, Johnny, I mean, they had to do it the tough way, 8th seed out of the Swiss, went to round 5, probably didn't beat any teams that would give us too much confidence against, against Vitality, but it's a new day. Yeah, the uh, you know the, the good news for Oxygen is that in the previous event, they they in, in the second regional, they uh, did look a lot more impressive. You know, beating uh, Gentlemates in Swiss is, is a good result for them. It shows that they can compete with the big four French uh, teams, or at least one of them. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they they were also able to get a top four in the previous event as well. Vitality were not obviously Vitality had to play Carmine Corp, and uh, Oxygen got to play Redemption. So that, it, there's definitely more than uh, just uh, you know strength. Of, well, there's a lot of strength of schedule there as well um however you know oxygen are they're the team who want this kind of matchup they want to be talked about in that same conversation as teams like gentlemates vitality bds um Carmi corp they if this if that's what they want then they need to uh you know beat this team right in front of them and uh then then we're gonna have you know oxygen mentioned as a part of a big five not just uh outside of the big four looking in a lot of good energy coming up from Oxygen. I don't know if that's just because they're confident or if they're masking any of the anxiousness that might be on them. Big match for them in chat. It's time to let us know if you think maybe this will be, and I'm going to say it, it's an upset if Oxygen wins. If it's going to be an upset, uh, hashtag OXG in chat. But if you think it's going to the way most of us probably do, hashtag VIT. Now, it looks like all three of us on desk here have had a perfect day unsurprisingly it hasn't been too crazy uh i don't know what shogun's been doing that's been wild over there uh but uh i, I imagine we'll continue on that same path cj yeah i i think so vitality deserved favorites and you know i mentioned it before with oxygen this kind of happened in the previous event uh where they got that big win they had the moist run of this playoff where they they got the redemption sweep 4-0 exo talked to his, his smack with stumpy and then they lost to bds so it's their chance again can they bounce back can they beat a top team in europe that's a great question and only one way to find out is to watch the game for our final quarterfinal oxygen hold not only their own lives in their hands but moist as well vitality hold only theirs the final major spot on the line and it can be taken right here and then there were three just three teams fighting for one spot back to copenhagen the favorites here in the match and to qualify stumpy are team vitality but is that how it's gonna pan out yep you're right vitality winning in you win it you get the major happy days europe's got their top four sorted but oxygen can really throw a spanner in the works if they beat vitality that then still leaves oxygen and moist with a chance of making the major that then means Oxygen needs to beat Moist a little bit later on, and then they will make the Major. And if Moist win it, they then need to win the Regional and then beat Moist again to make the Major. Every kind of permutation, but EXO continues with the basics and gets the immediate goal. It's something we're learning from this version of Oxygen. They are never simple to beat. Just 11 seconds into the game, they grab their first. I love that goal explosion as well, the shark rising. And it does seem that that's what Oxygen want to be, chasing them like the shark from Jaws, you know, approaching vitality and clutching their spot. It's going to be a huge undertaking for Oxygen. We've seen how they want to perform versus these top, top, top teams, and they couldn't do it previously when they faced off versus BDS. Um, oh, sorry, uh, when they faced off versus Gentlemates, and when they faced off versus Carmen Corp as well. You would expect more from them. And EXO put that out there as well. And we said it the other day, we love that EXO wants to come out and say, look, I don't care what you think, I'm here to play my game. 
This is your chance to prove it. Make that major and show everyone why you belong here, Oxygen. Team Vitality are the favourites in this series, and you can understand of why. Course. You know, they've, they've had some top performances, but bear in mind, while they went 3-0 and in the Swiss yesterday, the teams they beat are ones that you would expect yeah. them to beat pretty much every time. They beat Endpoint, they beat Team 3, and they beat Top Cougars in the upper part of the Swiss. So it's by no means that they had to travel through something particularly difficult by these standards yesterday. Uh, so that's something that Auction can take. Well, they had to qualify in three, but they've certainly started better. Oski just challenging his way through. Archie's coming in, should score, but Zensei. Just about managed to poke it out the wrong side as the Vitality defender. Now up onto the backboard is Alpha, lures out Oski. Actually sends it, tries to send it back inwards with the Doomsie dish. So Oski is going to be able to block it and then gets sent to the graveyard for his troubles. 100 boost spawned nicely for Ixo and he decides to turn right back around and head home, turning the car straight back. Ixo now getting a little bit in the way of Archie and then the ball flying in from Alpha. A bit of a disaster class there for Ixo. Yeah, I mean, cool guys don't look at explosions, but I think I want to see this one again. Ixo gets a touchdown for Alpha as well. An awkward moment, but we're early on in this series, so no harm done just yet because of course Stumpy this is a best of seven it's going to be an exhaustive hour or so of Rocket League coming up oh wait are they not best of fives because every other game we've had today has either gone to four or five games we're actually allowed to go to six and seven are we we can we can please. we can be all at six and seven please. just like the defense <laughs> were just then please give us more than five games oxygen vitality make this day a little bit longer than just a little European drive-by Alpha sends that one towards Zen, who's just waiting. Ixo's challenging him as well. Ixo staying involved there where Alpha was waiting. They're certainly doing well, Oxygen, to send Vitality back, but that little fake from Zen should open up a little bit of space for Team Vitality. I'd say, apart from that mistake from Oxygen, they've started off this game looking a little bit better. Yeah, they've made sure that their defense, yes, is a little bit scrambly. They, we did have that error, but their offense has looked powerful. They've made sure to send multiple players to attack any given ball, and that's what we've seen as a real definer between top teams. They, they, aren't, they aren't scared, they aren't afraid to send a couple of players to any given play. Now, Ixon wants to be the first man to it. Redosin with a huge backflip. Actually flicks the ball straight back into the blue half. Alpha's going to be trying to find Zen, but Oski with a huge interception. Not an open net, though, as Redosin sits firm. Team Vitality, who will still be reeling from the last time they were in the quarterfinals a couple of weeks ago when they were humiliated by Carmine Court. They'll want to change that here. Zen more than anyone as he rises up and slaps it home. Absolutely banged in from the Alpha assist. Beats out Oski, who pushed himself a little bit too far up, then can't quite stretch back and tip the ball over the crossbar. Zen identifies the open net, and Zen strikes. Vitality already looking a lot more fluent than the last time they did in the best of seven, which is good to see and expected to see as well. Oxygen going to have to struggle their way through. Archie gets a nice little touch there, but actually Zen closes him down. Zen's now following it up. You do not want to give that man that much space. Never ends well. Archie sends it backwards. More awkwardness here from Oxygen. And while they had so much time and space Open. earlier, right now it's Vitality bullying them. And I think the Oxygen can only blame themselves. They are everywhere right now. It is a conveyor belt. And Radosin beats out two defenders, both Archie and Oski committing to that one. Two goals clear now are Vitality with no signs of slowing down. I think that Oxygen will be pretty frustrated because barely 30 seconds. Oh, everyone's faked it. One minute. Anyone going to... Oh. Place your bets. There hey, go. there it is. We have a ball hit, ladies and gentlemen. We have a ball hit, Congrats. and it was Zen. And Zen can't quite set up Redosin, unfortunately. Can't quite get that fourth goal on Vitality's scoreline. Alpha slams Archie into the nether realm. Redosin, a huge pinch over towards the other side, and we are now seeing a chase having to come through for Oxygen. Something has to happen. Oscar with a double reset, but no contact on the second. Archie does well, though, to avoid the bump there, but Zen just steams in. Is this one going all the way in? Yes, it is. And in about 30 seconds, they'll hit the ball from the next kickoff. Huge. Just Zen, again, with a beat. And I think that's just... It's, it's Archie not expecting the immediate dive in. But why would Zen not dive in there? If you're going to pop it go. up, you're being challenged straight away. Are they going to hit it? A back up. Oh, hey, they've done it from the off. Well done. We're all improving. Radosin now midfield finds Zen on the left, relatively open. Ixo's going to try and block that one out, sends it top corner. Alpha goes central, though instead goes on his own, gets a catch from that early flip. Radosin now, Archie with a challenge, top corner save, manages to tap it away, and a decent chance for a counter attack here. Oxygen, though, aren't quite able to take it. Zen, no side will redirect. Radosin trying to get it back towards Zen. Again, still nothing, but a managed game from Vitality. I'll tell you what as well, Zed is looking a little bit spicy. He's pixels away from some of these redirects. 
And he's going for the old, you know, single resets, double resets. Certainly seems to have mechanics on his mind, but he's tackled in midair there by Ixo. Oxygen trying to get something going. It is Ixo all by himself, and it is a chance for Oxygen. No touch from anybody on Vitality, and great ambition for Ixo there, immediately challenging Zen on that sidewall. And I think Alpha and Radosin caught sleeping at the back somewhat because neither of them could make contact either. Now, only two goals separating Oxygen from a potential overtime. This kickoff vital, a relatively straightforward Ooh. one where Radosin does what Alpha could not do a few weeks ago yes, and trends good. backwards. <laughs> Well done, Radosin. Vitality are learning. Fairy Beak has been in their head saying, in this situation, head towards the ball. You do not need to score again. Vitality have made up the previous errors. As Zen should be able to just let this ball drop. There's still 15 seconds left, so a goal here would put a few caps among a few pigeons, but it does seem that Vitality are able to get it away, and Stumpy Goblin, Team Vitality, will take game number one. Relatively routinely as well. Yeah, they were down to begin with. Oscar going to be sending this, trying to get a little cheeky play. Isn't able to. Corner bounce for him. And Vitality, game number one, as most would expect. And Cole, I've got a few stats for you here. Um, as, of course, we've Throw seen... Vitality, we said what their run was like, and their stats do back up the fact that they had, I think, slightly easier opponents, or, you know, compared to others that have um, made it through into, the, into our playoffs from the Swiss. They've got the best defense and the best offense in the event so far. They're number one in goals, demos, and shooting percentage, and then in goals against, shots against, and saves, they are in the top three for all three stats. They have been incredibly dominant, but as we said, the teams that they faced were not of the same caliber as others who, of course, got through into the Swiss stage, so also out of the Swiss stage so far. But, you know, they're continuing to prove it against a team that is vying for a major spot. And saying that as well, you can only be what's put in front of you. You look at the Swiss and Team BDS being reverse swept uh, by top Cougars. You're not always going to have things your own way. It's going to be difficult at times, even if you are against teams that you are expected to beat. But Team Vitality, based on that first performance, mm -hmm. should be expecting now to win this series. That was a, a fairly dominant one, yeah. I would say. While Oxygen started off a little bit better, once Vitality got worrying, they looked superior. Yeah, I think Vitality just need to maintain that kind of game plan as well. We saw it earlier on when we looked at uh, Carmen Court versus Magnifico 2, where Magnifico wanted to play a little bit of a crazy game. They wanted to get down and dirty with it. And Vitality slash Carmen Corp in the previous example wanted to have a bit more structure, make sure that they were able to form the game around their own game plan. Oxygen, as I said, do not respond particularly well to that, but the quality of the players on Oxygen can absolutely take Vitality out of most situations. They just need to actually put themselves in situations to do so. Oxygen, who are still vying to be the fourth team from Europe to make it to Copenhagen, but they have to make a stand now. It starts with that save from Oski. A good start again from Team Vitality from the kickoff. Certainly something they've been working on based on this evidence so far. I love the fact that this, this kickoff meta has really become a thing. It's taken us, what, 12 seasons, 13 mm -hmm. seasons, but finally they are making the most of these set plays. Archie moving Alpha from that back corner. Redose now just stretch himself back a little bit, low on boost. He's going to leave Vitality scrambling somewhat in defense. Alpha taking a sensible 50, but Ixo is going to be there Ooh. with a fantastic challenge. Gets a good chance to get the ball in. Pats it back towards the midfield. Archie's shot just wide a target. Redose is going to be able to send it away. But I love what we saw from Ixo there, keeping himself busy yeah. and awkward when he's in that Vitality back third. I also like the idea from Archie as well, trying to wrong wheel the two defenders. It didn't quite work, it didn't connect well enough, but the idea was a good one. Minute gone, no instance so far. Oski tapping it central. Zen helps it along the way, and Eeks is going to be there to respond to it. Eeks are playing very reactively, and then being in positions where it's going to be fortuitous to his team. I'm liking where Eeks is positioned a lot, and that 50 going slightly the way towards Vitality, passing it central, Radosin catches up on it. I kind of assumed that an Oxygen defender was going to touch that, but Alpha's touch back completely caught everybody off guard. Yeah, I mean, Zen was also going for a bump on Oski, which made it even trickier for him, but I think it's the fact the win there from Alpha over the top of Ixo completely threw the defense. No, by no means did they think mm. that if Alpha was going to beat Ixo, he'd get it cleanly, and it shows the pace of Alpha. Yeah, making sure as well, as you said, Zen, making sure that Oski keep him grounded. If he's not grounded, Ooh. then he's going to be a threat, and Radosin and Zen making threats of each other, bumping each other around a little bit in defense. But again, Oski not able to form too much of an offense based off that one error. Zen's just going to wait here to see Alpha dribble it away. Vitality have had one or two hairy moments in defense over the last 20 seconds, but seem to have figured things out and oh. gone on to 
firmer ground now as Ixo makes a little quick fire save there and gets it over the top of Redosin. Archie's helping him out. Is that a double commit? Yes, it is. For a second, I thought they were pinching or something smart, but just a good old-fashioned WC. Whoa! Austin keeps going, but can't quite That was a great shot from Austin. Manages to get it on target. Redosin half in, and then manages to tap it straight back out again. Redosin again in that back corner. Making it awkward for anybody on Oxygen to get a touch of this ball on just wide of target. I thought that would be on target. Had to really get it in the top corner. Archie being bumped by Rodosin. Nobody on Oxygen feeling firm on their feet in their own goal. Yeah, but they're coming forward yet again, though. These challenges seem to be a real avenue that Oxygen can make the most out of. Then. Getting into the Vitality corner and just squishing the ball into the centre. But they need that second man to be slightly further forward at times, I'd say, for Oxygen. As another pinch comes in, Archie's trying to get some bumps as he comes out. Here comes Ixo, a great challenge there from Alpha. But it's going to fall to Archie. Ix is going for more bumps. He loves to do this to the first man. And it will fall for Oski, who puts it out wide to Ixo. It's brilliant, but it's hit the post. Oh, that passing play is the first time we've really seen those infield passes come to fruition. Unfortunately, not able to have anything from it. Ixo on target oh. this time. A great shot saved by Zed. Archie taps it, passes the ball straight back towards Vitality, who are immediately rushing to attack. They are currently on eight saves, Team Vitality. So much defending to be done, especially with these Oxygen players buzzing around and making things difficult. This one's difficult as well for Zen. Has to keep his composure in front of goal and does. Ixo is coming in quickly. Oxygen have full belief now. Have blood in their veins and they're pushing forward. Archie just has to wait for Alpha to flick it forwards though. Oxygen are showing signs, Stumpy. They're more likely to not get this next goal. They're also getting bumped off the ball so frequently that it looks incredibly frustrating to play against. But Oski finally with a little bit of space to breathe. Flicks it over Alpha. Can't quite get it past Zen, unfortunately for him. Alpha now goes for a bump. Oski has to half flip back, try to get something from that player as we approach the final minute. And a goal for Oxygen has to apparate sometime soon. Ixo Central, no second touch. Archie is the deepest third man I've ever seen in my life and isn't able to get to that ball before Redosin does. Yeah, so low on boost as far as Oxygen are concerned. But Zen oh! somehow gets that one towards the top corner. Oh, it's safe by Ixo at the near post. The counter-attacking play from Vitality almost pays dividends. Oxygen's still alive for now. Oski's already up on the wall. Does he pass or shoot? He goes solo to the ceiling. He gets the second touch. It's saved by Zed. Archie's coming in. Can't quite get it. Nor can Ixo. Oxygen just can't pull the trigger. Alpha now sending it long. Nobody on the back now as Rodosa removes Oski from the equation. Ixo, 100 boost. Dunked by Alpha. Oski has to clear it long, but Rodosa Again, bumping Ixo. Archie's not on the right hand wing, instead, Alpha is. Final 20, Ixo backboard. Oski midfield up high. We've seen those redirects time and time again. This time, shut down by a, vi by a vitality defender. Ixo again to the backboard, being pushed back when they want to be in that orange half. Oxygen desperate to send it forward now, but Archie can't get it over the top of Redosin. Again, Redosin is there, doing what he does best, causing that chaos, making things horrible for Oxygen. And in the end, they can't keep it up, and Team Vitality get their two-game lead. It was such good play from Oxygen towards the final two minutes or so of that game as well, as they do indeed take a timeout. And I want to really praise Ixo save. On Zen's flip reset, they went opposite top corner. I have no idea how he's dived across and made that at all. Brilliant eyes from him. Unfortunately, they couldn't win the game or even get a goal off the back of it. But you then still see the quality of those saves. players too. And the saves across the board is it, it's, it's outrageous for both teams. They were putting on shots on each other's nets. Vitality, the only team that could sneak one through. And now words of wisdom having to come out from Snasky on Oxygen's side. Yeah, good as me. He's got 60 seconds to try and wrangle his team back and give them back the belief that they have been showing so far in this series. By no means are they withering away and letting Vitality walk all over them. That version of Oxygen is long since gone now. They have to step up. They have to find that next gear. It's something I've been saying about Oxygen throughout this entire split. And Stumpy, it has to be now, but they mm -hmm. have the personnel to do it. I mean, last season, Oski made all three majors and, of course, Worlds mm -hmm. and Team Liquid. These are players that are used to being there in that LAN conversation. And shout out as well when we talk about LAN. These guys are all on boot camp together, I believe right now in Endpoint's facility. So shout out to Endpoint. They put a picture on uh, Twitter oh, yeah. a little bit earlier on. Um, of course, those boot camps are so important when you look at how these teams are going to be performing together and then it also prepares you when you then come to land so oxygen taking full advantage of that and vitality as ever sitting in the vitality cave the honeycomb um as it is the fairy peak behind them making sure that they too 
are not falling behind and slipping into some sort of sleep against their opponents because if they can keep their foot on the gas, mm -hmm. you get the sense, Stumpy, that they should be able to do this. I'd be a bit annoyed if we got another 4 0. I'd be mm, a bit perturbed. As a fan. Yeah, yeah, I feel you there. I'd be a little bit annoyed. Like, guys, come on, give us a little bit more. Uh, Bet me Vitality, if they can clear it away, nice and clean. As we said before, if you're a Vitality fan, obviously you want Vitality to win, but not just to get to the semis, but to make the major as well. And they're also not just going to be locked in as that fourth seed. They have the potential to get to the number two seed if they do well enough through this event. So Vitality, everything on the line, Oxygen, everything on the line. But right now, the first team, the team in orange, the buzzing bees are the ones ahead. Moist as well. We had the Joyo interview. He will certainly be rooting here for Oxygen for any chance that they have of making the major, but it might be about to go up in smoke if Vitality keep playing the way they have been. A couple of games away from booking their ticket. The Oxygen have started game three better. They're in the ascendancy here. Oski goes for a flip reset, and they have it in Vitality's corner. This is exactly the beginning they needed after their tactical timeout. Until... Oh, right. Yeah, I take it back. Top bins, mate. Yeah. Top bins, yeah, big man. Cool. And it comes all the way from the back corner too. Igso gets caught out as Radosin lands on it beautifully. Tapped in by Zen. I'm going to count that as Radosin's goal. The stats won't, but I will. Vitality, early lead as you like. It's a shame, really, because Oxygen were definitely playing on the front foot from the initial kickoff. But one chance for Team Vitality, and they are ruthless. And I'm sure they will keep on going. The jugular is what they're targeting. Zen over the top of Ixo this time. Oski will be able to get this one to the side easily enough. But look who's there. When Oxygen are clearing it, Stumpy, just track how often it falls to a Vitality mm -hmm. player. They come forwards. He's Zen. He's done this before on this map, but can't quite do it this time. Oski this time shuts him down, but Alpha's going to be there for the second. The and also oh, yeah. acts as the decoy. Redosin coming in with the final tap. He's been setting up players this entire tournament. Alpha leaves it. Archie backflips. No chance to secure it. Redosin, the second within a minute for Vitality. And you feel that when it's after a tactical timeout and you can see the couple of goals straight away, it really begins to hurt. The same thing happened for Vitality against Carmine Corp on Utopia as well, when they had that disastrous kickoff mm -hmm. two seconds after their tactical timeout and ended up losing the game. What was it, 6 1, 7 1, something crazy yeah. like that? I'm praying the same doesn't happen here. Bit of fight still left in Oxygen, and after that timeout, too, the words are still going to be ringing as much in their heads as it was as this as this game started they just need to put them into action Igso moving one player from the pitch got to make them scared on their wheels Oski does the same Radosin gone Archie forgoes the ball instead goes for a player to commit from Vitality Oski has to take it slow as it bounces quite awkwardly into his back corner Archie and Alpha remove each other from the pitch Zen is going to be able to send this one long again. Redosin, does he get the redirect? Of course he does. Steals it's it too back. easy for Team Vitality. He steals it back. All right, fair play. Zen and Redosin are now one all to each other, stealing goals. Great play from him just to move up a little bit further. Can tap it in. Three goals for Vitality. Timeout so far has very clearly not worked for Oxygen and they have burned their one lifeline but Oxygen off this kick off Ixo fakes out going for a breezy instead finds himself in the corner with a hundred boost nobody up at all from Oxygen thinking Ixo pal what are you doing where, like, where do we send this ball yeah the timeout buff is looking more like a timeout bluff right now for Oxygen it's all being a bit disastrous here Archie goes for a flip reset a little moment of magic like that could well bring them straight back into it but Vitality are not letting them have it defending from the front foot every single time it's able to race almost a couple of important ones excellent demos though and Radosin dives in from the side out of Oski's blind spot to dispossess him Archie's going to be up Oski's to his side these passes have to be a bit less floaty, a bit more accurate and fast and sharp from Oxygen. The good news for them is that time is still on their side. We are just about now ticking over into halfway into this game. It's so long away from them, though. Can they get the ball? Can they get some control? Zen up against Archie in the air. Alpha's just be stealing boosts as well. That's something else. Vitality are doing such a good, good job. Fake. Control the boost and the fakes. Paramount too. Zen almost over Oski. A fourth goal will surely kill it, but it won't be now. We've seen that time and time again too. Vitality, if you think one player's shooting, there's every chance that they're just going to send it away. Leave the ball entirely and then just have a second player come in and take the shot instead. Kami Corp are famous for doing it as well. Archie's up for the pre-jump. Great innovation there coming from Oxygen Esports. Alpha's going to be coming in against Oski. Oxygen trying to get something to bubble to the surface. 
Vitality blocking them every step of the way, but see the little period of play where Vitality are a little bit ground, a little bit stranded. Auction can trend forwards into their half, but one challenge changes all that. And there's the one, two, Redosin has Ixo in his sights, goes under him almost, but can't quite get the reset. Yeah, almost secured it, unfortunately, for Redosin. Can't quite get that fourth goal. 90 seconds. They're on bouncing very awkwardly, but Alpha's going to be the first player to it. Can clear it neatly into the corner. Batball bounces down. Archie's there. A glimmer at the end of the tunnel for Oxygen appears. And you have to say, in the last 25 seconds or so, it has been coming. Oxygen have been making more and more forays forward into Vitality's half. Archie got the dunk on the goal line after good work from his teammate. And there you have it. Oxygen are back in it via Ixo's pass. A nice kickoff as well. Gives Oski a little bit of control of the ball. Ash taps over. If he leaves that, that's a brilliant position for Archie. Ixo needs to be up here. He is. It's on target, but it's a little bit low and slow. Oski turns it around. Still over a minute. Plenty of time. Oxygen have to make sure they're not snatching at anything. Taking the second spare that they do have. They'll disappear quickly, but for now, you can just take your time, move forward to Vitality's half, and try and get something going again. This final minute, so important. And Alpha's going to make sure that they nearly enter it with just four goals to their name. Instead, it's going to stay that 3-1 scoreline for Vitality. Oski up high. Ixo's there. Maybe that fake could have been better. Maybe Ixo was prepared for that, but oh. instead... Archie sneaks it top left corner, only one left to pull back, and Oxygen are starting to become a light. Archie, the second punching glove in the 1-2 right there, just pushes that one into the net, and suddenly things get very, very nervy for Team Vitality. How does this kickoff look? It's just the default one. Drive into the ball, send it wide, but it's Oxygen that it falls to. Zen's in the air. Great All position. Both his teammates are below him. Oski has a chance to shoot, but I'm not sure he had the angle to score. Goes opposite corner. Alpha attempts the pinch, but it only goes as far as Archie in that back third. It's a shame that Oski shot that low in the opposite corner. A little bit higher, a little bit more powerful, and it potentially would have been a goal. Oski now removes Alpha out of All frustration. No redirect coming through as Archie with low boost falls the ball towards Ixo. Archie now full pressure, but what does that touch do? No one's going to be there for it straight away. Oski now can make something from it. Gets one touch back to the middle. Cleared again. Central from Archie. Cleared by Alpha. That seems to be the repeating factor. Up to Ixo. Keeps it high. Redoso will be first to it. Archie, any touch is going to do something. Ixo up on that side wall, but the boost is devastating for Oxygen right now. Yeah, they've got pretty much nothing in the tank. It's completely bare, and Team Vitality are able to send themselves within one game of Copenhagen. One more, and Vitality, as you say, Cole. Copenhagen bound, major bound. We didn't think that they would be the last team to secure it. <laughs> and yet, here we are. Already, Carmine Corp, Gentlemates, and Team BDS are through to the major. It's just a matter of whether it's Vitality, Oxygen or Moist. And right now, Moist fans are sweating, Oxygen fans are sweating, and Vitality fans are already booking plane tickets. Yeah, maybe, but I wouldn't go and do that just yet. The fact that Oxygen got themselves a couple of goals just opens the door a tiny bit. You can hear it creaking, you know, in the middle of the night, but it is open and they can potentially step through it. It will not be easy. Of course, but we have had reverse sweeps to big teams so far in this split in Europe. Mm -hmm. It is possible it happens again, but for Oxygen Esports, and indeed for Moist, it has to. Vitality, I've got a little bit of a throw in them. We've seen them not be that perfect team that we saw through uh, the spring split last season, and of course, extending through to the World Championship. But this does not look like a team to me that has got a throw in them. They are calculated, they are maniacal, they are devastating to their offense. And unfortunately for Oxygen, they are currently on the other end of it. But can they rise from the ashes of the first three games and at least give us a bit of a series past just four individual games? Well, we have a sunset here on this map, but is the sun setting on Oxygen's chance to make it to the Copenhagen Major? They have to turn things around and they have to start it off right now. Are they able to? Who is the player they turn to? For me, it's Oski. He is the one that has that mechanical ability to unlock Team Vitality, but he has to get hold of the ball. Great pinch from Archie. Sends it high with the block to Oski. With a demo on the back line, Oski's touch needs to be good, and Archie comes in to support him. Archie now nice and quick to it. Rodosin, nice and active himself. Zen into that back corner with a redirect. Oh. It's on target, but Oski knows the magic that Zen can put up, was prepared for it. Yeah, Zen a victim of his own success there. 
as we do have a pause coming in. It has been called by both Radosin and Zen, so there'll be no controversy there. Thankfully, the ball didn't go in, just there's nothing to discuss in that regard. Um, and we're going to have Vitality fixing things up. Mm -hmm. Now, Stumpy, my question to you is who does this benefit? Gives a little bit of time. Means that now this essentially acts as just a small buffer. A little moment for... Uh, for Oxygen to be able to talk to each other, make sure that, okay, it's been 45 seconds. Cool, we've got four, four minutes and 15. Let's just reset a little bit or just continue going on this path that we're on. We've not conceded. We've done that a couple times early in these games. Let's just be good. And we're going to be restarting from four minutes 20. No dramas. Uh, with 0-0, zero, zero, obviously, as that scoreline as well from the kickoff. They just had a little bit of internet problems over at their boot camp. No dramas at all on this occasion, but you have to be able to reset and get yourself straight back into it. And it just become a bit of a race to get the mentality back. You know, it's you think you're settled. You think you're into this fourth game auction, fighting for their lives, vitality, you know, on their winning run, their winning lap. Suddenly that's taken away from you for technical reasons. And you have to get straight back into that mindset. That's where the coaches are in their corner. Back corner, Oski can take it from this immediate kickoff, works it around Zen, a great demo, and I love the aggression straight away from this kickoff. And I want to see the purpose with every touch from Oxygen. Sometimes they seem a little bit like they don't know what to do with the ball when they do get it. Almost like, oh, we've got the ball now, we have a chance to do something. Oski sending it high, no players to it apart from his self. Gets a reset actually, will be following it, but Zen can block it before it becomes a real threat. Yeah, Zen does it so smoothly as well, not just getting the block, but just gliding through the air, getting that touch and coming away with the ball. And that has led to the sustained pressure for Team Vitality. Here he is again, the star man, the star player in the world, arguably. Falls to Alpha in the end, though. Dose is right behind Alpha, trending forward, desperate for this ball to fall to him. But it's Archer that gets it in the end, can't quite get it into Ixo's path. Oxygen always one pass away from a real push against Team Vitality's net. Oski's given Great a lot of space defense. to Radosin, but it was a very good decision in the end. Yeah, brilliant defense from Oski, making oh. sure that he's taken everything from any 1v1 that he has played previously and just stays side onto the ball, can get that block out no matter where it ends up coming in as the pass was the intention. Hikso gets dunked on his attempt. Oski then jumps and leaves the ball towards Archie, who I think has been perennially low on boost, gets bumped out of the way as large Oscar takes the helm. Zen's just going to wait for this ball to fall for him. So far, neither team able to lay a glove here in this all-important fourth game. It could end here, but not if they score now. Oxygen, they couldn't quite do it. Rodosin on the other end, though, might do the same. It's almost over Ixo. Alpha prods it high, but Ixo should be able to get a block. In the end, it's Archie. Both teams have chances, but neither with goals. I like seeing Archie as well just take the initiative there and just say, look, I've got this ball. Calls Ixo off it. It means that then boost does get saved. There's no double commit coming in. Alpha into the corner gets thwarted on that plan by Oski. Back corner again. Over and over a corner battle. Side wall. Archie dunks on Alpha. Zen has to then track back and Ixo's chance to put a little bit of pressure on. Misses that one, unfortunately. Oski to the ceiling. Gets one, gets two. Unfortunately, third one straight to Rodosim. Vitality. Will they be able to get control of this ball? Not just yet. Archie into the center. I thought for a second Alpha had snatched at it. It does fall to Ixo in the end. Here comes Oski. Doesn't quite get the bounce read. Radosin will. Should be able to get some sort of assist to his teammates here. This is so dangerous. But Ixo had ice in his blood. Oski's going to be counting his lucky stars there. That there was nobody from Vitality. Because he was not in any position to save that ball away. But it's still 1 minute 45 remaining. Nil, nil. Both teams having brilliant sniffs at the net. Zen, central. It's a shot. This is it's it. a save. It's Radosin at the end. Yeah, Radosin slamming his face into the ball after Zen had done this to break through Oxygen. Alpha kept it going. And in the end, Radosin says, I'll score then. Goes full pelt at the ball. Doesn't even need to jump to potentially send Vitality to the major. Been big pressure for Vitality so far, and Oxygen have dealt with it incredibly well. Their defense has looked better. Just outplayed on that one chance. Oski removing the danger man. Zen straight off the pitch. Archie now attempting to get it central. Alpha already reading that, goes along with it. Zen has to jump, dodge, can't get that second touch on it. Not quite got the magic of Daniel when he got his insane North American goal <laughs> over on G2. But Alpha, with a relatively routine shot, forces Archie to make a save. Minute 15, this is Oxygen and Moist's major hopes on the line. 
Top defending there from Oski. Zen had a real clearance there in front of their goal, but he stayed tall and strong. Ixo gets half a block. Radosin sends it forward. Archie gets the catch. Still time here for Oxygen. They have to make something happen now. We have seen reverse sweeps begin from one goal when all hope seemed lost, but Alpha could take the last bit away. No, Oski gets the clearance. Great touch as well towards that side wall, Archie sending it long trying to find anything from oxygen but their pass is still looking relatively aimless alpha wants to put it over the top of it so can't quite do it eat so as high as he can Oscar's great there, the backboard is falling down but radosin had no one with 100 miles of him no one from oxygen decided to take any initiative and actually try and challenge that ball now archie sending it long only finds those in the midfield they can't get it past that halfway line 20 seconds left, and Team Vitality will lock the door on every other team in Europe. Zen, he sends it high. This could finish it. He's got the reset, has he? He forwards Chance. it through. It's not quite there, though. Final five, Oxygen. It's the dying seconds of the game. Zen has to have this ball touch the ground. He's going to send it long. He's going to end it with a demo. Team Vitality, welcome to Copenhagen. Another 4 0, another sweep on the day of almost perfect sweeps here in Europe. There was one game got by Magnifico against Carmine Corp, but apart from that, there were clear winners in every single series. And Stumpy, the players that you're looking at right now, the coach that you're looking at, are starting to look like winners again. It's good to see Vitality making their way back into the major. The fact that they were the fourth team to do so as well is crazy commiserations to oxygen they had a fantastic run towards the um, end of this uh, in, in their points earnings end of yeah. the open qualifier it was just not enough for them same with moist the semi-finals tomorrow is just going to be for that prize money and of course their points going on later when we look towards worlds will going from quarters to semis be enough for them but vitality their quality is very clearly back the big question for me is what can these teams that are in fifth and sixth do to break into that top four because there certainly does seem to be a gap right now mm -hmm. and that's a scary thing for the rest of them you know is it a play style change is it something else they have to learn is it more grinding of the game Ooh. i don't have those answers stumpy but someone out there has to and you know what i reckon the desk does so leaf the boys wow. take it away big pressure there it is, all locked in, Team Vitality, securing that final spot. I honestly didn't actually hear what Cole and Stumpy were saying, so I can't answer any question that they just had. But Yeah, I ignore them as well, to be honest. Yeah, I, just, I uh, completely tune in. As soon as they start casting, it's just, yeah, it's just whew, in one ear, out the other. But, uh, I mean, look, what, what a series. France top four, one nation region, all our questions from the pre-show being answered. And, Johnny, we were even talking about in the, in the green room. Despite the craziness of the Swiss and some weird results, there's been one constant this entire split is, it, is that French teams can only be eliminated by other French teams. These, yeah, these right. guys are just, they're pretty good. Not even close as well. Not even close to being eliminated by a non-French team. The big four French teams have taken each other out a couple times uh, throughout this split, but they have not been eliminated by anyone else or even close. It was uh, it was crazy too. Pre-show, we said, you know, is is this a, a one nation region? And uh, honestly, it's we're not we're not doing a good job of proving that. Otherwise. Leap, is it is it a one nation esport? Is the next question? Because yes, it's a one nation region. It is right now a one nation region, um, or at least a one language region. Because there's a couple of nations represented there: Morocco and uh, you know, Rise is English, but he speaks French. Uh, got right. Atto from Belgium. So one one language region, definitely, but is it a one language eSport is the next like, question well, we're all asking. We all want to know, <laughs> can anyone stop them? I mean, again, it, it's it's going to come down to one of those locked in teams. You see all four locked in now. BDS, uh, it's, uh, or sorry, K Corp. Rise was saying, uh, it's just, you're going to have to wait and see at the land. That's where we'll find out how the rest of the world truly stacks up to it. We can't really answer. You're not allowed to speculate, Johnny. I don't, I don't know if you heard. It's tough. It's really tough to be a talking head when you're not allowed to speculate. I'll see what I can do. But I not, like really speculating. Much I, love I really it. like speculating. I love and uh, I mean, I still think the the Europe as a whole. I know we joke about one nation region, the region, the French domination, but I still think Europe is a very strong region, not just out, outside the top four. The fact that the top four are so dominant and there is a massive gap between uh, the rest. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident about Europe at, at the major. Um, yeah. Wowee. Yeah.
That's true. Well, uh, looking at that matchup then, I mean, like, with Vitality, are we we thinking, Johnny, that they're they're back in form here? Like, this is the squad that can take on a K Corp, a team that looks so dominant? Well, luckily for that question, we don't have to wait too long. We can maybe find that out tomorrow. They've got one other team to go past first, though. That's Moist, um, who are no longer playing for major qualification. There's too many right. points to gain. They're out of the running for the major, but they're not out of this tournament. They can still, uh, you know, give Vitality one more loss uh, in, a, in a split that's had more losses than any other before Vitality. But yeah, so I think Vitality do look like that team again uh, for now. Now, they haven't played against a Carving Corp. They haven't played against a BDS here, so those teams still being in the tournament is pretty scary for them, I'm sure, and scary for Vitality fans. But, uh, you know, seeing what Genji did last weekend in North America and seeing the regains all around the world from various rosters, uh, making sure that it's not just a one-horse race, you know, got another team at the top. I think Vitality could be trying to emulate that, trying to uh, get back to that top level with KC and BDS. Yeah, I, I see, Jay. I, it's, all you can do is nod and agree with that because what we just saw there was a, a complete schlap uh, against yeah. Oxygen. I mean, we see the gap. Oh, yeah, 100%. And that, that was the question marks before the series. We talk about Magnifico, we talk about Oxygen, even Moist, but they're really good against teams that are around the mark. But in, against the top four, no team has really got close, um, past some 4-1s right. and 4 twos. And uh, yeah, similar story here. So now we can forget about, I guess, the the major race, and now we can think about, I guess, who's coming in, who's going to be in, I guess, top form uh, moving into the major. We'll find out tomorrow. But right, actually, I, I think we've got one match up locked in. If if Gentlemates and Vitality are tied in points currently, I believe the Vitality will have the tiebreaker for seeding purposes automatically because they've outplayed them in this event. So that would mean that we have Gentlemates versus Rule 1 as a match at the Major Round 1, which is a really cool match. So yeah, definitely a, uh, an interesting one on paper. We'll be locking those in uh, tomorrow to know what they all are. Right, and just looking at the leaderboard again, here's uh, where we, we are at this point. These will change, but this does mean that, again, we're locked in with which teams are, are going to be showing up for Europe uh, at the Major. K Corp again, Johnny dominantly standing at the front of the pack. Yeah, they, they are locked in seed one. Um, so they're going to be playing Limitless from SSA round one um, at the Major. So definitely a strong matchup for them. But, you know, we've seen EU one seeds lose games uh, at various events start last season. It's not always easy starting, uh, especially after a big long off season like this. So you can't take anyone uh, lightly here. Limitless have been doing very well against Europe and SSA this mm -hmm. uh, split, funnily enough. So, you know, they, there's definitely something there for them in that matchup. Maybe a couple of times. <laughs> okay, games do matter, obviously, in Swiss. It's not just about getting the series. The games, individual games, are huge when it comes to separating yep. uh, tiebreakers eventually later on in the Swiss stage. I think uh, the, probably one of the differences between this season or at least this split uh, and the last is just how close uh, this regional is to the major. So I think we're going to get a, as good of an indication as ever, um, at least tomorrow, how these teams are going. You know, two weeks and we'll be mm -hmm. in Copenhagen. And you know the difference, oh. actually. If Vitality win that, this event uh, in, in Carmi Corp the team they beat in the final, I believe that would add seven points to their tally. So they would pass BDS, take that second seed. And in that case, they would face Elevate from APAC round one as opposed to Complexity from Sam, so big difference there. Seating right. really could be huge for Vitality if they can win this event. Hey, well, now to talk about Vitality's bounce back, Shogun is standing by with Fairy Peak. Thank you very much there, Leaf, and I am joined by the legend himself, Fairy Peak. Uh, first things first, I guess. Uh, congratulations, and uh, looking forward to seeing you in Copenhagen. No, thank you, and see you in Copenhagen too. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be very enjoyable time. Uh, how are you guys feeling at the moment? Because you are the defending world champions, the defending major champions. How confident is Vitality in retaining those titles, or at least the major title, at Copenhagen? Uh, I mean, firstly, we are focusing on this regional because uh, a lot of teams are almost tied on point, and we just want to, to play the best rocket we can at this event. So we didn't really think about hopefully we'll defend our major title. We are firstly trying to, to win this regional and we worked hard for it and we, we saw it so I'm really proud of the team and yeah we're, we're just trying to win this regional first then my job <laughs> yeah focusing on what is ahead of you let's let's speak a little bit uh, about this regional and this split as a whole because end of last season pure domination for vitality and probably for the first time for this roster Hitting a little bit of a roadblock. It's been a, a bit more of a difficult split, not quite as uh, dominant as we've seen. 
how has it been for you guys behind the scenes responding to to taking losses made for the first time and sort of trying to build for tournaments like this one i mean when you're a world champion and major champion <laughs> it's like, like the perfect people before this season uh it's hard to like keep up with everyone uh at the first event because of course all the team are built to, to fight you and like to, to defeat you so uh, during the off season, we played really, really good. Like we won a lot of uh, of scream, and we felt good. But like at the start of this regional, at the start of this season, the first split, it was kind of hard to to keep it up because you know there's like the the tension. Like every team wants you in tournament. Like in scream, they want you, but in tournament, they want you more. And we had a bit of a rough start, and now we had to question ourselves to see like, okay, maybe we we can't continue like that and of course i'm not gonna get into detail because it's uh, <laughs> our synergy but yeah we, we worked hard for it and i'm really proud of uh, again of those guys because like they, they deserve it they listen to everything we told me like even then they try to, to fix things and right now here we are we are the major also i'm i'm really happy for that <laughs> I'll t tell you what, you are so much more professional than I am because I'm seeing Zen and now Radosin just behind you. And I don't know if you've noticed them yet. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've been... noticed them, but you know, I'm used to like... You're doing better than I am. I, I'm, I'm used to dodging them. Like, I, okay. I, I, it's like they're not here. <laughs> well, before I let you go and go and celebrate and uh, maybe get them back in order, uh, do you have anything that you want to say to your, to your fans and to your org? Yeah, I mean, thanks to everyone, of course, again. Like, I, I know it was a rock start, but like right now we, we're really happy with how we are playing and we are just going to keep grinding, keep it up, and hopefully we're going to show like the best face uh, Vitality uh, will ever have at the Major. And thank you, everyone. Well, looking, f looking forward to seeing you over in Copenhagen. Leaf and the desk, I hope you got some dance moves for us, because that's quite something to follow up. Uh, not quite. Not quite. You don't want to see it if I did have any anyways. <laughs> not on that level. Not, not on that level. <laughs> no, no. That was, that was consistent, too. Here's our locked-in teams. Now for the Copenhagen Major. It's done. Johnny, they are all there. We know who we're seeing. Again, it's just up to seeding now, but we have all of our teams. Yeah, and it looks like a very, very stacked lineup. I mean, I would go as far as say even that that could be the most stacked lineup ever. We've got... Uh, South America looking scarier than ever. I think Mina looking scarier than ever. And uh, yeah, EU once again, just producing a terrifying top four. And yeah, with Genji's resurgence and OG peaking at the right mm -hmm. time. I mean, every region, honestly. Uh, and you've got SSA and APAC as well. Um, you know, uh, Limitless with a super team. APAC looking very competitive, actually, with the top two. I hope you guys have been following uh, with the APAC uh, region this well. It's not been the one uh, dominant team as, any, as a lot of us expected. It's been Elevate, the surprise winner. So I think this is an incredibly stacked event. It's, it's going to be very hard to predict, especially after all this time. It's, it's going to be hard. And once again, as Rai said, we don't know what's going to happen until that land happens so, so make sure there let's all to join yeah let's all guess let's try right out. Guess. i already said it yesterday cake cake court wins so i've already locked in my answer here uh i want to know Boring. if you guys okay if you want to see it in person <laughs> get your tickets remember uh dk uh we've we're gonna keep playing i feel like that, every time that you Zoom say call. that it's losing us half of a letter or half a <laughs> syllable like it's, <laughs> it's becoming, like uh, over time it's becoming just honestly a blur but uh, I, I i i appreciate the effort thank goodness we've got it written on the screen though or else no one would have any idea what to do exactly uh by the way we're playing that that zoom call ad until you guys all the tickets are gone so this is on you guys <laughs> <laughs> going forward but uh uh, I don't know. I'm excited. We're realizing now how close that is. Um, I'm just, I'm genuinely starting to get real amped up, but that's just around the corner. But we do still have tomorrow, Championship Sunday. Yeah. CJ, Team Vitality said there we're, we're locked into this right now. We're not thinking about that yet. We need to make sure we're in top form and we're winning this regional alone. Otherwise, it, we're not winning that. Yeah, and I mean, the, the, the major being so close makes tomorrow just that more interesting because we'll know who is the most in form, obviously seeding for the major for a few teams still on the line as well. Moist, that team that, well, they're just playing for fun at this point. They're, they're going to try and collect some cash and, and obviously, uh, some points, I guess, for, for the whole season because season points are still on the line. 
as well. So they'll still be um, bringing their A game, trying to play upset. K Corp trying to go for the perfect split. So still a lot of storylines left and um, added excitement for the major being around the corner. So I just, I just got to ask then, Tom, tomorrow, uh, you don't have to lock it in as your pick, but okay, who wins? Tom, I'm, right now. I'm going the perfect split. I'm going the perfect, perfect split. split. I think K-Corp, it's, it's hard to go against them. It is hard to go against K Card, but I think, you know, Vitality against K Card with Final, that seems like a good story for me. You know, Moist with no pressure anymore. They're just playing for this event and no, no scenarios to worry about. So we might see uh, uh, an exciting Moist who just have a completely carefree attitude about that semi. Um, but yeah, I still think, yeah, Vitality, KC, Final, and it's hard to go against KC. All I want is good Rocket League tomorrow, and I guarantee you that's what we're going to get as we get into our top four of our final qualifier before the Copenhagen Major. It's going to be exciting. I'll see you tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. CET for the pre-show and 5 o'clock for kickoff. Please join us. It's going to be fun. Stumpy, I need your help. Can't make it's 10 p.m. I went to bed two hours ago. I'm nearly 30. Oh, this better be urgent. I can't sleep. I'm trying to figure out the best way to let people know that Copenhagen tickets are available now. Cope Blan Hagen, but fine. I think I might know someone who can help out with this. CJ, hello mate. We need your help. How can we let people know that there are tickets available to Copeland Hagen? Copenhagen tickets are available now? Righto, fellas. What's Denmark known for? I need someone with a bit more worldly knowledge than me. Stax, we're struggling here. How can we let people know that they can get tickets to the Danish land? Ooh. Danish, you say? You guys are going about this all wrong. Wait, who added Gibbs? Who added you? This is Rocket League. Of course I'm here. Everyone knows that Denmark is home to the famous playwright and poet Hans Christian Andersen. And stop! Guys, I'm friends with loads of pros, and they all really respect me because, you know, I'm Johnny Boy, I'm kind of a big deal. But just leave it to me, I'll, I'll call someone up, I'm sure they can help us out. Yo, what's up, guys? Oh, hey, it's apparently Jack. Jack! G'day, Jack. Hi, guys, my name... Uh, is he okay? He's fine, he always does this, don't worry. Hi, guys, my name is... A... Hi, guys. Hi, guys, my name... As a Canadian, I quite like Lemon Kiwi's snow idea. Thank you. What if we really focus in on the fact that they had Vikings? This thing on? Hello? I hear Denmark so has... I've heard that salted licorice is delicious. Guys, I've got it.